food chain We'll show you what like you blue cakes But I'm on the road like I move skates Settle to the top like a due date And I'm never gonna stop like a Bron James uh, Big dreams, yeah, live large We go hard to play hard Rise to the top like a souffle I bring the heat like Dwayne Wade Dishing them out like a food tray uh, Big bars like I move weights And I'm serving them up like a food plate Yeah, big dreams, live large We go hard to play hard And then we repeat, then we repeat. Yeah. Chasing my purpose, need a release, need a release. Yeah. My life's a beach, I'm lost in the breeze, lost in the breeze. Mm. Do this with ease, don't play with my dreams, dreams. Yeah. It's so together, it's not what it seems mm. Part of a tiger, life of a king, king. Yeah. Chasing my bag, my feet in the cream cool. Running these laps, not losing my steam, steam. Mm. I'm feeling good, this life's what I need mm. Mm. Don't intervene with my energy yeah. I'm in her scope like Jimmy Iveen yeah. No Superman, but I'm feeling supreme mm. It's not a movie, but I'm making a scene yeah, hey. I can tell you how to live your life, but, hey, but, hey, but hey, you just gotta get, get up. Now. our life we paying a price price mm. piece of the pie i need me a slice slice yeah. rolling the dice the scariest spice, spice. Mm. sticky like rice the tricky reprise price. yeah love will suffice i suffer in silence Shh. all alone i'm lost on the island lost. let's spread peace and less of the violence no. sebastian block on god's playing violence Woo. yeah the flowers violet give me my rose, rose. this for my city all for my bros rose. did it alone so far in my zone so, so raise your glass let's all have a toast, toast. I can show you how to get like me, live your life to you, D I E. Yeah, look, I can tell you how to live your life, but, 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 you just gotta get up now. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up now. Get up. Get up now. Get up.
ain't a game. Been through the flame, I'll get out the way. Whole lot of change. Still been the same, put that on the name. I had to go through it just to get to it. Look what I became. Elevate, level up, way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys wanna talk, hit them out of love, but don't got receipts. I do it with ease, to you it's a burden, to me it's a breeze. You feel that? That win is the breeze, that kickback. You coming at me, boy, sit back. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. You step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, they loving the fuel, my land in the tomb. You be the witness. At the time, turn a green pea to a three P, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Got the franchise on me, you more like you yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 21st century, you all the way BC, yeah. Old boys been washed up, I'm not stuck in TT. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. Who step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood and up in the few, my land in the tomb. Hate my grind down, life a shine, I'm one of a kind, no 
Let's do something crazy. Get a bit wild today. Cause we don't do this every day. And we deserve it. Life is so amazing. Nothing is in our way. Baby, let's fly away. Do you feel it? Is your heart rushing the way my heart's rushing when you take it? We should, we'll feed the fire Let's see it through And let go of what's holding us back Just light it up and we'll burn through the past And take it higher Is your heart rushing The way my heart's rushing When you take it all in Focus. Came a long way from the lowest. Yeah. Gotta get it though, mindset. Gotta put it in motion. <laughs> this is the moment. Gotta one of my opponent. 
Back then they ain't notice me, now they know it's me. I'm the toast. Yeah. My time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all another man, a trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall. Yeah, whole lot of times they doubt it. I wouldn't be who I am without it. Sleepless nights, I count it. It all paid off, it's really astounding. I had to keep the faith to elevate. Hope for better days, they were coming. Now we can celebrate, knowing every day is abundant. Yeah, it's my time, yeah, I put that on Bible. No excuses, gotta get to the final. Take all of my idols and turn them to rivals. It's all another man, a trophy is vital. Game time, bet I'm coming in clutch. No hang time, man, they can't keep up. The game's on the line, seconds on the time. Who can't fight? It's gotta be us. Better under pressure, go ahead and let it fall. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Dolor Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. bias against the best teams in the world. We're VCT EMEA. Of course we're the best region in the world. I'm passing the phone to someone who's five foot two. Did I do it right? We're VCT EMEA. Of course we're gonna take home all the trophies. We're VCT EMEA. Of course we're not afraid of tech pauses. <laughs> We're VCT EMEA. Of course we have the best venue in the world. Guys? Guys, come on!
Now we can fly. I'll be flexing. Hello everyone and welcome to the opening day of VCTE MEA. We're coming to you live from the Riot Games Arena here in Berlin, Germany. I'm your host, Ying Su, and it's my pleasure to be here with all of you as we celebrate the start of a new chapter in Valorant Esports. Of course, I cannot do that all on my own. That's why I've employed uh, the help of my lovely and amazing analysts for today, Kakuka and Ash. Welcome back, 2024 new season. I mean, it's been over 200 days since we had at LCQ, of course, we had some international events and some off-season, but you know, we haven't seen the teams for so, so long, and there's so many new faces, including Ash. Welcome to the show. Yeah, new kid on the block, but I'm so happy to be here, uh, just as jump, skip, and hop across the pond, and it's going to be a great season of VCT MEA. Yeah, you made it to the superior region, so uh, <laughs> yeah. we love to have you here. Uh, Ash, of course, we're standing in a brand new studio. Everything looks great, but we also have a brand new format coming into this year. We're going to start everything with the, the kickoff a tournament as teams make their ways to Madrid. But the important thing here is the winner of VCT MEA for the first time ever, Kukuka, will be earning championship points for the rest yes, of the year. Exactly. And those points, as you mentioned, are going to be important for the entire year and especially making it to that last event. So you know how we're sending two teams to Madrid is not only, uh, you know, getting those two, is actually getting those extra three and winning the entire thing. Uh, to have them security over the years, you can see things are going to be happening fairly quickly. Kick off into, into Masters Madrid, Stage 1, quickly Shanghai, stay, Stage 2, and then Champs at the end of the year. Yeah, you love to see the fact that you get to reward some of that consistency when it comes down to that league play. But focusing back in now on to kickoff, not only are they earning those three points at the end of this event, it's also that potential for the seeding going into this Masters Madrid. I mean, let's take a look at the groups and the schedule and stuff because it's going to get brutal. We've seen what things can happen, you know, with 100 Thieves and Bleed as well across the pond. And Ash, which uh, group are you most excited for? I mean, I think undeniably Group C looks the most intense when you're looking over towards Fnatic, Vitality and Gentle Mates, some of the squads who have retained the most of their rosters going forward, and also I don't know, those Vitality changes looking pretty good. Yeah, the other two groups are going to be exciting as well. We're going to be seeing them over the next couple of days. And speaking of that, the schedule for today, as you can see here, will be Foot uh, versus Heretics to kick things off for us, and then Giant versus Kcor as well. We've got lots of three game days coming up as well, so make sure you guys uh, stick with us. But it's not just the format that is new. We have some more new, interesting things coming into this uh, as well, Ash. New agents too? Yeah, I mean, pretty exciting, right? I saw the newest one. I feel like I don't have to say much there because we're not really going to expect to see him in the server. My eyes are on Deadlock, though, because compared to those traditional Sentinels, she brings a little bit of a different take on that kind of role, a bit more of that proactivity that you can have. And I think she's really going to shine on the attacking side, especially into the post plant with those buffs to the barrier mesh coming in. And I think you can do some fun, creative things with those Sonic centers, maybe trying to use them a little bit like that Cypher can flashbang. I mean, and not only that, we also have the changes in the existing uh, agents that might, you know, reshape the meta as we know it. We've seen some funky things already in Americas and Pacific, but of course we have to mention them here. Uh, the Killjoy turret that has now a, a smaller degree uh, of the angle that she covers, also combined with the Cypher buff where his trap wires are going to need to be destroyed in order to be taken out. You know, they really help with those potential lurks. And also coming in the init initiation side, Sky with that huge where she's not going to be able to retrieve that flash is going to, you know, change the way that the uh, teams gather information and when to gather it. Also, combining that with Gecko and the fact that he retakes and regains that uh, abilities much quicker, you know, we've, we've done some testing in the past, so I don't see why not again. I mean, we can't forget the new weapon as well, the Outlaw Kukuka. Yes, exactly. As you're mentioning, the last thing that we uh, have to mention is the Outlaw. Pretty, pretty quick. Uh, you know, we, we had this meta here, uh, especially in EMEA, uh, with the half sheet yeah. and now is something that they have to take into consideration looking at the enemy's uh, economy i mean surely there's nothing else is going to be new right we got new agents new <laughs> weapon ash a new map pool no yeah i mean we had to say goodbye to two favorites i think in haven and fracture but now we're saying hello to sunset which is the brand new map here within valorant then you've got those changes on lotus and two old maps coming back into the
into the fray with some changes, mostly looking towards Icebox is my personal favorite there, yes. but you can't not mention Breeze. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned Breeze there because we do have a, a man on the ground to break a little bit more down of what's going to be happening on Breeze for you. Please give a warm welcome. His first time ever here in VCT EMEA, it's Steel. Well, thank you, Sue. I'm over here on Breeze. It's nice, hot and sunny out here. And what we're going to see is actually a few different changes. We see the holes, they were closed off for a little bit, but now they're open back up. So we're going to have to see the ciphers placing their trap wires on the wall here again. Otherwise, they will have to figure out another way to deal with the pesky lurks. But we also see that the door is going to be accessible again over here. So making sure that these three prong attacks through holes are going to be dealt with is going to be a priority for the defenders. And speaking of three prong attacks, we're also going to see changes at middle. So we're going to see that down at at the bottom of middle here, we're going to see this area is closed off here. This is going to allow the defender to be able to move down and be a little bit more aggressive, but at this cost of the attackers being able to move down as well and move up without the 50 50s. So over here, you know, nice open pathway that they can use to get to middle to A, but then they're also going to be able to look over here over the window and see into the window uh, over somewhere around here, actually. But you get the point. And then over at A main, we're going to see it wide open at shops. So much room for activities. So it's going to be nice to see the aggression here from the defenders. We're going to see that there's less 50 50s. And over at B, the sidewalks open up, which means that we're going to see these boxes over here. These are going to be for post plants with the attackers looking to spawn and tunnels. This segment was a breeze. Now for some news. Welcome to the Valorant News Network EMEA, your most trusted source for all things Valorant. Coming to you live from Berlin. I'm Yung Sue Collins. And I'm Mitch McBride. Our top story of the day, Team Liquid's request for a rebrand has been denied by the VCT Commission. The proposed names included Fnatic Academy, Fnatic 2.0, Budget Fnatic, Fnatic Rejects, and Team Liquid X. Yeah, I can see why. Uh, in foreign relations, concerns have been raised over the effectiveness of the American education system. After Artis' stint in NRG, he's lost the ability to recall basic facts, such as the names of Billy Billy Gaming's players. And he only remembers the letters F and S from the alphabet. Well, thank God he's home now. In science and technology, Team Heretics have been accused of plagiarism after unveiling their latest invention, the Brother Buff, featuring Boo and Mini Boo. A representative from K Court commented, well, good luck with that. Yeah, there could definitely be some Mini Boo Boos along the way for that roster. Now to the French news. Il y a plus d'équipes françaises qui jamais ont VCT. Cake Top, Vitality, and maintenant Gentlemate. Mais soyons honnêtes, elles ont pu tous les éclater. I'm sure whatever he just said was 100% facts. And speaking of facts, BBL have won an award for their contributions to bettering the environment. Their new recycling scheme named Plus Pora Minus Pora Plus Pora Plus Elite Minus Elite Plus Elite has revolutionized the industry. Although rumors suggest that that isn't their final product. Next, a wholesome story coming out of Turkey. Foot Esports have captured the attention of well-known philanthropist Professor Charles Neddington. His latest charity project finds him teaching Backpacking 101 and giving a seminar on how to dodge English language interviews. Good guy, Charles. This just in. Legendary ex-Gambit coach N has made his return to VCT. I repeat, N is finally back. That's it? There's no joke? Uh, Mitch is N. Nice. Well, in that case, we asked you to vote for who you think should be the Estonian Player of the Week. And we're so excited to reveal that Team Vitality's Kix has taken the honors. Make sure to vote for next week's Estonian Player of the Week and see if Kix can win it again. For the Valorant News Network EMEA, I've been Mitch McBride. And I've been Yungsu Collins. Thanks for Thanks watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. Thank you Thanks. very much. Yes. Goodbye. Bye. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I hope uh, we get to see the Estonian Player of the Week in action, of course. That's going to be tomorrow. But for now, let's talk about the opening game of today as I make my way back to our lovely analysts here. Of course, Team Heretics will be taking on Foot Esports. Let's start with Foot because they had a fantastic year last year. They defied expectations. Uh, Kukuka, are they going to repeat that? Are we expecting that to happen again? I mean, definitely the changes that they've made are probably looking in that direction, right? They already 
as you mentioned, had very good results. Remember that for 2022, this was the team that would have ascended if there was an ascension uh, back then because they were the winners. Uh, so um, after what they did last year, bringing in Jetta J and seeing it has to be, you know, that push again that not only takes them to international events, but to the next level. And speaking about CNET as well, you're looking over towards the fact that he's replacing Kiwi on this roster who had really good results last year, but lacked a little bit of that stability. Now we're expecting this previous 2021 champion of Valorant to be able to bring that experience to the table, but also is a little bit of a redemption arc for him because he didn't look quite at home on Navi. Yeah, and as good as Foot looked, it didn't look like they were championship quality yet. So maybe this change to having CNET come in, maybe get back into some good form, bring some of that experience to get them over that little hurdle. I mean, for Heretics on the other side, you know, they didn't have the great season that Foot uh, were having uh, last year, but Kakuka, they've also made changes and surely that's going to be the key to turn things around for them this year. I think that we have two different types of teams that have made changes. There are people that have leaned more into picking up, you know, like for example, Team Liquid picking the, the, the Apex core uh, and some other teams that have gone with the youngster, with the young guns and actually training, uh, training new players to become the stars of the future. Probably Heretics is looking in that direction as you said, last year wasn't the best. This year has to be better, right? Yeah, and I think a major point we have to mention here is that their star player that they picked up uh, in the offseason, this young uh, Turkish rookie, Reigns, will not be playing on stage today. He will be playing uh, in an office uh, uh, due to a visa issue here. And still, as an IGL, as someone that played this game, how big of a difference is that going to make for the players on stage? Yeah, it's going to definitely be something interesting because he's not going to be part of the game plan. He's not going to be part of the team huddle. He's not going to be part of everything that's happening here, doing all the activities together. So it's going to be a different vibe or energy. The team, when they went around, they want to celebrate. Well, he's in a different room. He's not going to be there part of that celebration. So the energy is going to be different. Momentum is going to be different. And maybe there's going to be a little bit more pressure on these guys. Yeah, especially the IGL boo we're talking about, Ash, because uh, he's got a, a mini boo there now. His brother's in the team. I love that their names synergize in yeah. that kind of sense. But speaking about these two, I mean, there's a big age gap between them as well when you think about it. It's an eight-year age gap. And then you also have the fact that they haven't played together since like for like 945 days, I want to say, since they've been in a VCT event together. But focusing back on that difference in age, I come from a big family. I have a lot of siblings, and I feel like that dynamic can really change. You can have more of that mentorship aspect, or you can be best friends. And I wonder how that translates into the server, how that affects the dynamic for the whole team. Yeah, and I wonder how much they've been cooking in the off season, because we do have uh, Mav Vitos in here, Gaius and Neil, they've been uh, working hard behind the scenes. I want to see uh, what maps we're going to be getting, of course, as you guys broke down uh, before we have Icebox, a uh, breeze changes, Lotus changes, Sunset uh, as well. Maybe we're going to get some uh, nice surprises uh, on day one. So let's take a look now uh, from the picks uh, and bands. Of course, we will be starting with the bands. I think uh, Heretics are meant to start with the bands today with the veto. So we're going to find out uh, shortly. But of course, they have made changes, but they still have uh, comfort zones we've seen in the past. And it looks like we're going to go a uh, Lotus Bind and then Icebox. Kukuga, what do you make of this? I'm super excited for the Lotus with the changes that we've seen made to every single point, and especially uh, the gecko that we saw from last year and testing in, in some of the teams. Also with, uh, you know, a foot having an specialist on KO. I wonder how that is going to change the, co change the composition. Yeah, and we're not seeing Breeze or Sunset in this pool, so it's going to be interesting to see what the teams have cooked up with because these are more of the stock maps. So. You know, these are more familiar for the players. Yeah, picking Lotus into foot as well. They are brave, yeah. uh, but the players, they are ready and it's time to bring them out. Team Heretics and Foot walking out for the first time to the brand new anthem of EMEA. Welcome to VCT EMEA. Bienvenidos a la VCT EMEA. Bienvenue au VCT EMEA. VCT EMEA, hoş geldiniz.
It is a new year, a new stage. Everything that happened last year does not matter as the year uh, begins with a new star for these teams as well. And anything uh, can happen. We do have to say, Paratech OG, uh, one of the royalties back in the days of G2 Valorant, is finally on a stage, Alan EMEA. Uh, Kukuka, I feel like we've been waiting for that moment for a long time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it makes a lot of sense for Neil to pick this player to be the sub. Um, you know, especially under the circumstances, we know that last year Weber even had to sub in uh, for a moment, but he makes a lot of sense. And I'm actually very happy that he made it here. Yeah, I am very happy indeed. But let's talk about that map veto we uh, saw. I kind of alluded there, I was a little bit afraid with Heracles to pick Lotus uh, into Foot Foot. They love this map. Uh, they looked great on it, but uh, we do have to uh, address the, the new changes. It's not the same map as we saw last year. Yeah, and there's going to be new changes, which is, I think, going to help both sides a little bit. We're going to see, obviously, with the three sites, attackers are going to have a lot more options to be able to go places, but there's going to be a little bit more 50-50 angles for the defenders to lure the attackers into some traps. We see that at the blue room. We see that at middle of B. We see that at C, the enter of C site. So it's going to be interesting to see how the teams are going to kind of adapt to this new meta. And we have seen the map being played in other regions, but nobody plays like EMEA does, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, Ash, you know, when it comes to the agents of like both teams, for some reason, they like the Neon before. Like, Kiwi was only playing Neon here, uh, no matter what was happening. And Heretic, they were also trialing uh, the Neon here with Kellogg's as well. But surely with the new changes that have come in, knowing that CNED is going to be uh, making uh, his debut for this team in EMEA, surely we're not going to see him on the Neon, right? Surely. I don't know. I mean, when he was back on Na'Vi, Angel had him cooking on some different agents. And I'm expecting that Hopefully, they would go back to the tried and true here for CNED. But I think also with the added 50-50s that Steel was talking about, those concusses could actually be really helpful with clearing out one of those angles to help you take those fights. I can't be the only one that has PTSD from seeing CNED on uh, <laughs> Omen on, on Lotus, but I hope it doesn't happen again. Still, I want to see a new frontier for CNED. I want him, you know, trying out the Euro, trying out different things, and, you know, going back to this Turkish environment that he actually thrived on back in the day. Yeah, it's going to be, honestly, Heretics is here to kind of impress us right now because we haven't really seen too much from them. We have seen a little bit, but it's it's a new roster and it's a new year. And I think Foot needs to really put their foot down and stop this matchup because they, they are the ones that didn't really make, I mean, they made a couple of changes, but they are the ones that are expected to, you know, do decently well, middle of the pack type of thing, and they're trying to exceed that and do a little bit better. Yeah, and let's not forget, as I said, from the other regions, you lose two games here, you're you're done until April. You don't play anymore. And Foot are not one of those teams that we, we're thinking about. I don't even want to think about elimination when it comes to them, uh, uh, Kukuga. I don't see a world where uh, they don't at least contest for that Madrid spot. It feels so weird, right? Because last year when we were here in EMEA, it was all about the, the split. We didn't have that, that, you know, after Brazil, I mean, and, and feeling like we're going to say goodbye to teams too early because we're barely going to see uh, things from them. What we can say is that there won't be any any hiding, anything that you know they're going to keep for later matches. I feel like it's do or die. And also, you have to test in officials everything that you've been cooking up. It really is sink or swim. And when you're looking at the Heritage roster, they're known to be, okay, they talked about it, they tweeted about it, more developmental, but you don't have the time to make those adaptations here for kickoff and at the end of the day as well. There's also the fact that they didn't have that great performance. They were bottom tier in EMEA last year in 2023. So they are also playing with a lot less to lose in that kind of sense. Might give them the opportunity to be a little bit more loose in the server. Honestly, uh, that's a great point because purely because looking at the map vetoes, uh, they've got a, they let bind through. The Heretics Man. let bind through. They did not play bind one time last year. They was at permaban. They didn't mm. like it at all. And uh, this is feeling like a new team. But it has to be different, right? It's mm. only Boo and Benji staying from the old roster with with all the changes that you've made you have to look at maps differently also with uh, the changes i'm looking at what is going to be if we're going to see the sky as i was mentioning how are you going to divide the information that you get because it's not going to be so recurrent uh, to you and if you're against a team that masters ko the way that foot does it with cracks uh i think that they are pretty ready for this best of three yeah speaking of sky yeah not having that pre-flash to be able to use for info or to be able to stagger that flash with the dog to get continuous info throughout the round to 
know what's going on, to sell fakes on the attack side, on defense to be able to move around and, and play a little bit more proactive, move around, push up for the flanks or over rotate to get the gamble stacks going off. But we did see Gecko being played a little bit last year on Bind. So it's going to be interesting to see if teams start to shift over for the more Gecko mainstay pick or if teams are going to run the sky but just have that little bit of an adjustment period. I think KO could be good. I mean, sure. And it's cracks. cracks. It's cracks. cracks, too. He doesn't play anything else but KO, so we're he expecting tried. that, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we might see something different. New, because... you, new cracks? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I, I mean, Ash, come on. You, you can weigh in and settle the debate here. I feel like if he doesn't play KO, I'm, I'm going to be extremely surprised. I mean, but it also is Lotus as well. You don't see KO coming out that frequently on this map. It is more of a niche pick, depending on the particular team composition that you're going to see. But that reinvention is, of course, again, necessary, especially CNED coming back. You've got a new Sentinel in Yetuj as well. Sure, Foot, they had very great results last year, but with all of the changes, with a 40% turnover in players within this region now, you've got to get creative. Yeah, and if we think about that Lotus, and especially about last year, we know that Foot played it a ton. They loved this map. The problem with that is that it became too repetitive from them when it, when it got to the end of the years. Look, mm -hmm. people had already figured them out, but with the changes in the map and the changes in the in the lineup, I think that Jeduye not having to switch from roles and, and stay in, uh, in that position, because I think that, you know, even if, if even him being a rookie, I feel like his incorporation has been a little bit, you know, shut up by CNET going into the team because of, of the bigger name. But it's also, you know, a new hurdle for him. And I think that uh, we need to see um, that push from foot that, you know, is like a, a stable right now. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing as we head into agent select that he's on. Oh, the CNET! CNET! CNET, he was doing this on Navi, guys. Uh, do we like this? Do we like the CNET Yoru coming back? Look, we can talk about the CNET Yoru, but we can also talk about the vibes. I think that, like, okay, when I was looking at them on the player cameras, they looked happy, they looked energetic. We, you know, if we're talking about CNED, CNED didn't really have the greatest year last year on Na'Vi and wasn't looking a, a, as happy as he is now. So maybe it, it's like, oh, the Yoru pick, that's looking a little bit sketchy, but it's also about like environment. So maybe like he's gonna be set up properly with the, the breach and the gecko. Uh, maybe the team runs the game plan a little bit more different than Na'Vi did. I think that's the thing. It's thinking about that comfort coming back home here now to a Turkish team here for CNET. And then when you're also looking at the general composition of foot right now, there is the Astra there for Mr. Fallen. I think with the Gecko and the Breach as well, there's a lot more opportunity to set up actually for that Yoru play, those TPs in towards deep spawn, into back site, mm. and kind of just, but that also, again, requires a lot of that coordination. Yeah, but vibes, Ash. Yeah, vibes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Vibes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, there's a vibe I remember, and it was when he was playing it on Fracture and he didn't TP once. And I was just like, <laughs> see, you know better than this. I am sure, I could only imagine, you know, Angel's coming in here, but I know this is a new season. The vibes, yeah, yeah. The, vibes. Vibes. the vibes, the vibes uh, are immaculate. Speaking of vibes, I want to talk about the other side because we were, you know, uh, thinking about Neon, no Neon, if it's going to happen or not. And Mini Boo uh, did lock it in. Uh, Steel, what do you think about their comp as well? Yeah, I think that Neon works really well as we touch, touched about it at the pregame, is that, you know, there's a lot of these 50-50 corners. The wall's going to get a lot of value. And I think taking space explosively, not necessarily rushing the areas at the start of the round to contest areas early, but also just being explosive out the choke points, being able to pivot and flex with, you know, pivoting from, oh, let's go towards C. Nope, we're actually going towards A and doing it in record time is going to be something that's interesting to see from the Neon. I think that is also something that I'm looking towards as far as Minibu versus CNED in these interesting duelist choices coming out the gate here for Lotus. The fact that you do have that opportunity to try and get behind the enemy team here for CNED and then there's the timings that are so key I think when you're looking towards mini boo on that neon pick that high gear that ability to rotate super quickly catch up with the team CNED that kit in Yoru should in theory be able to counter that in that kind of sense for fast rotations as well but it depends on again if he uses those TPs yeah Kukuka, you're gonna love this the double gecko we're oh, just gonna start yeah, with I that I love gecko I think that yeah. we're going to see very interesting lineups uh, the way that they're going to be you know uh, retrieving and how the other team you know, because when you play with the Gecko, you also know where the weaknesses are and you know how to attack and be like, okay, we have this on this on, on our attack. Let's see how we can counter it. And you have already, well, you should have already thought about that uh, possibility and how to counter it. So that is also very exciting. And I'm 
really, really looking forward to what Mini Boy is going to be able to do. I've been watching this kid for a very long time back in uh, in Spain. He was playing in Castle, and everybody was saying the same. This kid is going to make it to VCT, and now he's finally here. Yeah, and speaking of just like focusing on the attack side specifically, it seems like Heretics is going to be more of like a fluid team that's kind of just going with it. There's no set timing intervals that they're going to go for because with the, the composition they have with the Neon, uh, they're running the Viper as well. They're going to be able to just like move around uh, back and forth, but we're going to see not the same thing from foot. They have to do things more calculated. It has to be done in stages and yeah. intervals. It's not going to be like a fluid like throughout the, the round anything can happen and it's going to be something's going to happen now and then something's going to happen in 40 seconds from now. We're not going to see just like constant movement and activity. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, I'm also thinking about, you know, the Sentinels. I'm thinking about the Killjoys. So we were talking about, for example, with the nerf of the turret, it cannot cover, uh, if you put it on the box and B, it cannot cover both angles coming from C and B. So, you know, there's also going to be adjustments to, to that. And also in the defense, that super famous entrance to C is not going to be as easy to cover with those nano swamps. And I feel like there are a lot more answers to those problems. Yeah, and of course, uh, some of these players, it is their first time ever playing on a stage uh, like like this, making their debut here. Uh, you know, for Palisek, he's returning to a big stage. He was owning everybody uh, when the game uh, first came out. Of course, a very prolific uh, Omen player too. Uh, what kind of um, uh, advantages do you think a player like Palisek will be bringing to a team like this? Especially, like I said, day one, there's a lot of nerves. You have a player who's not even with you here. We spoke a little bit about Boo here, but I feel like we have to think about the fact that palitech has been doing this for many, many years. Yeah, exactly. I think he brings the experience and I think that he's a good addition to the situation that Heretics is in right now you have a player playing from home someone that cannot play just yet but everybody will be very yeah. excited to see in the future in woods but um for, for him i think that this is the the piece especially with the uh, experience that he also has with with neil uh, in time he's the perfect fit for this situation. He also talked about it within a highlight that Team Her Heretics did on Twitter. They showed a video where he was talking about how the fact that he thinks it's great that he can bring the experience to the table for these new young bloods coming in for Team Heretics, but that he's also taking pieces from them. They have a fresh new look here within Valorant and he's able to glean from that in that kind of sense. And then on top of that as well, I think something we have to remember is for Patatech, again, there's a counter until he's done playing, until they need a sub again here on Heretics. This is his opportunity to shine and prove himself if he does want to get picked up later in the season. I mean, we saw Kamek do it last year. He had to sub in for Fnatic for a couple of weeks. He did amazingly. Uh, he's gone on to uh, play in Ascension People this year. People are not going to remember that because we could barely notice. <laughs> yeah, he, he was great though. He had to fill in for yeah. a role he wasn't even playing. So I definitely think actually this could be a time for him to prove himself, but also on the side of foot. As a captain last year, he was the rookie. He was the one that came in uh, and had a lot to prove. Everybody uh, realized how big of an impact he could make pretty much right off the bat. But this time around, he's not a rookie anymore. Yep. And again, uh, still uh, on a team where they have some newer players, he's going to have to step up. But for now, uh, it's time to uh, move the vibes to a different room. <laughs> it's the casters. It's the return of Mitchman and Tombiz. Thank you so much, Yinsu. Yes, we've got the players down on the stage, at least most of them, with a young heretic still to be molded. That clay, we don't know what shape it's going to take, but a tenured Turkish roster on the other side, they've certainly solidified themselves at the top of the game. Tom, you're expecting to see the same result as most people here, I imagine. I saw the predictions go out earlier on. Foot to take the series. Is it 2-0 is it or is there competition? I would lean towards a 2-0. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I think Foot have come in as one of my favorites to do some real damage this season. I, I think they're in a, a great spot in terms of the upgrades that they've made. And Heretics are brand new. Like they've got a lot of very, very young players, 18-year-olds looking to make a mark. One so young, he can't even play. <laughs> and we are now into our pistol round. Some unique comps, comps we haven't really seen before. And I'm excited to see what these guys have got planned. Already you're seeing the B side under a lot of pressure as Foot put in a decoy. CNED claiming the space and they've taken it right off the back. Breach stun still locked and ready to be used because B isn't their final destination. They're moving all the way around. A site challenge. Benji Fishy loses his utility alongside his life. And Patatech now is sort of isolated up there on top A. They might be forced into a retake. Uh, how? Going to manage to do too much here. Paditech left blind already. It's going to be able to hold on to some of the space. That's the main thing here. Just having a little bit of ground so they can fight back in. The rotation's coming through. But the main man I'm looking at, well, is Mr. Farlin. If he has anything to do in the late round, Mitch, because they've already lost <laughs> another member. Yeah, they've already thinned out those numbers pretty efficiently. For Team Heretics, a way back in is looking unlikely. But 
Oh, it's a pistol. You're always going to try it, Mr. Fallen. Oh. Sending out that long play to end the game. The rest of his team just needs to buy time. Hold on, he's been spotted, but that doesn't matter. Clean shot by Mr. Fallen. Crack's taking advantage of the chaos, and it is going to be a flawless start from the squad of foot. Five ghosts, both starting the round in their hands and ending the round on the enemy team. Yeah, and Andalusia flawless to kick off the game. And honestly, I, I, it's not the start you want. Like, if you're a young team, you want to get hyped. You want to get going really early on in this match. Give yourself a little bit to celebrate. And for uh, uh, kind of shutting that down very early on. And, and this is one of the risks. It was said by Sue on the desk, like picking into a map that last year, okay, I feel like towards the end maybe went a little bit worse for sure. Foot, but one that they were ultimately confident on the entire year. And I think the only reason they got worse was because they didn't really change anything because their old comp was so good good for them. You're going to take them there, but that means you have to start defense. And this map historically has been very attack sided. Like a lot of teams able to even lose a half 10-2, still come back in the end. I like the idea here from Team Heretics to play early aggression on A main. We're going to see that from a lot of teams, I think, on those Ecos. Running it down, trying to challenge, using up their flash as well from the get-go to slow any sort of assault. But Foot are patient, right? They can just play the map control on this. Two on each extremity, one up the middle. And it's a waiting game, seeing when Heretics are going to take that step out of place. Expectations for this round, especially here, like, now that they've been pushed to spreading across the map, I don't expect Team Heretics to get a lot done. If they can find a couple of kills, it'd be huge. It's not looking great. It's not, is it? <laughs> As uh, expected, does, does your curse still carry on? Do we, do we carry that on from yeah, last they year? They win a 2v5 now. I'll, it I'll it accept it, but okay. they're doing the right thing grouping up. But the first challenge is going to be out of Captain. This isn't the guy that's been slapped. Sorry, what I'll was just that? Go, what I'll, was just that? Go, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'll leave it there. <laughs> the rest of the rounds will be secured nicely. Yeah, four players still. Oh they're going to manage to keep up those extra rifles as well. So this bonus round is going to have, well, I was going to say a little bit of bite, but they've actually bought back up on the remaining rifles as well. So this is going to be a tough one. You have to bear in mind as well that you do have a couple of those remaining. sort of low armor players. And while in all honesty, only one man currently on the board in terms of the fragging department. This is where you want to see heretics really turn things around. Yeah. As these barriers go up and rifles are in hand, that same challenge over A main. We saw it with classics before, and well, Foot just ignored it. They see that same utility, and the response is well, not exactly the same. Last time they defaulted across the map, 2 1 2. Now, five on the left hand side, nobody else anywhere to be seen. It's going to be a C push by the looks of things for Team Heretics. That puts the pressure onto Patatek and Benji Fishy. The thing is, if you look at the agents they're playing, those are the perfect agents to lock down a site, so to speak. We'll see if they can actually find the value for it already, bypassing utility with the Yoru. But he's, he's isolated, you know, he's kept oh, no. back for a moment. What's happened to Benji? Oh, he's got a little bit lost, it feels. Sectioned into the back corner of the site, and well, that one-man army hasn't managed to get anything done. In fact, they are slowly being wiped out the lurk of Yedajay as well. It's going to put another in the dirt. And oh, well, I'm, I'm already starting to get a little bit worried. As said, for a team with little experience, brand new on the block, you want a good start. You don't want to allow Foot to start running away with things. And I don't feel like they've had to do anything too crazy, like some fairly basic executions. I'm also, I, I want to say, I'm excited to see Seen it's Yoru, mainly for reasons of has it got better than when it was on the last team? Because obviously, one thing with Yoru, I feel like communication is actually really important. Like the timing of everything, we saw him flash teammates quite a lot last yeah. year, but now he's communicating in Turkish again. Yedeje, well, he's going to make it even more costly for them. A chance for Mini Boo to at least get onto the board, maybe hold the gun, but caught going down the rope. And a 3 0, very clean as well from Foot. Yeah, it's the upgrades, it's the kills being so dominant. And the fact that you have that little slip up, the, the jitters on stage, stepping into the aftershock. Now look, where do you have to go? There was utility behind him. Maybe you could have found a, a small gap, but it's the fact that he gets trapped in that situation in the first place. You have to give commendations to Foot for having that execute so well planned out before they even set foot on the site. They have a player down. <laughs> I thought there'd be like a reaction or something there for the oh. coach. So they're just like... They're just yeah. accepting their fate yeah, that, for now. Yeah, that, that did happen. Our representatives of the UK scene. I know Mitch is a big fan. You know me, Tom. <laughs> just can't get enough. <laughs> to be fair, I've been watching a little bit of Polaris, and there are some Irish players up and coming that you can finally build a five-player team of Irish players. Wow. Genuinely. Tom said something nice about the Irish scene. I, this is know, going to my... I was impressed. I was it's impressed. going to my diary. 
Remember, in this day, oh, they also, they also played down. a deadlock. So, you know, they're, they're innovating as well. Hmm. I do wonder when we're going to get to see some deadlock here. It's a team that's very much looking to innovate will pull it out eventually. Team Heretics, lots of players walking through that orb, and CNET, ooh, he almost got caught. The flash is good, the damage yeah. is even better. Out of Captain's down, and CNET doesn't want anything to do with this. Backing off a little bit, popping the flash to slow them, but they're going to redirect to B. Team Heretics are here ahead of them, though. Mini Boo sure is already there, but here comes Thrash coming close. Destroyed in time. Yedishay can't hold on. Some good kills for Team Heretics. Some signs of life starting to shine through. C didn't work. B didn't work. What's next? Well, one left, isn't there? They're on their way to A. And luckily, unlike most maps, they actually have a third option to go for. Boo actually has a full belt of utility, but doesn't even need it. That's going to be Mr. Fallen falling. And leaving just two players surviving for, for a chance in this round. They've already committed an ultimate to it, Mitch. So for the Heretic side, this needs to be a win. You know, they could go looking for upgrades. There are rifles sitting around, but it's all about time. They want to get up and in this fight quickly. Cracks alongside oh. CNET, looking to hold the line. And CNET's good for the first. Cracks stepping in. Ult available, but not needed. Well handled by Cracks right, and Foot. They get the round. I, d I don't know they're going to be ecstatic about no. that up against uh, Sheriffs, but hey, look, they, they saved themselves from a disastrous reawakening of Heretics early on. Yeah, the, the fact is they, they've got the budget that it doesn't really matter too much. The last rounds they lost two players total, so they've got plenty of finances available. It, th that's the thing, though. When you're on the Heretic side, that means that this round needed to be a win. Like, it, it couldn't just be a round where you did a little bit of extra damage because that's not going to affect your opponents whatsoever. And now they come in, you've used one of your ultimates, and they still have a couple left. The Dimensional Drift, Thrash available. The defense, though, well, they're, they're not even going to give CNED the chance to do anything. Yeah, he was stuck in this dimension, unfortunately. Unable to shift in time. It's the A site that's under love threat. Yeah, it gave the thing of like, he's looking at you. It's like, he's not, he's dead. He, <laughs> he was looking at you. Not anymore. Well, the ult's going to be saved. Picked back up to use again. At least cleared out like a recon drone that you get a second shot at. The stun is good. That slowed them down. Benji Fishy, though, still steaming ahead. Taking the corner. Mini Boo and Boo combined. They've given their team a real chance with just Mr. Fall and a one versus five. What a clutch it would be. But not today. The first round is found for Team Heretics. Yeah, I, I like the change of pace as well. I, I think that's always a worry when you lose those first four rounds that you sort of fall back into your shell a bit. You go, oh, okay, let's just, let's let them take this map control and on a map like Lotus, you can't do that. You you have to challenge for space and that initial aggression, well, they got a little bit lucky to see that just happened to be starting out as ultimates and they get a freebie kill. But from then onwards, it was almost like moving as a unit, like moving as a core, just running around, taking these fights together. <laughs> let's go, good. <laughs> you love seeing Banshee getting hyped up. The smiles are out and well, for the side of foot, for four rounds, they were in the lead. Now turn to three. Team Heretics get rifles. Ultimates start to come online. And what was a very much secured map can start to come into question. They secure this round, though. The slippery slope is retaken by Heretics. One minute 30 on the clock. That A main aggression has been successful for Heretics. And Foot, they don't really manage to wrestle any control out of their opponent's hands. Pushing up on C to get an orbit is the most that the early round gets them. I have to wonder, what is their burst play? What is the execute that we're about to see happen? And, well, we can already see the shift in players towards that C side of the map. Again, challenging Palatek and Benji Fishy. Two players that do excellent, well, two agents at least, and utility belts that do an excellent job when defending a site. Lockdown thrown in. Not necessarily committed yet. They're waiting for someone to move off. I think Minivu's expecting someone to get there. Luckily, he's a speedster, but oh, oh, um, not quite quick enough. It doesn't matter. They will be waiting it out anyway as the full team look to come in for the retake. Ultimates available, at least in the form of overdrive for Minibu. Maybe he can try and take some space back in, but so far, foot in these afterplants have been flawless. They have been very hard to deal with, uh, albeit this site perhaps gives some angles they could isolate duels on. A little bit more difficult now with the Cosmic Divide. They've got to go in blind. It has allowed them to sneak around the, the corner oh, a little know. bit, but Cracks has that angle locked. Even pops a molly on it. Now the Flash will go through in just a moment. There it is, blinding up some players, giving them a chance on the side of foot as they wrap around the back, give up a little bit more control in favor of taking fights together. And those fights, well, they're not going excellently. Cracks and CNED, though, quickly recover, leaving it onto Patatech. Having to defuse underneath both players, no utility to deny. Players close halfway oh. already, but it's not enough. Not by a long shot, five to one on the board. 
Yeah, there was a chance if he gets that kill onto Ada Captain, or maybe if he just goes balls to the wall and just decides to stick it all the way. It might have worked if he stuck it. It might have. That's like, the thing, though. You have to. I, you understand his decision. You have to yeah, assume that absolutely. someone's coming for you at this point, especially with Cena still standing. Again, though, I, I do feel like for the side of Heretics, it is going to be based around those early fights. Like it, it seems like the second the side falls to their opponents, the afterplants are, foot are just too good. There hasn't been a way back in. And even as said, when they leave a gap, it seems like they expect what's going to come on the other side. I am liking so far, though, like the, the dizzy flashes seem to be really good from both teams. Like there was three players blinded as Heretics looked to run back into the site. Unfortunately, the, the, well, the other two won. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this you can't is... get them all. Unfortunately, not this time. Maybe it'll work out next next run of it. But, you know, for the side of Team Heretics, I feel like this is a squad that I wanted to see, if they're going to succeed, start off extremely well. We wanted to see them come in hot, now having to play from the back. The other thing that worries me is I don't see Foot uh, feeling pretty ecstatic. They're not bouncing with energy when they're winning these rounds. If anything, I think they're kind of upset with how things have gone, <laughs> seeing it narrowed down to a 2v1, potential defuse under their nose, potential dual loss that could lead to the, the round falling out of their hands. You could see that they came out of it and went, took a, a sigh of relief as opposed to a, a cheer. Well, that and that <laughs> signifies to me, they're not going to let this one slip. I can actually translate. Guys is going, hey guys, you remember when I played that Rebel qualifier for you? Yeah, I was playing better than you. If yeah, you could I'll step up. myself in next match. <laughs> you remember we 3 0 that? Yeah. Well, you shouldn't have lost a round. <laughs> but that's that's the last time we saw two, saw these two teams play. It and it was very, very dominant for Foot. That's the thing. They, the they've come though. in with the core of the previous team, a youngster in Yedege, who I think most people don't even look at as a rookie anymore. He is. In terms of the league, he is a rookie, but he has played so well. He's already won a trophy with them. So yes. it's hardly in that same sort of status as the players on the other side. Again, though, this is the exact start I was looking for from Heretics. Get that early aggression. Deny I missed the Fallen as well. That is the smokes on the other side gone. Of course, we know that for Heretics, they've got that double controller, but it isn't the same at the moment for Foot. So now is whether or not they're going to be able to pivot. And Boo, this is a nasty surprise. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Shoulder peak actually saved Yedige's life, even allowed him to deal more damage than received. Some success from Foot also towards that A site. Yeah, they managed to wrestle control out of the hands of Heretics, who've constantly been flashing and bombarding this part of the map with utility for a three stack on A. That's kind of being red. Footer seeing that that space is wide open and the B site is theirs. They might even want to take it further. Yeah, I'm also worried just how low some of the players are. Boo, two HP, Benji on 17. Like, anything could take them out. Even the extra clipping you now take from the Molotov flash through and they've taken an awful lot of space like look all the way back on the a site you've still got a captain you've, you've got to push through the ceiling as well like at the moment heretics on this retake are playing with no ground but they are stacking up together a real good chance for trades and in fact mini boo's going to win his second duel already this is where they stand the best chance up against the squad like foot if they can just use all their guns at once trade off each other and have a few missed shot cracks not able to hit it to start it off this is getting a little worrying as heretics steamroll the site and take a second round at long last. Okay, they might not have started hot, but they're warming up. Yeah, and, and actually, again, it, it seems to be based around these sort of aggressive defensive side pushes. I'm, I'm really liking some of these early fights from Miniboo. He's someone, again, another youngster coming into the league who I think especially starting off on a defensive side neon to, to kick off your career in the VCT, it's not easy. <laughs> it's a real difficult thing to do, but seven and five right up there at the top of the board. And, He's winning a lot of these early fights. The supportive utility as well that, that's coming through from Rians. He's someone, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm very sad that he hasn't been able to get here because I'm really hyped to see him play. Like, I, I think, although we've got talk around the likes of Wu, and he, he might actually be the most exciting player on this roster. Yeah, he was so much fun to watch in the home ground circuit. And, well, I'm sure we're going to get to see him make his land debut in some time. But for now, at least he's still able to participate. And Heretics can show all that they've been working for. So far, it's got them two rounds on the defense, but there's plenty more to be played for. And you can see that Foot are abandoning what has been some challenges, at least info gathering on A main, instead looking towards B. Perhaps they've sniffed out a weakness, or perhaps they just know that they can easily pivot as the round goes on. It's patient stuff again. A lot of this map comes down to almost just baiting sound. I'm going to open the door a few times, but I think that's one of the things that's been quite cool with the usage of Dizzy. I, I think back to players like Cloud even using it once last season, where it's just like you just throw it straight up in the air, hope that it gives you a little bit of extra information. 
for now, though, once again, this beat site ensues. Marian straight through the smoke has managed to pop two heads of the foot side. This B site has been the least successful of the ones they've gone for so far. And in fact, if they even attempt to double back, they've got two players to deal with. Yeah, and one a little closer than they'll be expecting. Mini Boo has one hell of a spot here. The flash comes out, oh, reveals no. him, and he's blind and taken down. Still got one for his trouble. Despite being blinded up, Boo's even got a flash of his own. And with the paranoia in play, Mr. Fallen didn't stand a chance. Well handled by the side of Heretics. And now we're starting to see that foothold gained. Yeah, and, and as I said, especially on this defensive side, the more rounds you can garner, the better spot you're going to be in. Like anything, even like a 7-5 half in favor of the attack is a very, very good half. So I think now with Foot's economy on the brink, but they do have some very solid ultimates behind them. The one thing I'll say with them at the moment that I understand these fast attempts into the B site, but I don't think that's been their success so far. Taking those extremities, making sure that, well, basically heretics can't get into the position they just did because they managed to have so much map control on that A site without Foot even realizing. Yeah, I, I, this has been the part I, I feel like has been fought for, certainly on Heretic side, every single round. Yeah. They got pushed back once, maybe twice, but for the most part, they have held on to that tooth and nail. The two stack laid on into the round. We're seeing it yet again over on that A site. Gecko and Omen, while the rest of the players look to rotate, reinforcing the contact that was seen on C. Door opens, though. Now it could be a B hit. They have yeah. to stay a little bit more spread. And this is where Foot like to breathe the round. Make your opponents spread out. Make them worry. Make them second guess. And then they can blitz into a site that's hopefully not as secure as before. But as we can see, they're still waiting. And they're in good spots. They've not fallen for the ruse. With their aggressive spot on A as well, I, I think they're quite confident in that B site retake. I, I love the fact that Foot are just tapping that button again and again, trying to bait players in, but it has not worked. Still two looking to defend, but they are falling back that little bit. Now with 40 seconds left, it looks like Foot are finally going to make their move. The flash was in. cnet has got the space. The challenge, though, tough when he's rocking that pistol. Snake bite will buy them some time. 30 seconds 30 on the seconds clock. Left. The numbers advantage certainly paying off with the plant even coming through. This could get a little bit scary uh -oh. if they keep losing players on the side of Heretics. Down to three already. A three versus four. And there's utility in play. Foot have got a rolling thunder alongside Thrash. They could keep them way back on this. And that's exactly what they're going to do. Buying so much time. A paranoia comes in. It does next to nothing. And Rians. Well, he almost got caught by the decoy. Instead, he grabs a kill for free. Nice one onto Cracks, but he what? doesn't last too much longer with another kill from the Stinger <laughs> of Ada Captain. All three kills have been his four. In fact, a chance to take all five. He's swaying. He does it. We've just kicked off the MEA and already your first ace from fan favorite Ada Captain. You can see the little smirk on his face as well. He knows that there was a little bit of BS in that one. Three kills running in with the Stinger. You got guys, Rico. Let's just see what we can do. Maybe we get a plant. Maybe we do a little bit of damage. He's working better than most people's rifles. And okay, cool. There was a few good flashes in there that maybe yeah, helped him out a little bit. Whatever. But he's, he's shooting it from like meters away, Unreal. just having a great time. Foot right back on the board. And I will say that C site has been a vulnerability. Like they have been able to get in far too easily. And so far, I feel like Benji has maybe been struggling a little bit. Okay, flash broken. A return flash from Foot's breach as well. Tries to keep Heretics back. But look, it's just so difficult to try to wrestle the control out of their arms. Uh -oh. CNET, what are you doing? There goes the stun. He's out. No. The shorty and that. See that? It's disgusting. No. Absolute filth. And now an isolated boo. He's standing alone, taking head after head. So much damage done. But come on. How many more shots can this man hit? He's stuck in a corner. Never mind. What a wow. shot from boo. What a series of shots. <laughs> Oh, this is ridiculous. Like, the start to this round was Cnid getting two kills, two what? players, <laughs> not just one, two players when he's messing around in his ult. And then somehow Boo just goes, so good, lads. It's the fact I've they, got this one. They open the door for him as well. You know, if they left that two seconds, yeah. everything's he's fine. He's just chilling. And the door opens, he comes out, the stun hits, the shorty kills, the upgrade. And then for Boo to claim the round like that, he, he can... Basically, Barcinet, every time he fights someone, he should be fighting two, three players, yeah. but he gets away with it. Now, one of the things I will say is the benefit of playing the Viper on this map, I don't think that ever happens. You almost always have a snake bite up on the boo spot the boo is currently standing on. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, though, a pacey hit. At a captain, he doesn't have his stinger this time. He's got a rifle. <laughs> I don't know if that's an upgrade or not. Thrash being thrown through, but again, this ult, a lot of the time, is just used for information. It's so weak that the bullets can take it out with too many problems. 
The fact is, though, heretics have been saving those ults. They're throwing them all into the wind at this point, but there's a counter. Yeah, the counter lockdown is quite a problem. It's going to buy them so much time. And a sneaky position being held by Ada Captain. Oh my, he was just checked, but they didn't see his head as he was crouched down behind the box. And now, as they push forward, heretics need to be worried oh, about nice. their back, but they are. They won enough duels on site. They could look behind. They didn't need to worry. Now the defuse, but yet Ajay just on a sheriff. There's no way he denies it. Yeah, really nice round. Obviously, this is more of what we expect to see. And Andalusia flawless coming out for Heretics this time. They've really started to build into this one. Bear in mind, this was a 4-0 start for Furt, and we were almost worrying exactly what most people thought. A team that made it top eight at champions facing off against a team of rookies. You kind of expect an absolute slaughter. And instead, now, 6-5. I mean, we thought that this was going to be flawless on the side of foot. A lot of people did, or close yeah, to, instead. I'm, it's I'm included. Andalusia flawless for Team Heretics in that round. So now, we bounce back to round number 12, the final one of the half, and some serious contention from that defender side. Not only the op on Benji Fishy that, well, maybe not as scary as I thought, but it's the ultimates in play for the rest of the squad. That Viper's pick going up could seal the fate of the side of foot. All they need to do is deny that site control, but with CNET around, that's so difficult to do. Nice kill. Good start. A chance to take this half in the direction we expected it. Palitech! Ah, it's a gamble and a half. Spamming through a Viper's Pit with a Vandal. You basically just gave them all the information they could ever need to find you. And while now it is just man going down and down and down. Cracks with another leaving. Just Miniboo. 17 HP in a 1v5, do you believe? Rebel Clutch, maybe? Uh, yeah, it would be impressive. <laughs> it might be the play of the year before he even gets yeah, started. Yeah, first game. But, we might uh, as well throw it. Oh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, I think it was a couple of bullets away. Be. And what's that, Tom? It's uh, Andalusia. Flawless. All right, we'll get a rating from uh, Uli and Bay later. Oh, Bay is going to give me a 0 out of 10 <laughs> every single time. I, there, there's a few dissatisfied <laughs> in there that I'm not quite oh, getting. I'm not sure that's what's in there. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, look, a much more competitive start than most people expected. Again, you know, talking about the two games today, later on, there is some debate. There are some people who would see it swing the other way. I, I would say, yeah, I, I think a lot, maybe maybe like a 60, 40, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think, I think a, a lot of people... Debate. Well, and you, I think you good predicted Casey as well. I did predict Casey. I, to be honest, I even said it at the time. The reason I'm going for that is because I think more people will go the other way. But I really do oh, think either I'm team could take it. it cause I want to be cool. against the crowd. My name's Mitch, man. Well, no, there's I a... I did it because I'm cool. Well, Tom, we're participating in a tournament for predictions, you know? <laughs> I don't want to get eliminated. I'm taking this seriously. But, oh, yeah, uh, same. <laughs> But no, for the side of Heretics, I, I, not many people had high expectations. There we go. And now, the pistol round oh starts dear. out with confidence <laughs> from the side of foot. They are looking to put them right back in the dirt. Heretics, yeah, I'm back. Back at tier one. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Just gets insta-flash and dead within 20 right seconds of the round. He's the lurk player as well. And the problem now for Team Heretics, you have lost too much ground to go anywhere other than C, really. I, I, I think you can see the stack up on one side. Yedege, the prodigy. The young Turkish player left on this side of the map, but ultimately, just gonna have to give it up. And you've got a man advantage. You don't really need to take the risk. Yeah, cracks. Yedige, out of captain. Everybody grouping up. Sinan's just made it to the rest of the squad. Everybody is coming from the spawn side. Bar one, Mr. Fallen. A little bit late to it, but he's regrouped as well. Lots of pistols and the numbers advantage. But will it be enough with time ticking away? Foot need to pick up the pace. That stun's not quite going to catch Miniboo, so he's still good for this fight. No flash from out of Captain. He's taken out immediately, but a quick flurry of frags gives Foot the upper hand by quite a bit. Damn. Easily closed out in the end. 5v4, and four are left alive on the side of Foot. Not bad, only one man lost. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the good thing again about the Gekka utility. That Mosh, you can just throw it Too into that back support. corner. And it not only does a little bit of tick damage now, but it forces everybody into the open. You combine that with a flash or two, which they have in spades with the breach as well. It just puts you in a position where you've got nowhere really to stand anymore. Like you can see it, they're all being forced out into these open positions. And it is quite a big surface area with the marsh. Not quite oh! as big as Bren was saying it is. He claimed it was bigger than Orbital Strike. I remember because that. Because he's a bit insane. But uh, <laughs> we love he's you, Bren. A lunatic. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah. It's a great piece of utility for those retakes. And now, eight to five. Foot now have themselves the second pistol. It, it should realistically guarantee them the victory, or at least in most cases. Like yeah, getting yeah, yeah. that sort of step in front. No, your win rate should be skyrocketing, surely. But with such a close game, 
And the fact that Team Heretics are the first sign of life we saw from them was all pistols. Sheriffs, mind you, but a look to replicate it here. Very little to work with. Buy for next round. And the attacking side of Heretics playing this map like a fiddle. Looking for the orbs, grabbing one, and they'll start to move out. See if any others are left unguarded and untouched. Nice wall as well for A to get them up close, which is exactly what you want to do with these pistols. Yeah, they're just getting as many orbs as, as possible. You can see for foot they're not even really looking to play the map too much just because they don't want to give any weaponry over to the other side they're getting information each time an orb is tapped or again if you see the dizzy thrown out it, it's just so much for them to play with that they don't really need to move and you can see they're set up with utility anybody attempts to get anywhere near this site they're getting stunned up again it's the same as last time if they can get any kills do any real damage here that's great a plant would be nice but ultimately we don't expect much well, yet Ajay might have a challenge here if he decides to back off, they can play the retake. If he goes okay. down, though, now they start to get a little bit worried. Isolated duels. And that's what I was worried about. I wanted to see Yedege play uh, for the late round, but I understand why he stays. You're only up against pistols. This time, though, Mini Boo gets the better of him. The numbers advantage now staggeringly in favor of Team Heretics. And if your foot, Does he, you, have to, you have to rely have on a, a big mosh? individual play. If he throws yes. a mosh in this corner, are they just all going to run out at once? Like, they're all stuck in the back, and the flash has caught everybody. A little bit of counter utility, even still, that advantage sits. The manpower is there. Now the mosh is going to go into that corner, and they can't even push out. They, they can't go anywhere. So he's just going to stick to the fuse. They're all coming, running back. The spam, however, has found that the fuser is left all on to crack some reins. He's going to pop his head as that. The thrift he found, and, well, heretics have bounced back very quickly indeed. Yeah, like I said before, it was with sheriffs. This time, I, I really had very little faith in anything no. coming of that past damage, but for them to isolate those two kills so quickly as well, because Miniboo, you know, once he finds that kill, you see this swing come out because, of course, your teammate's going to want to help you, and he's dropped on the spot. I will say as well, like, if you look back at last year's Heretics, I, I definitely think that Boo's individual form was called into question. Now, don't get me wrong. He's back on his favorite role, and it's one map. So I'm not going to lose yes. my mind. He's playing fantastic. Yes. He's had some high-impact rounds, this one being one of them, three kills in what was basically him playing with a classic and Dilly Girl Bulldog. He had that 4K earlier in the half. Currently sits top of the board. Like, you bring in all of this talent, and then Boo's your best player. I really, like, I've, I've been a fan of Boo for a long time, running back to 2020, I think. And, I, you know, seeing him back, so did you I, like him before I, he was cool, consistent. is what you're saying? No, he was cool back then, Tom. I wouldn't take that away from him. <laughs> but I liked him when he was cool back in the day. <laughs> okay. But I'm really glad to see him find that success, maybe find that mentor kind of role on, on this team. So it's been a little quieter. Cenex used his ult in this round. He has. Quite interesting. He's committed. He's actually he's managed kill. to get another kill. Panatek is having a bit of a nightmare, I'll be honest. Only a couple of kills on the board, but the rest of the team doing work. We're not about to see back-to-back, -back, are we? A 2v2 scenario. Time standing. really is ticking, though. Cracks would have to do something hey, utterly ludicrous. He has managed to find himself a rifle and can, at a minimum, make this one costly, but it's another triple kill for Boo. Moving further up the board, I believe that's his 20th kill of the game. Not too bad. Uh, you know, in a game like this, you need a hero to step up. Everybody was counting them out, but now he's sitting nearly double yeah. the kills of his next player uh, on the what team. About how many more kills he got than Paditek? Is it 10 mm. times? That's quite, that's quite good. Mm. You know, I wasn't going to go there. <laughs> oh, it's day one. we got to be mean. That's, that, that's, yeah, the, that's, you know, what, the, that's what they said. Welcome back, Patatech. It was, it was like the, the story last meme, time right? we cast you? Sorry. They, they were like, be mean. Or did they... No, actually, maybe that wasn't. Maybe I made that bit up. Either way. I think you did. <laughs> I think that was your, your own desire. Yeah, yeah that's that's true. True. Eight to seven, though. Heretics, again, oh, they've been grinding back this comeback. An early TP hunting for information in Yedege. He's under pressure here. Doesn't have a whole lot of support. There is a couple of utility players nearby, but he has decided, and rightfully so, I'm going to back off this one. Spike planted. Ooh. Well, Rienz really had to back off. He's down to half, but he's got his ultimate to work with. Thrash to thrash him up. And he's from outside. See, I mean, this is a very passive play. Most of that utility is going to be burned up by foot on the way through. In fact, Thrash of their own is about to be thrown through. They're going to convert them, trade them one-to-one. -one. Unfortunately for Miniboo, he was not hitting his shots. 
not finding Thrash, instead being thrashed by CNED. Now the side under threat, and CNED's holding up close inside the smoke. Halfway already, those spams better come through. The Diffuser is so low, but it's not low oh. enough. One HP with the decay that was in play, but he gets out alive. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> a Red Bull clutch coming through for Foot, and one that, well, after all of his teammates get slaughtered on the way through, maybe not one that was deserved. The, the one sort of saving grace, though, for the side of Heretics is, okay, they lost the round, but you don't really lose a round where your opponents, all of them die except one, and you get to keep all your weaponry. Like, that doesn't happen very often in Valorant. So you now look at the buy that's on the other side, and it kind of sucks. There are weaknesses, is how I'd say. But, you know, depending on how you use them, maybe they could be advantages. Big look Bulldog at Mr. Fan. Fallen. Judge in play, holding B. The fight on A for Team Heretics. They fought for it every defensive round, and they'll fight for it here on the attack. Casualties taken for foot. It's not ideal, because if they have to retake with Mr. Fallen, he is going to need to find an upgraded weapon. Maybe he can, just outside of the stairs, but it's a tough one. You're out in the open with a close-range weapon. Your opponents will probably take you down from far away. The A site, the safest place to plant. They don't know it yet, but they'll figure it out soon. And for the side of foot, I'd love to see what their response is going to be. For now, it's just waiting and hoping their opponents run into them. But look at the position of Yedige. All the info's there is now. Take this. Yeah, the question is, I think he might actually be able to bypass. Yeah, he is that. That Killjoy alarm bar, I believe, is offline. So he's oh. been able to just run straight past. And I, have, I imagine... Benji's going to move towards it, and that's going to sell them some false information that maybe he hasn't actually got past any of that utility yet. Definitely not ideal, but the fact is he'll have to open the door, and that, that will give it away. That will tell Benji. I hope it does, otherwise he may, may have a few problems of his own. Yeah, he'll have to go to the, the old ear doctor after that. The door is spinning. He has heard it. He's staring in on the angle, but he won't win the fight. Two guns better than one. Yenijay had his oh, turn to back him up. A mini boost backing up Team Heretics. Just trying to run the clock now. Ring a ring a Rosie right around the site. And it's Yenijay sticking that defuse, but he'll be caught by a wide swing sliding in with the round success. Mini boo. Four kills. He's chasing his brother down. Yeah, the Boo brothers uh, are running away with it. Honestly, I've been impressed with him. Even if you just ignore the score tally, which is absolutely fine for a duelist, he's been finding a lot of really high-impact openers. And as we mentioned already, you've come up against, I'd say, one of the harder opponents, a team that didn't change a massive amount, someone that already beat you in the off-season, and someone that, I'll be honest, most people thought you weren't going to get anywhere near. Mm -hmm. And right now, 9-8, they're on the favored side of the map. They're starting to build into this one as well after what was some back and forth. And you look at the buy that's on the side of foot, it doesn't really get much worse. No, no, it, it certainly doesn't now in the game so far. This is where that team who seems to be down and out somehow pulls out a victory. But we're going to assume that that's not the likelihood here. Team Heretics have the rifles. They can work towards ultimates. Patatech just one away from a Viper's Pit on attack side, even better. Using it on defense, you either have to gamble or you have to use it to retake when they'll often be very close by. If you'd actually get close enough to the spike or to a valuable angle, you already need to have retaken the site most of the time. When it comes to the attack, though, if you just get that site control, pop it straight down in the round now, skyrockets in terms of favor for you to win it. So it could be huge for them to have that moving in to round number 19 when Foot will buy rifles. For now, they just need to make sure they don't get ecoed. And Tom, I'm getting nervous. I'm starting to sweat a little bit because Team Heretics, yeah, they had the right idea. They went to see. They saw the Killjoy. And now they're moving back to the habit. Very they, they stacked they, up sight. They baited the opponents. That's that's what they believe, at least. <laughs> not sure the early presence. Right fully right on that one. Cena's oh, looking to get up close. He's got his ult if he needs to try and reposition, oh, and nice. it's perfect. The wingman is a distraction. Boo again. Oh, sorry, mini Boo again. It's going to be the one to get the opener. I think he's going to have the majority of the first bloods in this game. And now, well, any belief that you may have had for this round to go wrong should be at almost zero. CNED, Yedige, Ada Captain, all tagged so low as well. Might even start to think about just grabbing those exit kills 
again, we, we talk about damage being in the conversation in this round. But Team Heretics have a lot of credits built up as well. I mean, it would have to be a, a lot of damage for those ripples to be felt later on. Benji the first to fall. Rian's also. There's still time if they get on it very imminently, and I don't think that's going to happen. Another for Mini Boo. Three kills as he works his way towards the ultimate he just used not that long ago. And it's going to be nice and easy to round it out. A clean round as we equalize things nine to nine. Yeah, especially with how it could have gone. I think Heretics will be fairly happy with that. Still losing a couple of players, a couple of old orbs facing in the other direction, but now we look towards foot to see if they actually have a response because I, I, I think something that's actually gone very well for Heretics so far is, again, just this sort of pack builder, just moving as a unit. They, okay, they've left the odd lurk here and there, for, but for the most part, they've just been basically keeping things quite simplistic, but like just going, okay, let's just trade things out together, and so much so that Guys is going to be given an opportunity to try and talk things through with his roster. As you mentioned, this is, I guess, the first proper full buy that they'll have. Rifles on the board, a couple of ultimates available as well, but the same can be said on the other side. Paditech now coming in with that Viper's Pit. If they can get into a post plant, that's not going to be easy to deal with. Yeah, it's like we're saying, this is a, the problem if Team Heretics are so comfortable grouping up, moving to a site. They probably will get in there, wrestle that control out of your hands. For Foot, they have so much to discuss. But at the same time, Rolling Thunder can help them out, keeping them back, pushing them out of a Viper's Pit, getting their retake to have that little bit of a bounce to it, some energy to kick it off. We'll see if they can pack that punch that they very much need to coming into this round. Both teams will have rifles, but Heretics are the only ones with a safety net to fall back on the favored side, the favored economical position. Looks like Heretics have really turned this one around. Yeah, it, it does look as well like we're going to see a little bit of like this aggressive position in the middle just being built up around that B site. You can see already with like the, the fault line being built in just to try and give that extra little space if there's anybody there. Seen it actually trying to force them back. He's almost trying to move them here. This is a set play being set up by his team. It's just if he can give anybody that extra little bit of information to find a frag. You can see he's even got a ping on the map at the back. Unfortunately, though, I think maybe just spotting like, I oh, can see the guys. There's four people here. Maybe don't peek into that one. I think he even might have seen all five, did he, on the way through? It's hard to tell with that, that kind of pace, but I'm sure someone on the server is tracking it. And with that, I guess maybe giving them the comfort to push up on B, but that's about it. They've reset into the late round, one minute on the clock. And Team Heretics, again, uh, just grouping up four players, looking to try and get control over C. You no, know, looking to grab the orb, in fact, and then they're not sure. They're still <laughs> deciding. With 45, they've got a bit of time, but, well, time to get make it pretty snappy pretty soon. Yeah, they've done decently well with their takes. The stuns to the back of sight. It's not really a position that we've seen anybody play thus far. I think a couple of aggressive pushes from Benji left. earlier in the game, but it didn't really play too much. It's mostly been a seaside retake, and both teams have been good in the post plant. The Rolling Thunder makes it different. Yedege, the focus was elsewhere, and he gets a freebie and stunned at the back of the site. Rians needs some help. They are blinded in so many different forms. This retake looks great from foot so far, but there's still members standing, hoping to maybe try and spam through here. But the fact is that Diffuse is coming again. They have not been able to stop it any time on this Seaside. And it is, well, a very clean round in the end. Paditech, in fact, his lurk just a little bit too far behind. I have to wonder, you know, uh, did when they planted that spike, did you see where Paditech was standing? No. Let me, after our... Uh, a little replay, I'll show you. Because <laughs> it was not an ideal spot. I want, I just, the rotation time is, you know, a, a little bit excessive. A little bit excessive. So when they popped the spike down, he was right about, never mind. <laughs> they did not want you drawing That's on cool. this map. It's cool, this is a timeout. It's fine. Oh, this is but no, he, he was over Mitch on A, Mitch basically. Is sad. He, was, he was at A main. And. You know, you could see that it took him so long to get over there and all these sort of things. I think the idea at the start was him to put the wall up, try to lurk towards A. I heard him fire. I think it was him firing a few shots. So he's trying to make that noise and get them to rotate, even just get the killjoy to move a couple steps away so you could burst in. But the problem then is, you know, this is the guy we're talking about having that Viper's Pit, having the ability once you get in, lock it down. But instead, he's miles away. And I think 
removing himself from the combat like that, it, it's not what I want to see. It, it's a hiccup in timing and spacing of the round. No doubt that's a lot of what Team Heretics are discussing here. And, you know, you want to make sure maybe you're slowing down the push a little bit. Maybe whatever you're doing, it needs to incorporate that Viper's Pit next round, I'd hope. Although yeah. they have a lockdown now, so, you know. I will say that the thing that's been really cool with these Seasight takes from both sides, like be it in the retake or the initial take, is that there's so much utility that's available. Like you've got those stuns into the backside. I think the Mosh is being used really effectively just to clear out such a big space. And then on the retakes, I've actually really enjoyed what we've seen from Captain, whether it be with his ultimate or the stuns, because it just leaves you basically in a position where you're getting hit by something. You have to choose what you want to be hit by. And even if you dodge all of it, then you have a Dizzy coming through and you're completely blind. It, it's so difficult to play against. So they're running back a, the similar strat, four towards C, grabbing the spike, but this time they're doing it with five. So Patatech's going to be here. Uh, you know, some of that slowing utility maybe will help out, but it's the pit. Now, the problem is obviously a lockdown on the defensive side, but we just saw Benji Fishy grab his ult orb. So now they yeah. can counter lockdown, and that could help a lot with, with keeping that pit up. If they do decide to go for it, maybe they've got a different idea. Having found so much space for free, they reshift their focus. So Paranoia D, push into spawn, and foot. They, they better get their guns out soon when they round this corner. I'm not sure they'll expect them to be this close. Maybe the one way will give it away. But it's been thrown there before and there weren't players around. Not that deep. Yeah, the, the fact is for Miniboo, it was, okay, if I can get something and get away. Now you're going to see that lockdown. It actually clears out the back lines. It, it's not really to do much more. The, the Viper's Pit is not within it. So they can still stick pretty much within this site. And the trades are going effectively, at least for the moment. And a captain's going to be able to find one, but the fact is a couple of the attackers are detained. Paditek needs to get something in the flash. It's sublime. The remaining players were out the back of the side, but the defusal hasn't been coming. The fact is, though, they could just deny it completely. They have themselves the Cosmic Divine, and Mr. Marlin's on the other side with the judge. It's absolutely filthy. The question is the time, and they... Oh, no, they don't have it. 0 0.07. I thought that was locked down. Oh, that is so ridiculously close. Oh. I mean, look, the round that was in it, it's got cheers out of Benji, that's for sure. What an in incredibly messy round, let's say. I think, you know, even playing close there from Patatek, he runs up to try and challenge inside the pit, losing those extra seconds, losing the extra decay, because the players are just stepping in as opposed to having been in the pit for quite a while. That was a risky play, and the flash was perfect to catch him, but... I didn't expect it to end up flipping hands like that right at the end. Yeah, Incredible they didn't, they didn't manage to get the nano swarms off of the spike, but I believe they didn't matter anyway, because yeah. I, I think he would have had it. Unbelievably close, but the scoreline will be leveled up. 10 to 10, a battle, a brawl in our first map, and an exciting way to kick off VCT EMEA 2024. For now, though, it's back to more patient play. You have to bear in mind, both teams basically have just spammed their ults for that last round. There is nothing left on foot side. And, okay, Boo can TP. Right, if that's something that you're excited by, <laughs> might be watching the wrong game. Get that one in the highlights. Oh, cover going on. Heretics all grouped up on A this time. It's going to be the same old strat. Spike Move together. Just knock him down like dominoes. Ooh, Mini Boot just making it through the door. That was cinematic. Wall up, so no angle for Mr. Fallen to compete on. He'll try to spam, but he spammed right back. Three players stood there, guns raised, ready for that fight. Benji on another fantastic shot out of this man, and that has put a spanner in the works. Cracks and out of captain, left to do it all. With the spike only being planted, it's not like they're running out of time. Oh, yeah, monster on the loose. That could be a big problem. That, oh, it's gone the wrong way. It's okay. For information, maybe expecting them to be a little bit closer. Again, all segmenting themselves in towards tree. This is something that clearly is planned by heretics each time. Happy to just sit in this back corner. The peak together is perfect. And that's been the main talking point of this team. They are moving as a unit. They are peaking together. They are believing in the cause as well. And now they take themselves the lead for the first time in this matchup. Not a point I expected to be in, but they are looking fantastic. Like, look at the scoreboard at the moment. It is individual round after individual round for the side of foot. They have not been able to string anything together. And the worst part about that is their economy is just being destroyed. 
they're in a position now where they can barely afford to invest into pistols, let alone light shields or anything like that. You've got out of Captain and Mr. Fallen coming in without them. What a pace change from the 4-0 start. Foot looking good. One shaky rat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a hey, shaky You're going to try something risky in a round like this. For but... sure. you got a pistol. Why not? And it's worked for him sometimes. Oh, yeah. The shorty play earlier was enough to make me believe in CNET's Yoru, but... But now, at least, it's still going to be the advantage in favor of Heretics. You expect them to get onto map point here with the weaponry that they have available to them. Not much utility either for the side of foot, and they're spread across the map. Yadage, probably the only one that can really put any sort of spanner in the works, but that's the thing with Heretics. They've been so patient so far. They've been happy to let that clock run down. They've been happy to continuously change up their direction late into the round, and now with a slow walk, They've tapped that door, but it has not really baited things out here. Two players are heading in the right direction. Yeah, hearing that turret sitting outside C, sort of start to get the idea. Maybe Yenage was calling it over to Mr. Fallen and out of Captain. The stun goes in. Nice stun. It's uh, caught them. Two quick kills. Another uh, followed up on Mr. Fallen. Goes down to the snake bite. But he might have done enough with Benji Fishy alone having to plant this spike. There's nowhere safe in his mind to do it. These players could be anywhere. He knows where one is. But the other evaded him up until now. Yedige about to round the corner, and he's going to catch him unaware. Oh, no! It's a complete whiff. Benji Fishy, 49 HP and a dream. It's oh. not going to work out. A nightmare for the squad of Heretics. This could have been them 12 to 10. Oh, knocking on Heaven's door instead. They're neck and neck with one hell of a fight to close out this map yet to come. I can't believe they've taken that. That was four players, or at least three, walking into that C site, and they lose to basically a singular flash and some sheriffs. It really does show that Foot can pull something oh. out of absolutely nothing, and that has got to be infuriating. As we mentioned, like that, that would have been map point on their choice as well. Bear in mind, bind up next is chosen by Foot, and <laughs> guys, I don't know if that was a, a sigh of relief or maybe the stress after the whiff. Heretics themselves now going to take a pause. They do still have finances, Mitch, but only for this round. Yeah, I mean, again, you, you talked about that timeline earlier, but foot one around, lost two, one around, lost two, one around, lost two. They've just won around, and there's two left to play for. Heretics yeah. calling a timeout now to make sure that pattern continues in just the way they want it. And the credits, they are a little shaky for both sides. A lot of those credits are going to be put on the line here, and whoever loses this round could be struggling to put a strong buy together in the next. Yeah, this really is a crucial time. I, to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if Heretics hadn't taken a pause if it had. Like, you went around like that, e even still for the yeah, it looked a little bit shaky. It can happen, but you've got to make sure as a coach that, especially with someone like him recently turning 18 years old, like, you, you need to make sure that he, that hasn't got in his head. I don't believe it were. We, we've seen him play on the stage, and well, as you can see, he looks as calm as ever. But the fact is, especially for Heretics. I, th I think getting a map in this series will already be a great start for them just to prove that they are here to compete within the league this year and up against one of the teams that could even be in with a shout of making it to Masters Madrid, the ultimate goal at this kickoff event. For now though, look at the push from Foot. They have gone all the way through this seaside, but in the meantime, under pressure, it's the man I just mentioned and he's gone within a second. Uh, he's done his damage, though. Uh, a player worth of damage, I suppose. But the problem is, whenever Team Heretics are able to wrestle that control out, run their trades, or just clean take the fights and gain control of sight, they're not letting it slip. But Boo, familiar position. Open the door, he calls. The utility's on its way. He needs to get out of there, and he has. I love it. That's very nice teamwork. Even the flash just to buy him a little bit of extra time. It will be returned on the so other look side. Look not much to do. Mini Boo's in such a ratty little position, but they're all going to go wrapping past the, the Viper screen is almost a bit of bait just to give him some space. The question is, do they check for him? No, they don't. He's going to clear out a couple on their way back in. It leaves just out of Captain and Wild. Good luck. Up against the lockdown. There's nothing to be found. And Benji, well, he has had a huge step up over the last few. A quiet start to this game, but actually, I think he's had a better attack. Uh, you know, the off season or even looking further, Back to <laughs> the last time we saw him over here in Berlin, Tom. He hasn't had a great time down there on the stage in no. a lot of the matches he's had. Now, 
Well, not just not just him, it's his team. You know, they, they haven't found their success. Now hitting their stride up against one of the strongest teams that we saw in the MEA last year. We talked about their consistency. We talked about how they just keep on getting better. It looks like Heretics have been doing exactly the same. They've made good use of their off-season time. And now just one round away from claiming victory. Nice position from CNED, but the shots aren't there. We talked about the weaponry. It's just not strong enough for a lot of these fights. And they are overwhelmed, leaving Yedige and Mr. Fallen to pick up the pieces. Yeah, this is going to have to be a miracle. Yedige is only just starting his rotation, but that, that again, as said, like, I don't think Heretics have been a roster that have been just too quick to move. They're happy to just pause, hit the brakes. Boo's calling this game has been sublime, and well, now you can see the downs. Yedige has gone all the way back to the A site. He's still sitting on tree, just waiting for that rotation to come through. Mr. Farland's going to try and buy as much time as humanly possible. Well, he's pulled in. Wingman at least, but other than that, all of his utility's gone. He's just gonna have to hit the shots, and he does. That first kill has gone its way. He's even dinked up a second. Somehow the IGL might just be the hero that they need. Oh! Now there's a real chance. I mean, he's backed out, he's bought time. The rotate from Yedige, it's going to be so long before he gets here. Maybe they walk back into him. As players on Heretics, there's no easy choice for Boo and Patatech. Where do you take it on this one? Both smokers left alive, two snake bites to play with. You probably want to be around mound. It's a good position, but the, it's out of position to stop that diffuse. That's so unfortunate for Yedige with 86 HP. Mr. Fallen, two kills already. There's the third. He's only got one more, but Patatech's full. 150, a tough series so far, but he'll save them. Heretics find their map pick. Lotus is in the bag and a much different start to their season than most people at home expected. They've got two chances to close it out and, well, defeat Foot in a best of three. Yeah, definitely not something we were expecting. And as said, the Boo brothers have had a fantastic day at the office. 26, 22 kills a piece. I had just fantastically well done. Either way, we're gonna be heading things off to a short break and then we will be going over to the desk. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. I got big dreams, I'ma do big things Hey, you see me on the big screen, looking so clean I don't move slow, I move fast right past Anybody taking life for granted, yeah, that's too bad I'd be grateful for everything that I have You only got this life, you don't get it back Make the most of it, become the best that I can Everybody look at me, I got a plan You gotta work hard, play hard, do it from the start Cause how you do anything is everything is hard Stay consistent and do it every day Don't let fatigue get in your way 
Cause 10% of something is better than nothing You better do something if you wanna be something I can feel my stomach rumbling, I'm hungry Big things coming, I ain't bluffing yeah. No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight every day and train, yeah It'll all be worth it One day it'll all be worth it So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah I've had enough I'm making my own luck Adrenaline, my drug I'm sick of feeling stuck I got this, I got this Will not quit to the top, I promise Cause I've had I'm on the climb to the crown in my prime right now Hear me loud, I've been spitting for a while now I'll buy myself independent DIY now Don't need no help, I've been beating out labels And money and budgets, it's funny I do all the work, yeah, keep it 100 I fight for my dreams, I would die for these things I believe in myself, I refuse to be weak I like to build things Empires out of buildings I wanna leave a legacy of helping others finally feel things Of motivating and killing Depression, exhaustion, we need some healing I work through the pain, I like seeing gains I keep my head down, buried, walk through the flames Yeah, I do this every day, even when I feel drained A true man pushes through, you don't hear complaints No, I don't wanna stay the same, yeah So I keep pushing through the pain, yeah That's the only way to make a change, yeah So I fight it Oh, what a fantastic start that was for Team Heretics. They get themselves on the board right off the bat in the brand new season of VCT EMEA. I'm your host, Ying Su, and I'm joined once again by Kakuka uh, and Steel. You know, we talked about were these changes the necessary ones, Kakuka, to give them a boost, to turn things around, and my God, Mini Boo, uh, what a great pickup. Uh, hear me out. You know, you were doing VNN and you were talking about how K-Curb did not recommend the brother buff, but in this case, the synergy was totally there, and we have seen uh, so many debuts from uh, players coming into like the big stage in the international leagues and the one that Minibu had how confident he was in everything that he was doing how the team was following and of course how the calls were definitely there uh, from the side of Boo makes me very happy even you know given the circumstances yeah and what I noticed there from Team Heretics was not they had a really rough start like when I was watching foot playing they started off really well they even converted the bonus round so they started with a really good enter into the half but then Her Team Heretics doesn't get their first round win until round five and yep. what do they do? They went for a really aggressive pick on B, and then as soon as they do that, they have a layer to it. It's not just like they're going for an aggressive peak or something, because they tried that on round three. They tried taking the A lobby control, but then it's they shift over and they're staying one step ahead of what Foot's doing. And it wasn't that wasn't enough because Foot ne wins the next round, but then it's later on the half. Foot starts doing a little bit of trolling. They start giving their foot off the gas. They start Aye. losing rounds, and then <laughs> Team Heretics is able to come in and actually start gaining gaining momentum towards the end of the first half, and that's what carried them into the second not half. Not the best vibes? I, I don't know. The no, vibes okay. might not have been there for a foot. At, at the start, it looked like there were vibes, but yeah. towards the end of that first half, the vibes definitely weren't there. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, but actually, we, we were talking about CNET and how this has to be an next frontier, and we saw him in the past playing Euro, but this is completely different. We actually uh, were seeing how he was using most of the utility very, very well, and how they were implementing each and all of the pieces that they had. That execute uh, that they had onto A, where he, uh, you know, used his ultimate to j just get into Babydor, combined with the breach stun. There were 
so many beautiful things coming from the side of food that definitely tells us there's been some cooking that now is coming into fruition. But it was actually the ability from Team Heretics to come back from all the adversity, from losing the first rounds, you know, they're all here, they're all feeling comfortable, everything that they're doing is working, but they actually managed to come back. So, you know, coming into the next map, that is something that they're going to need. I mean, this is the thing. Uh, last year, if this had happened, Heretics taking a map off of a foot, we would have seen this as a big upset. We would have been here like, what is going on? Is, is there something going on uh, with foot here? Uh, but I do think Mini Boo is just, you can feel his presence on that server. I love he was you're getting that. Yeah, and also uh, seven first kills. Uh, you, this is what you want if you're going to be playing Neon on a map like this year. Yeah, opening up uh, the rounds for your team is going to be really important for you, especially as a Neon player, because your whole kit is about oh. being mobile and moving around and trying to find opportunities for your team. And you really have to play into what your composition is. So if your composition includes a Neon, you're going to have to be really aggressive and move around being active. But, I mean, it's not just like Miniboo just by himself. It's like his team's right there following him up. And they did a lot of these floods. Like even on their retakes, some of them weren't successful because they don't have good compositions for it. What I would like to see more from them on their defense is more flanks, more three-pronged retakes. You know, instead of just grouping in CT spawn together as five players and coming in together in one giant flood, coming from different angles would be nice to see. Well, maybe we can send that for homework for them, but I am really surprised. Do you guys remember when at the beginning, very beginning of the game, we had this problem with uh, with observers where when you saw a flash, the entire, th oh. the entire thing was flash? I think we need some solution from the DC, okay? Because we saw it a lot during this game. Actually, the utility was super well used from Reigns. We were also, uh, you're talking about the flooding and how the rest of the team is following on what Mini Boo is doing. And I think that he was doing a beautiful job playing with the Gecko. Yeah, and also, uh, let's not forget, this could have been less close if Atta Captain didn't decide to ace uh, that one round and also win the 1v1 as well, uh, when it was, I think, 11-10, the scoreline was. So it could have gone uh, either way at this point. I know you guys uh, briefly mentioned uh, CNED. Of course, uh, I was not super convinced when I saw the Yoru because on Navi, he didn't, yeah, but he didn't seem like he had the best time, but he definitely had some great moments here at uh, Kakuka. I can see exactly why they decided to go with the Yoru. Yeah, exactly. And I hope that moving into the rest of the maps and also with the pending changes that are going to be coming to the game, he also adapts and grows into this position that he's playing and just is not just, you know, some other player that was once good. Yeah, I could definitely see the vision on their game plan for attack. They set up that Yoru so well. Every time they went into a site, they had the layered execution from the breach stuns to set up the Yoru. Then he went in with a Dizzy. He's able to TP past the main choke point. And they did a really good job of that. It's just that when they went a little bit deeper, um, they lost some of the retakes. They got eco twice, yes. even though they won both pistols both pistol rounds and they converted the the second round it One looked like the cases. It, yeah it looked really <laughs> good for foot but then you know team Herix, heretics winning on eco rounds i think that's when we saw the vibe check that's what happened though it's it's that foot oh, lost their steam and then team heretics started feeling more confident they they looked more confident in the fights that they took so that's the thing right this is like the first day of school but everybody's coming in with uh, a lot of new things you know a lot of the new outfits the new conferences and the new uh, ideas and it's actually the ones that work the best and how the vibes are going uh, that the team is going to be able to win the map because of course we see a lot of set rounds <laughs> like the one that we just saw we see I've seen it sometimes even celebrating uh, but it's, it's actually the one that managed to uh, to pull through and actually have the better ideas Benji Fishy at the end of that of that map when I was seeing him playing with Mini Boo is literally like seeing them on rag it's the same feel yeah and also I uh, seen it really vocal too you know when some of the time sometimes when we saw the camera show he was talking Talking a lot. We didn't really see him do much of that when he was uh, on Navi and, and Ascend. But uh, let's look forward because one map, hey, uh, still, as you know, not the end or be all. You can still come back uh, into this. We are going to head to Bind. And this is where we don't even know what heretics do want to do. They didn't really play at all last year. Uh, they obviously are comfortable uh, here. So what would you like to see uh, from them? Are they going to be relying on that kind of mini boo, uh, heavy, aggressive entry again? Yeah, so if I'm going to extrapolate anything from the first map here, it's that Team Heretics, it's not like they won because they had better ability usage. I think Foot actually had the better ability usage. They comboed the Breach with the Yor really well. So if I'm looking at the second map, you know, what's Team Heretics going to do? Well, I hope I don't see a Neon pulling out her uh, her overdrive <laughs> with nine health in a in a late retake situation. Because hey, honestly, like if, if that's what Heretics is doing right now, then it's like 
I feel like they won off the back of foot, really just dropping the ball in that mm. map. So if Heretics wants to win here, they need to play with the same amount of confidence that they played in Lotus, because that is what carried them the most part, because it doesn't look like they have the greatest game plan uh, built out for Lotus. So going into Bind, hopefully they have something a little bit better, but you know, it's, it's not really, you know, last map was Heretics map pick, so. Mm. You know, we were talking about it when we were watching it, and it's like, especially for Lotus, they didn't have much to initiate on the attack. They didn't have that ultimate, sorry, uh, that is going to be disruptive uh, when you're from the attacking side. So they were focusing both on defense and on the attack, on getting the thrash ready and just working around those things. I think that, you know, that initial plan was definitely there, and it is something that they're going to need for Bind as well, because Again, this is Foot's pick, and there has to be a reason for it. Because you're going, I think for most of the matches here in, in, in kickoff, it, you're going almost blind, you know? You might have hear what they are playing, what they're running, but you need to be very sure into, in, in your gameplay. Yeah, and this is the other thing as well with comms. Uh, again, Heretics, we didn't even know what they would have played last year, what Neil was uh, feeling. Uh, but Foot, we do know what kind of tendencies uh, they like to lean uh, towards, of course. Uh, cracks, we got a great KO player uh, on that roster, the okay. Sky you guys were kind of talking about whether you feel like that's still going to uh, work for them. But of course, the Gecko, they were both uh, two great Geckos on the server uh, as well. So uh, how are we feeling about this? What, what are you expecting from Foot? Uh, I would like to see something different. I think that Cracks is cracked on, on KO. That is news to nobody. But I was actually seeing very good utility usage from Gecko. Um, we saw it last year on Haven, but it wasn't that bright. It was very uh, easy to read. I would like to see some evolution uh, towards that. One, my question is, is are they going to, uh, you know, stick with the double smoker? Are they going to maybe go for a Sentinel? You know, those are, those are my questions, especially now that Get J is here. Yeah, I think Gecko is probably something that we'll see a lot of here. I, I wonder what's going to happen with CNET if he's going to be on the Yoru, because Yoru is really good on Bind, especially with the aggressive plays, but what's going to happen? Uh, is he going to run Raze? Because Raze is also a really good player uh, or agent for Bind, and also getting the op up is going to be pretty important on the defense side because it can be a pretty attack-sided map sometimes, depending, you know, if they're able to seesaw well. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Is the Yoru pick going to come into play? They had some good game plans with it last game. Hey, hear me out. Bring back uh, CNET Sage, anyone? Vintage? Uh, but we do have agents select here. And I, Cine what is on going on? Neon? Yep, Wait, so we do have a, a CNET Neon. We have Mini Boo on Yoru. We have... This, uh, this just looks like we've noticed the KO, but they're doing KO and Gecko. Uh, yeah, break, break, this, break this down. To me, it looks like... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to have to be pretty active like you can't just really sit around they have good explosiveness on the attack side and what my concern is for is for their defense they're starting defense with the ko with the neon with the gecko and they don't really have a, a whole lot of stall utility they have a lot of flashes and stuns and they're gonna have to really leverage that with a lot of trap plays and early aggressiveness yeah i think i'm very excited to see mini boost performance here i think that the attack has to be extremely strong for them and also mr farland first time ever on the gecko I can't wait to see what he can do with this. And it's time to send you guys back into game with your casters, Mitchman and Tom Biz. Thank you so much, Insu, and our wonderful analyst desk. Tom, we have seen a surprise opening. Team Heretics 1-0 to zero as they step into Foot's map pick of Bind. The other surprise, like the desk highlighted, Mini Boo is now the Yoru on the server. They've seen swapped. it. Swapped roles. Uh, he was like, I like a little bit of that <laughs> Neon. He was going, I like a little bit of that Yoru. And now they've just they've taken each other's places. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting that clearly Foot have gone hard into the, the Gecko. I, I want to see how many maps they're actually running this on. Because we've seen it in the past on this map. But at the fact that both teams ran it on the first one, it makes it that little bit more exciting. And I am excited to see what sort of trap plays they've got, what sort of aggression they're going to have across this map. For now, at least, a little early peek coming out from Mr. Farlin over towards B Long. And actually, he's going to go walking. Some space taken on that drone. The TP going to be used. It's a fake for Miniboo being up close, trying to tempt any sort of spams through that smoke. Nice paranoia. Great work by Ada Captain. Many blinded players, but Miniboo must just have been fading for him. Nice snake bite down on the floor. It's caught a few while Patatech swings out wide for a double. Boo on another. Leaves foot way behind. It's only cracks. One versus three. Only. No info of where these players are. He's got every corner to clear and not enough time to clear him. Ball shots. It's going to be himself, Mr. KO, but unfortunately, slight spoiler, uh, <laughs> he's going to go down. Either way, one to zero. 
Heretics again, but you have to bear in mind they didn't win either of the pistols in the last map and still won the map, which, as we've already mentioned in the past, normally you're looking at like an 80% chance to win the map if you manage to get yourself both pistols. So the fact they've now got off to a flyer of the start, the fact that, again, it just seems like a lot of these supportive flashes out of the side of Heretics have been fantastic. Clearly pumped up and ready to go. This defensive side of foot, not off to a flyer, and it's not going to be much invested into this one whatsoever. Standing ahead. I think we talked about Heretics last map, sort of needing to start out hot, and they warmed up pretty quickly. Moving into this map, no signs of slowing. Foot, pistols, all classics bar one. The upgrade on CNET, the professor himself. Now, this guy's been able to hit a set of wonderful shots so far in this map. Historically, yeah, he's the guy you'd give it to, but yeah, that's it's a big task for anyone yet to take home. Not even shields on their back. Yeah, I am curious about a lot of the utility we're seeing in play for Team Heretics as they move on through this attack side. I think Mini Boo must have some crazy attempts to map control out of Captain. And Cracks, they had their own attempt. They tried to move up to get map control instead, a bullet to the back and a plant on the A side. Yeah, you can see already. Mr. Farland going wandering, maybe to try and isolate the duel on the player that just managed to take out a couple of his teammates. And he may just get that chance, but Boo is more than aware. As I said, he has been fragging like crazy in the last map. Top fragger alongside his baby brother. Now, oh, well, he might even be able to go in for an ace here. And only one man remaining. Unfortunately, he is absolutely nowhere near where Boo is going to be coming from. Mini Boo, though. Oh, he's not even going to be able to find the shot. CNED still ever deadly. But Benji is going to be there to close out the round. 2-0 for Heretics. A clean one at that. But now we get into the nitty-gritty, the buy rounds. Good to see Boo already off to a flying start hitting those shots. You know, this is a guy that uh, had a hell of a good first map. While well, IGL on this squad, he is leading from the front. But the reality is, I, when I see him swap over off of an omen, I have question marks. I, I loved his omen back in the day. It's, I think, his most comfortable agent. And someone like Astrid just doesn't give him the same sort of abilities typically, at least solely looking at his utility belt. It doesn't give him that same ability to, to duel and to take fights as before. It removes him from a lot of action. Mm. But that's fine, because he's 5-0 and zero right now. So he's, he's involving himself. It's much more like a hard look. Your utility needs to be held from a distance. And communication is almost key. Minibu has already taken so much space. You can see the pressure at the moment that Heretic's coming under, but they have managed to eliminate him, and the rest of the squad's still looking for that space. Boo, on these late lurks around the corner, has been winning every single fight that's put in front of him. Still, though, the majority of the defense is just waiting. An attempt to plant here, definitely not going to be easy. They've already lost CNED. To them, the, who feels like the duelist on the other side, certainly the top fragger of Heretics, and they're worried about Boo, about where he's going to come from and when he's going to come on in. But the, his team are... Oh, hold on, he's about to be challenged. The swing just to come he's through. Boo easily wins it. Uh, this guy is just looking unreal. He didn't even take a hit there. I waited in case the hood was slow, but no, 150 HP still to work with, but he's got more to do. Kill after kill needed from Boo. Another chance, but this time, his luck finally runs out. Yeah, unable to get themselves into position, into the after plant, and because of that foot, eventually are able to isolate those fights. It is unusual that you manage to see that ult come through to try and give them at least a little bit of extra space, but it's the fact that they had that flank. I think that was the main factor there, and a captain being able to come in from behind just caused them so many issues, not having that luck as they did in the prior round. Even still, though, it is going to be another purchase coming in for Heretics. No real struggle at all, in fact. They've got plenty of finances to play with, and on the other side of things, Mr. Fallen, well, I, the thing is, he's already down to a judge. And I was thinking, okay, well, maybe he'll be in hookah, but actually not. I, I think he's going to end up in lamps. And CNED, his defense has, it's been an offense, really. And he's been dead within the first few seconds of almost every single round. Fly with me. Let's fly left. Fly away. Okay, we're back. And it looks like we've, you know, we got to see a, a nice aerial angle of CNED falling. He's not had a lot of fun in those early duels, Tom. You know, his Yoru certainly got him up close. It got him involved. His Neon, it's done the same, but he's not involved in the way he wants to be. Losing a few of these, giving Heretics the advantage, losing a faster rotator player as well. But really, it's just this man's aim that we're looking for. It's his prowess individually. Now out of the server, someone else has to step it up. 
again. Torp actually shooting off. Maybe trying to bait for the fact that the captain's in this corner, but the fact is I think they spotted enough players to realize there's nobody on the A site anymore. They've heard the TP, they've heard the players on their rotation, and now Minibu, he's going to use that dimensional drift just to find out every single piece of information. And almost to the fact that, okay, they're only just making their way back in. He's actually gone back around behind them. He's even spotted the player in heaven. Is he actually going to go for this? He does! But Yenajay is quick enough on the trigger to give the man advantage now over to Fur. Well, that four versus three, certainly a lifeline provided for Foot with an overextension from this attacking side. They haven't got a lot of control. Either two players trapped inside a lamp, swinging out wide. Good kill for Boo. He just keeps on hitting shots. Finally, he falls, but Patatek's good for the trade. Flash still to play with, and he'll catch the kill. No need to swing, Benji Fish. He's gone running. Thought maybe the defuse was being stuck. Now the 1v1 forces Patatek in an uncomfortable situation. He needs to check that it's not being defused. Flash goes out, swing is in, and a captain taps yet again. Here's the final swing, the final fight, and Patatek comes out on top. He's already looking like a much different player being put onto the KO. Obviously, the main reason he's come in as a substitute is that depth of agent pool. He, he can play an initiator, he can play a smoker, he can play a duelist if you need it be. And right now, well, I, I feel like he's almost a mix of the initiator and the duelist. Five and one, right up there alongside Boo. And wow, this was around the... Again, I, I feel like with the early start, they probably should have taken it, but it did come down to those clutch plays from him. Three and one in the lead. Again, we're looking at a similar scenario to the defense of the last map where Foot are able to get themselves onto the board, but they're unable to convert anything more than an individual one. And again, CNED, well, I feel like they're just expecting at this point. You know what? Okay, within the first 15 seconds, CNED's going to run at us. This is the first time he's actually got anything. He's still he's fighting five with 5 HP. HP. No, don't go back out there. The I mean, we talk about spraying through smokes with a vandal. I mean, this is a little bit worse. <laughs> it's just a laser. Yeah, I wonder where he is. Oh, uh, that big blue point <laughs> is probably going to give that one away. Over there, is he? Oh, he's regrouped with his teammates now. Five HP. Let's see what he can do. Maybe just gone. draw their eye, be a distraction. Kind of taking no idea there were players this close. Now a real challenge for him and <laughs> seen it. The five health warrior to pick up that frag, move down, recover Please tell me he's going to give the gun to someone else. The rotation's on the way. It mu he must. Okay, thank <laughs> God. I, like, I got two kills, you know. The shorty up close is ratty from Mr. Fallen. But again, there must be an expectation there from Heretics. Again, they've, they've struggled against these pistols once or twice throughout the game. Benji, though, it looked like he was going to be dead to rights, but Mr. Farland not quite quick enough. Yeah, just a little bit faster on the trigger. But look at this position from Boo. He's been so good in aim duels, so he tries to force them into fighting him. CNED stuns One won't land. Remaining. He's been revealed, and he's 5 HP, rifle in hand. One versus three. Most people would save. Everyone else would save. CNED will not. <laughs> but he goes down. And it's all right, because they can come back into the next. But four to one, the lead starts to slip out of Foot's hands. It, they were in this very same position on the previous map. It looked like the series was in the bag when we saw this bracket published. And yet here we are. They are by far looking like the, the weaker squad. Well, not by far, by a couple rounds. But so far on this map, there's not I a think, lot to write home about. I think especially when you consider expectations. That's, like, that's, that's, the, that's the main thing. This is incomprehensible to me coming into today. No. Yeah, it, it shouldn't have it shouldn't really be going this way based on I mean, Boo is 10-2. Yeah, yeah. I just, no matter how, how much hope you had for Heretics, may, maybe you're a Spanish caster with a Heretics jersey, I don't think you expected Boo to just be out fragging everyone in this server. Either way, a fantastic start, a fantastic first map, and they're already in on the plant. They don't have any abilities to play with because of cracks, but... I'm oh, sorry, because of Padetek, now they don't have any on the other side as well. Either way, Thrash thrown through. Foot are expending a lot into this round to try and get something done. The fact is, though, still yet to find the kill. Ooh, just ran out of ammo at the wrong moment. Padetek could have been down, but Boo and Padetek have fallen in the end. Mini Boo to follow Benji. Fishy's out of the game. Rian's trying his best. But Rian will be done. Nothing to be found. A good resurgence from Foot. Obviously, it did take a few ultimates to be thrown in. It wasn't like they just got back into that site with nothing. And I, again, throughout this game so far, I have been liking that pace from Heretic, switching it up quite regularly. This is the problem, though. You, you have to bear in mind, the last rounds weren't particularly clean. Even with a couple of kills in the one, and then you obviously have Patatek clutching things out, their finances are not great. You've got Rian's looking to buy him with a rifle here. Patatek with a stinger. After what I saw Adakap didn't do, maybe. 
just maybe there's some sort of belief to be had in that weapon, but fact is, this, when you're 4-1 up going 4-2, this is not the buy you really expect to see from the attacking side. No, a, a few more weaknesses there than you'd even want to dream of. <laughs> Ooh, a big weakness, 23 HP after an early spam. And you know what? I, I do feel like that angle, at least, there's a bit of karma owed towards foot. CNET gave his life there a few rounds in a row. Finally, they're finding success. That wall drop. Two players out wide, pistols in hand. I thought it could have been a disaster, but instead, it's worked out for the attacking side. They, if they can keep it down to those one-on-one -on -one trades, that's fantastic, but the help is starting to dwindle on their side. That Viper's Pit could save them a lot of trouble, though. Yeah, this is one of the only things I think could potentially bridge the gap of what is the weaker weaponry. They still have a bit of utility to play with. It's actually going to be used by Rians to try and just maybe get them something through that pit, but already Anna Captain is going to remove Panatech, leaving them with a disadvantage. More util thrown in off the back of the paranoia, but Rians still standing strong. Another for him, leaving it into that 2v2, and Benji has dipped out of the pit, just trying to buy that extra little bit of time. Needs to take down the wingman who's already on it. And now it's all left on to just one man, Mr. Farlin, to try and find anything. It is already half, so the peak has to come through, but Benji, again, will help them take home a round that, I'll be honest, they shouldn't have. Boo went down to 23 health at the start of that. He was still alive at the, yeah. at the end of the round in the 2v1. You know, and a valuable extra person to have. Otherwise, maybe you just tap that swing, that player in laps. You know, it really does have an effect. His impact on this series could be studied so far. Uh, I couldn't be happier to see a man succeed than this guy. And Benji Fishy, well, he also takes it. The three kills, the squad now what? leading by three. The thing they did really well there was you had those sort of, the players that didn't have as much to lose playing very aggressively, and then you had the players with the utility and the weaponry, very passive, very patient, really controlled in their positioning in the form of Benji and Boo. It, it was well played, but again, it's a round where you're looking at it from their perspective and going, okay, they have one rifle, they use a Viper's Pit, and Foot didn't really seem like they could do anything. And this is the attack side of Bind right now. This is looking rough for Foot. They're going to TP deep on A. They've done it all the way through. A crazy play by Mini Boo. He's not finding anyone. And the rest of the squad's just dying all around him. Ooh. Easy peasy. I mean, I thought it was a ballsy play for Mini Boo to just go behind them, but in the end, he's still just stood there holding the same angle while the, while the rest of Heretics have cleaned up the fights, leaving it down to just Mr. Fallen and out of captain. Just. No, no, not a captain with a sheriff. This is that they did this before. A 2v4 scenario. All they had was pistols to play with, and somehow they managed to take it home. If they do it back-to-back, back, we'd just have to give them the props they deserve, but not this time. Heretics are not going to allow them away back in. Six rounds already on attack. That's a very good half already for Heretics. They are starting to run away with this, and I almost wonder when a pause comes through for the side of foot, because this is getting out of control. It really is, you know, and a conversation we were having backstage with, with some of the French casters and the Scotchmans is about the pauses that Foot pulled through in the start of the previous map, about did it slow down their momentum. At that time, I actually, I thought it was pretty reasonable because they had some sloppy rounds. They saw those signs that things weren't going the way they wanted them to. And so they just take a moment to, to regather themselves. Here though, surprising that they've decided not to go for it whatsoever. Uh, instead, plowing forward, maybe that speaks to faith in the game plan. Maybe it's Yedige having that Viper's Big Pit, teleport. so they don't need to discuss too much else. But we'll see. Heretics, what ideas have you got up your sleeve? By the way, CNET off is, I mean, it's been avoided for now, <laughs> but it could be very, very dangerous. That's something, well, it's definitely feared by many. You look back to that champions winning roster, one of the best strats in the game. <laughs> Steel will tell you, avoid CNED. <laughs> it's a good strat. You see him, you go the other way. I think the foot roster might have a little bit of extra depth. Oh, of course, sleeping at the wheel. He was, uh, he was he was just looking at the mini map, checking course, the stars were in the right place. It's okay. We need eye trackers, then we'd know. That's, yeah, that's it. But definitely not a waste of money or investment. No, Nonetheless, cheap <laughs> too. That's, that's a good thing, you know. So, it's a famously very cheap piece of technology. Now, Mini Boo is trapped in the corner, but uh, does he have a TP sword? Is there a gate crash? No. Really? Right. There we go. It's on its way, so there wasn't. Under Fury pulled through, already up close is oh. Mini Boo. Rian's able to find one, but Mini Boo's surprise attack isn't actually as much of a surprise as he would have thought. And with an off angle held by Ada Captain, it has fallen apart for the side of Heretics. Oh, a better round from them for sure.
foot finally starting to wake up a little bit. Mr. Farling getting himself that little bit higher up the ball, but also just having a very good read in that round. They had the rotations there quite quickly, the initial aggression successful, and oh, that little bit of extra control garnered by that Viper's Pit allowed them to take a little bit more of a risk. Nonetheless, as I said, six rounds is already good for the side of Heretics. They're now looking to see what extra they can get. Dimensional Drift available to try and cause that little bit of extra havoc, but they do have CNN with the overdrive available. And more importantly, the Thrash will be very useful if this comes down to a retake. Uh, the captain's wise to get out of there. That TP, I think, even heard by the side of Heretics. They want nothing to do with Long anyways. Denying the control early, maybe seeing if there was some free space to be taken. But they'll slow it down afterwards, and then they faked me out even by starting to walk back away from this angle. But the call's made. They'll play close. They'll use the drone to clear, clear all of these smokes, all these corners, and cleave out that control that they desperately need to make a play. Benji lurking on the other side of the map, and I like this. Will they suspect it? Or will they be caught by this bombardment that's soon to come in on B? Who's next? I think they're going to rotate back to A. That's the plan TP afterwards. You see where the game oh, crashes? Oh, there's Benigo? so much info. I, I, he's definitely seen two players. If he's seen... There you go. Cracks at the back of the site. That's so much information, but there's a reason they're stacked up. It's seen it on the other side. I said there's a reason you avoid this man, Boo, at least even while stunned up. He's been able to take him down. And also, they've managed to clear out Mini Boo. This leaves Boo as the last man standing. As said, they, they showed them three players. They had that information. When you have seen it on the other side of the map, you can play with that level of confidence. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point Foot go, okay, well, there, there you go. They've already done it. They were like, we need that up back. <laughs> Let's make sure we have it for the next round. 10 seconds left. 10 seconds. Economic state's not optimal on the side of Heretics. That rifle could help, especially in the hands of someone like Boo. Being so clean. Remember, he found CNET while he was stunned up, jumping into the angle, just one tapped him. I think it was the second bullet, but I'll give it to him, considering this. We didn't see the first one. And True. The, the replay is going to edit it out. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we don't highlight those things. <laughs> no, no, never, never. This but is nasty. This was clean. I think that's the real benefit of those stuns as well. You see, look, edited out. I told you. Perfect. You know, Perfect. No, no one will ever know. He got the headshot. It was exactly one bullet killed him. That's all you need to know back home. But six to four. And a timeout is called. Uh, this one, again, it's a timeout from Heretics. We're seeing Foot be very uh, conservative with them, but they did find the two rounds in a row, so evidently they didn't need it. Yeah, they, they, their defensive side has definitely looked a little bit rough. And that's the thing, it's like, a lot of the time I said on this map, my expectations lean towards the defensive side taking it, but I do have to then look at the composition that's available. Like, the comp for Foot is super explosive. Like, you're running a Neon, which defensively, unless you've got an op or unless you've got Cena just running at people, doesn't really have a mass benefit, but then you're talking about the triple flash potential. Like, you've got yourself the paranoia, and then obviously the stuff coming out from Gecko and KO. Like, there is so much util that you're going to have to leave people blind that maybe Foot have actually catered further towards the attack side. And you could argue the same for the other side as well, like having the, yourself a Yoru. A lot of the time on the defense, okay, you can have those sort of like TP plays, those... I know you have a million different things that you like doing with Yoru, Slightly but... Slightly different interpretation. I, uh, yeah, it, that's yeah. not quite what I meant by TP plays. What he does is... Different. Yeah, you know what? Use the word different. Mini said unironically a fan. So Yeah, but Mini also said that, that till I die. I'm I'm good at the game, which so you can take that, that how, how you that want. That does sort of dip, yeah, dip, it, it, it devalues point. everything you just said. I have to find another coach. <laughs> well, six to four. Team Heretics, they've had a, a decent run at the attack side so far. This is certainly a bigger challenge. Losing two rounds in a row, now down to pistols. And with a rifle in the hands of Boo, saved over from the previous, this is their best chance. You know, your Astra player still having that rifle might raise some eyebrows, but if you've seen how this guy's played in the series so far, those eyebrows will quickly settle back into a normal position. Rins on the way with the drone. There's three players here. It's a standard enough setup. The thing that worries me as always is CNED's operator. Once that gets refocused, you could be in big trouble. Man, they're opting to play into this once again. You can see the lurk from Benji, who might be pressured in a moment. The TP's through. It hasn't been massively successful. And again, it seems like Mr. Farland's ready for it. Yedeshe does well, and while seen it, you mentioned it, eventually he's going to switch his... Yeah, 
Oh, he got there in the end. <laughs> Edit out all the first shot, guys. Don't forget. Yep, just the last one in the highlights. Thank you. Appreciate you. And this is done for Banji. Look, a peek about to come in from heaven. He's tucked in. The barrel spot. It, no, it's barrel not spot. seconds left. Rax doesn't know where he is. Okay. I, I thought that timing was going to seal his fate, but no. He has a real chance. Toxin screen down. A chance to maybe try and bait them here. Oh, he's picked the spot, but if his opponent was still in heaven, timing's going to be absolutely everything, and he makes his way back towards Lamps. Moving forward again. The information is going to be gone because of how quickly they've cleared towards that defender spawn. Benji looking to play back through that smoke, and the info, oh, it's just going to grab him. They know he's around the Lamps position. Maybe not how far forward he is, but Cracks is going to be there to clear him out in the end. A nice attempt in a round that we didn't have massively high expectations, but now six to five foot have slowly been climbing their way back into this one. They were looking down and out moments ago. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think good adaptations, Mr. Fallen. I think even saw the gate crash as it was coming in, so he had a good idea. This was a round where Yoru was going to try that TP. He TPs in, and immediately Mr. Fallen is on his case, taking him down as he emerges from the smoke. Really nicely done, and you can see just looking at that scoreboard, it has been a struggle for Mini Buu yeah. to find any of that value in the rounds where he has successfully oh, TP. It's actually just been his teammates kind of rolling over the site and winning, and when he hasn't, well, it went like we just saw. Interesting, an instant cosmic divide thrown in and a battle up in towards that B short position. There was a stack up there, even still CNET is still in position. I wonder if they'll opt to almost just avoid him at this point. So much utility being put in onto pressure. They know exactly where he is, hiding in the back lines. Yedege has moved in, but it's not going to be enough. A solid half and a fast response from Team Heretics to get themselves that 7-5 lead. Yeah, a very confident way to close out that half as well. Just getting in their face, taking those fights, and winning every single one of them. I like the idea for Foot to come pushing down for a bit, but as you can see, they just didn't have the firepower to back it up when it came down to, to judgment time. Now look, I'm looking at round 13, pistol round. There's not a lot that we can deem from that, but the scoreboard, boo. Still dominating, 16 and five, coming out of a very close half, seven to five. That that is remarkable in and of itself. I've also much preferred Patatek's look when he's come in now, not on that viper where we saw him a couple of times play a little too aggressive in those post plants, be out of position when his team was it's pushing. Boo on the lurk as well. And his lurk had been phenomenal, so it's I think synergized th th much yeah, better. This this map, they still won the last one. Yeah, 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 bear that mind. Wrong. Oh, instant though. No. The flash through, Rian's dealt with. Any drone or utility that he brought into this round is immediately gone. It's definitely going to be a little bit more difficult for them to find information, other than the knife, of course. And for foot now, I, I think they can be a little bit more patient. Cedar was actually sent alone, and now Benji about to be under some serious pressure. I'd be surprised if he won that one. Boo has got to hit the aim labs once again, and he's already been forced back. It's tough. Uh, with Mini Boost spotted as well, there's no element of surprise. Now it's up to foot how they dice up this dish and how they deal with it, uh, but it's what? not looking good. Mini Boo, three kills coming in. Now he's on five, looking a lot better. We're on six, in fact. A sneaky kill along the way. Foot of turn tail, moved towards the other side of the map, but still the full HP player of Patatek is waiting and waiting and waiting because he's allowing his teammates yeah. to wrap, and I like this decision. No overaggression from him. The only problem they have is they're so low on HP. A couple of tap bullets from CNET, and he knows that someone has come from this position. Such a high impact kill as well from Mr. Fallen. And the thing is, just the information of that TB being thrown, they know that the other players have gone towards long. There's fake nowhere teleport. else they could have gone. The fake teleport likely been spotted as well, so they know that everything's coming from the other direction, but that might be the third kill that I didn't expect Minibu to win, and he somehow has. They're going to hear that player jumping oh! through, and he gets every single shot. Minibu on fire. And what you mentioned is kills from the last half. He's yeah. just doubled them. He's not done too poorly there, has he? Certainly a fresh-faced Minibu coming into this half with the pistol in his hand. He is deadly. Look at this. And it's the selection of targets. Now, I think when he swung around, if I'm not mistaken, Yedige was, was actually in a snake biter. He just tapped it, so not going to make it much easier for him. But still, a <laughs> remarkable <laughs> performance. <laughs> hey, oh. there it is. I, I need that face like, screenshotted from Neil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Neil's relieved. Weber's still sat there going, I could do better. <laughs> I could do better.
hey, you know, he did pretty well last year. He was a super sub. Oh, those shots. Back away, Benji. Back I mean, away. one dead on. <laughs> He's staying, though. Oh, he doesn't give a damn. He's willing to fight for this orb down. Oh, where else do you go with the judge? I, I mean, inside of, uh, of Lamps. Look who would work. He's seen this it. is risky, he knows. but it's worked, and it's worked so well for Benji. Even allowing Rians to pick up another. He can just back A. off, give that space. But he's surrounded. Players on each side, smoke on the left. He's isolated and has to take both of these fights at once. That's not easy. As you can see, the result is as expected. Still the rifle of I have the toxins going up. Mini Boo looking to rain death down from above. They've also got Boo with... Honestly, if anyone I want with a Guardian right now, it's him. One suppressed. And they already know that a player has crossed their way back into Lamps. The thing is, again, we know how much can be done by the side of foot in these sort of scenarios. Swapping places makes sense as well, having that judge to just hold on to Lamps, but the fact is they're looking to clear things from the other angle. Wrap back around, had a captain almost a little bit lucky that he missed that one. Could have been caught blind within the corner, but instead holding just on the edge of the spike needs a miracle and not gonna find one. Again, it will be heretics to convert themselves the round and they get up to nine. This is getting very worrying. I don't want to hear what Blaze has to say after this one. He's going to be... He's just going to laugh. About it. He's just going to laugh in your face. It's all right. It, it, at least there isn't like a little communal area outside all of the caster boosts where you're definitely yeah, going to... see him. Yeah. Maybe you can jump. Oh, wow. Look, look at that. Now, we talked earlier about how even when Foot were winning some rounds, they were not happy. They were not happy with the level of play that was being brought. That's when they were winning. Yeah. Right now, it's... A little bit of a different energy brought in the backstage, but it's exactly what you expect. This is frustrating for a team that has cemented themselves as one of the best in Europe, one of the best in the world. And now, heretics are coming in and performing what is, I mean, an understatement to call it an upset so far. Oh, oh, Mini Boo, what are you cooking here? TP into their spawn, push up, info gathered, and this is just a late TP. That's so far away. Maybe, maybe Yedege can hear it. No, I think he's just slightly too far away. Yenage is even creating more distance. Uh, this could get very worrying if Mini Boo is actually able to sneak up behind them. Oh, it's it's so this is disgusting. This is disgusting. Why would they ever check this? They are insane. Oh, and it's out of captain this. as well. Three. It smokes Three. down. The timing wasn't quite right though. CNET's still alive and Mini Boo's a, a little though. trapped, but he's got a TP to get out of here but eventually. Th that's the thing though, he's also just a nuisance. Yeah. That's something that's gonna be back in back of their mind the entire round. And they still have to deal with the rest! But Benji caught out, not expecting anybody to be that far Yenage forward. Spike planted. is gonna turn back, oh! but he loses his life as well. Mini Boo really has started to come alive in this second half. Wary of their own flank, but th this has now just become a game of hide and seek with both teams being the seekers. Neither realizing where the other might be. <gasps> Cracks is completely caught, stuck in the corner, but he will just about be able to escape an opponent on the other side. It's labored, but he still manages to win the fight. And both players coming in from the corner. Again, it's some weaker. Where from Reba Boo landing the headshot? Leaves it all onto Mr. Fire, and he just can't miss. This man is hitting every shot placed in front of him, even with a teammate detained. He will win out that round. This is absolutely outrageous. Having that 2v2, time on your side, thrash to play with positions unknown as well. And coming out on top is Team Heretics. I, I could watch that back five times. I still wouldn't understand how Mini Boo gets away with everything he does. Taking down the smokes in the first place, sure. But that TP, I'm 90% sure oh. they've heard it. And that shot, it's, it's more so ridiculous clean. the second time. It's so clean. Boo is currently <laughs> nine, look at, 19 kills and I'll five take. deaths on Boo. Like He hasn't died this half. That's true. That's true. <laughs> How is that true, Tom? How? He is playing out of his mind. He has been in the aim lab server the entire time we've been away, it seems. A couple months in there. Surprised his wrists haven't ground down to ash at this point. Either way, under pressure here. Foot. They've shown comebacks. Think back to Convergence. They were able to turn some pretty big deficits. <gasps> and the Edoge has found a couple of high impact kills. Ones that they needed. Viper's Pit as well available, and he's going to use it to lock down that defender spawn. Still gives Miniboo a little bit of space out from heaven, but 
He needs something a little bit lucky, I feel, to clear out that spot. Good shot by Benji, but he has only got Mini Boo alongside him. Fighting into that Viper's pit, not going to be easy. They need to find the Viper. That's Why? a hard task. Nice shot on Atta Captain. He was emerging from that pit for, for some reason. One I'll not be able to understand for quite a while. Benji Fishy caught. That was a risk by Yedige, but it has most certainly paid off. And with that, we might just have the round secure. Diffusing already halfway. Mini Boo, someone needs to peek him. Someone needs to check, and eventually they will. Another round found for the side of Foot. The path to recovery begins here. Yeah, good round from Yedige. Like they're coming up big, getting that Viper's Pit. He, he locks down defense, I guess. And a captain's push was mainly due to the fact that the spike wasn't planted for them. So it just felt like he needed to get a little bit of extra ground to get some eyes on it. And with his teammates so desperately low, it, it kind of makes sense, but almost cost them. Even still, though, this is a fairly long road to recovery. Heretics have got off to a flyer of the start. Again, this time they're the ones to win both pistols and oh, I, I mentioned it and obviously the opposite happens. Boo's now had his first death <laughs> of this second half. Kill Boo, win around. Okay. He has died six times. Concealment. And Foot have six rounds. There I mean, you go. Just just kill him. Just do it. He's in the TP as well. You'd even maybe expect this to be a ruse. You're not expecting <laughs> someone to TP at the beginning of the round. There you go. Like Mr. Vaughn is not ready for that trade to come through. Keeps things even at least for now and out of captain actually going to decide to get out of there, but Benji had already aggressed. Oh, that's a decoy put through as well. They'll be a little bit more confident that the stack is on B, that these players are not defending quite the same way on A, with the same power, the same numbers, but instead, they're wrong. Benji, snake bite in, it's landed, it's headshot the diffuser, in fact, I think. Benji loses his life, gives it up for what could be a trade. And, well, a little bit unfortunate for Miniboo that his TP is so far away. Yeah. Obviously, it's a, re a, a rotate to B, but he can just go straight back through the TP, but it's being waited for. Out of Captain's here. Flash has caught him. He's forced into a corner. It's not cleared, though. And so Out of Captain finally takes down Miniboo, puts an end to the Yoru storyline. And leaves Boomerians. One away from a Hunter's Fury, but can't really expect that to be used at this stage. Paranoid, it's perfect. Absolutely perfect. The easiest kill Cena it's ever going to have. Two players completely blind, nearsighted into a corner. A foot now start that grind back. A long road to recovery, but as said, we saw it when they played Vitality in the off season. They did it in two maps back to back. So if you're on the Heretic side, I almost wonder, even if they manage, if they lose this next round, I might be looking at a pause just to try and stem any bleeding as quickly as possible because you do not want them to have some momentum. I can tell right. if, they, if there's a Heretics match you're not casting, you're going to be up there with them. Absolutely. <laughs> Unless it's against Enzo. Oh, that's going to get tough. That's going to get tough, but I want to see my kids fight. Well, the B side is certainly getting a little bit noisy, oh. but uh, well, it's all a ruse that's ended up burning up a hundred fury. They thought maybe they were all outside B long, but no. The plan was to take it to A all along. Yet oh, is managing the trade on Boo. That's a big player to drop. Let me tell you, wouldn't have said that coming into today, but well, things change. They know for a fact that Benji Fishy's around here. They will not let him breathe. No moment of solace. No retreat. Flash on. Mini Boo can stay behind the box, though. So he's nice and safe for now, and he's got the ultimate to get on out of there. His teammate's not so lucky. Doesn't want to get caught here. I mean, it's a risky TP if he was to actually commit. Blinded himself. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's nice and safe away in laps. Well, he's the only one. Teammates aren't. Yeah, being jump. picked apart still, the 1v2. Yeah. Not out of his grasp, he's managed to cross over. That, that might be a bit of a surprise, but now the tap has given things away. Still so passive at this stage that they're not really going to give anything for him to fight back into. And for, again, they're going to continue that rise back into this one. Maybe even going to try and find him on the way back out, but Mini Boot, well, it, it shouldn't be over peeking, over facing. And again, I, I, I expect fairly soon that Heretics are going to take themselves a pause because the last few rounds have been a lot more brute force. Now, I have to give credit. Like, at a captain right now, top of the board, but also 13 assists. And we have seen so many Paranoias that, in this attack side especially, have just brutalized players. They haven't been able to do anything. Yeah, very true. I think, you know, for the side of foot, especially having CNED on a Neon, you can only imagine as these attacking rounds go on how dangerous that's going to be. Paranoia goes in, he's sliding after. Mm. That trade is going to be found on, on the utility. Indeed, Heretics calling that pause 10 to 8, a two round lead, three away from securing their opening series at kickoff. 
what a phenomenal statement that would be from this squad, putting them in an incredible situation to push for further, deeper into this tournament. The thing as well, though, is I'm, I'm looking at Icebox as a map that I feel like you really don't want to face foot on. Like, it, it's one where Jet definitely still has its viabilities. I, I feel like you could easily have, like, the KO of Cracks, which we know already is confident in. And we've seen quite a few play, uh, teams leaning into that Gecko, which they've been fairly happy to play as well. I, I think it's a map that if you are going to bring back that Turkish Jet, that will be the one. So I, I don't want to go anywhere near it. Either way especially with how good they've been. It definitely isn't over just yet. Foot haven't made that comeback. But with three rounds in a row, as said, it's been their attack side. Same on the previous map that has been the better of the two. And that buy for Heretics is rough. Benji Fishy not likely to use the Viper's Pit in this round at least. Probably save for the next. I'm not too surprised to see him getting aggressive when you've got these weaknesses. So many players waiting on the other side of that. Don't think he'll be quite suspecting that. Smoke goes up. Now they're looking to take the space. They're thinking about it. The power oh, is in. So Again, much. the value found is so good. <laughs> that utility from foot has been something to write home about. Good shot by Mini Boo, but that's where it ends. As I mentioned at the beginning, the triple flash potential. I didn't expect they'd use them all at once. <laughs> like, that, that was just disgusting. I, I think it was actually he might have been hit by the knife, but even yeah. still, it's just you got no abilities. You're blinded by two different things. You're just stuck in a corner. There was absolutely no hope. And there's stuff on your screen, so yeah. you can't, can't even see what's close to you. That's It's tough. It's a it's nasty tough. combo. But that that's the thing. It's like in these sort of rounds, Foot are being extra careful. They don't want to give anything over and see Ned Wall if he starts or continues to hit shots like that. Well, the comeback may already be done. 10 to 9 for four rounds in a row. But this is the round that that pause will have been for. Like, okay, maybe you gave a small part of it. Yeah. Like, okay, we could gamble this, gamble this. But this is ultimately the round where you look at and say, okay, now we have those expectations of what can we change? What can we do? Do we try something a little bit more aggressive? Do we try taking some control away? Because that's something they were quite happily doing in some of the earlier rounds was maybe fighting for some of that control. But it does again seem like Foot being a little bit more direct. And actually, they, they're going straight through this pit, challenging immediately. That was way too close. I love that idea, though. From Cena just going straight in, spamming the angle that you pretty much know he's going to be on. And, and it was only the bullets missing by, by a couple of pixels that leave Team Heretics with all this control over A. In a position that, honestly, Foot are not likely to challenge. They've tried, it didn't work, now it's time to take it elsewhere. And it looks like b site through Lamps for now, through Hookah rather, is going to be the play. That's what they're telling them. They made some noise, they popped off some shots, and now the shift back. You know, I really didn't think they would want to play into this. I wonder how much they can realistically get done the, if they do push the Viper's Pit. Now that Yedige is down, though, that option seems to be gone. Evidently, their opponents did see that come because they had two players still at the backside of A. They put that down almost as bait. Now, they do have themselves the null command on this side. Oh, no. Paditek has to be a little bit more careful with it, and CNET is going straight through onto the site. The high pace take, the pre-fire from Rian's not quite going to find anything, and that afterplant does look likely. No ultimates to play with just yet, but if Cracks is the one to actually do the plan. He's not. Could see him get his ult online from a kill, though. Back to me. Well, we've already seen a number of ultimates. Oh, this makes this things round. awkward. It's a seriously heavy play from Team Heretics. Boo using his Cosmic right Divide, there. blocking them out, giving them a tough angle to play with. Oh. Mr. Fallen can't get through. <laughs> Mini Boo can see his head, though. Nice return by CNED, but that defuse could Is be on the way. They need to get through that wall and stop it. And they have not succeeded, not by a long shot. I would say right under their nose, it was more in their face. Obviously, when that divide goes down, the defuse is coming through, but it's also so difficult to get back into the site. Well, yeah, it was a change from a while ago. It feels like a lifetime ago now that obviously you don't hear anything yep. through the Cosmic Divide anymore. In the past, you might have heard the spike tapped or given a little bit yeah, extra, yeah, yeah, but the fact sound. is now it's, it's, it's nada, it's nothing. So obviously they know that. They needed to make some space, but it's again just this distraction, this dysfunctional Yoru play of just like, I'm going to do right the there. craziest thing you can think of. I'm going to pop your head just with the millimeter that was thrown through. Again, this defensive side, this is what I like to see. 
that little bit of extra aggression, but that ultimate from the last round is being used immediately. And while, unfortunately for Miniboo, he's caught the one player he didn't want to. Oh. I mean, Krax is down, but they can get him back up. Can't even be denied from from this side. <laughs> this is a tough one if you're Team Heretics. <laughs> They've come in with a good previous Protect round the and been shut down president. immediately. Benji Fishy, the last man standing, one versus five. And that save is undoubtedly coming through. And that's the problem with the side like Foot. They have this ability to just go back, cock it, load it, and fire onto your site. And not many teams have the stopping power to deal with that. <laughs> Sometimes it genuinely looks like Cedar's just playing like a spike crush or something. He's just like, I'm just gonna go bouncing around the map for a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm looking the last guy down. See if I can find him. Oh, I thought I, I, I won't lie. I believed that Cedar was gonna pop his head while just sprinting. But I, I, I just believed that he was still gonna find that. Benji trying his best to hold on to the gun. The finances really not great at this stage. Oh, just about managing to dodge it, but and a captain will go through that teleport foot continue this resurgence, this run back, and the fact is the one round that they managed to win was based off a fair few of those ultimates being used. Mini Boo at least has the dimensional drift, but for that to be a round-changing ultimate, he's going to have to do something unbelievable. One enemy remaining. They haven't got that breach stun or anything to react with like we saw before from CNET, where he's able to spot players in the dimensional drift and do something serious. You know, I think the this side of foot looks really, really nicely set up to push this at least to connecting an OT. Low money on the side of Heretics. Very weak investments. The judge isn't too much of a surprise, especially with the ult in play. But uh, Rienz doesn't have a dimensional drift. Uh, he's, he's just insane. He's playing a bookie. How dare you? <laughs> Shot in the face. How dare you do little bro like that? I say after they've heard that, I don't know that they're going to want to come anywhere near this position. To be honest, if it was a judge, I'd agree. With a Bucky, I'm almost like, if, I, if I'm if i seen it, which obviously I'm not, I'm just like, oh, I'll take him. Rienzi's he's got a fallback. I think probably already spotted towards the corner, and Boo is going to get caught. The thing is that Tane doesn't last a mass amount of time. Oh, what is that for Benji? A real chance for them to actually take this now. One of the rifles in, and a captain. The flash is solid, but... No one really goes off the back of it. And the Bucky's managed to find a kill. Now CNN, look, look at the spike. It's out. Look at the spike. It, it managed to get past them. I thought CNN would go to the TP. What, he's going out on sight. This guy's crazy. He's insane. Hey, it's worked out. He's bought them time. Yeah. Maybe he thought he had a flank. Maybe they, they knew well, the rotate was coming that, through. Yeah. Like I, I think maybe he just expected, okay, at least a couple of them will know this has gone the other way at this point. So I, I'll try and do as much damage as possible. Now it's left. All on to Mr. Farlin. We missed the TP. The IGL, we know that he can lead by example at times. He needs to try and find this, but already spotting out one of the players. I think he will have heard the footsteps of both, though. Yep. Definitely at this stage, there should be the information that both players are here, and he's tried to bait them into going the other way on that wraparound. Looking to come in from behind. A charge against the first. Not quite there with the second, though. Heretics will make it to 12 once again. One away from an upset in that first matchup. Unbelievable, with two chances to close it out and having just one off the back of, well, nothing, you know? They had a Bucky They've done this so many round. times. It's getting ridiculous at this point, even despite seeing Eddie really putting up the, uh, his best fight. You see it in the end, right after the round finishes. Hey, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's, it's looking to cracks his face. He is shocked, he is stunned by what they're witnessing, by what they're experiencing on the other side of that stage. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We have Rians at home and he's, you know, he's not doing too great, but he's putting together the pieces. Yeah. The, the thing I love about this is it genuinely gives me vibes of like a dad watching their son play football. It's just, just, go on, son, go on, and just screaming his heart out every time. Neil's having a great time at the moment. But look as well at the fact that, you know, I'm talking about Rians, he's doing his job, filling the role. Prax is really struggling. A lot of assists there, a lot of damage yeah. done, a lot of hidden knives, you know? But this is not the face of Crax on KO, no. especially, that no, we get to see. He's and I don't a think... top fragger a lot of the time. Even again, yeah. look back to the off season, he would play KO and he would drop 20 kills. Right? Absolutely. And, and it's consistent. Like, that's not like me going, oh, yeah, sometimes here and there. No, it was like he was either the top fragger or CNEB was getting 30 kills and then he was second. Yeah. Like, that, that, that's normally the way it goes, but he has had 
an uncharacteristic quiet performance, and y it is noticeable. It yeah, is noticeable. I think you have to put that down to how Heretics are playing here. You know, the fact is, they were not expected to bring the pack this much of a punch coming yeah. into today. And I imagine for Foot, the adaptations they're having to make, I mean, they are well, constantly on the back foot also, of the series. How many kills did Minibu have in the first half? Was it four? Minibu, uh, four, yeah, it was, because yeah. he doubled in the oh, pistol. Okay. He's done all right in the second half. <laughs> I didn't catch the total. What's, what's He's the total? on 20. That's not bad. Yeah, decent. Well, Boo's up for another. He's already opened it up. CNET again. This one on one opening duels with CNET have been crazy. That wall's going to drop. Benji Fishy up close. 30 HP, but some value can be found. And it's Boo that finds it instead. That's, honestly, the guy's got no initiating utility. He's got something coming in there. Again, a great assist from Patatech, but flash. it just shouldn't happen. Patatech on another. Things are looking very good for Heretics to close this out here and now. Crax, who's had, a, as we said, uncharacteristically quiet game is now going to be relied on with the spike carrying into the site. He's dropped Boo. Panatek's fallen. Do they expect the second player here? The flash will give it away. Mini Boo, they now know that he's here. Decoy gone out, it's through the wall. They'll shoot it, they'll break it. They knew that he was behind, but couldn't react in time. The drone coming out from spawn gives them all the information. At this moment, Foot know where both of their opponents are. They need to make a decision. Going to the TP means crossing Mini Poo. Not a wise decision, especially when Yetta Jay's 1 HP. And now that final tick of health is all that stands between Team Heretics and taking their opening series, starting this year in a way that's evaded them on stage time and time again since this roster was put together not that long ago. Hell of an opening to the VCT season, and hell of a start for Yenge if he can, first of all, dodge those shock darts, and now close out the game. Oh, and a wild later. spam from Rienz closes it out, 13 to 10. Yeah, the man that may not be at home. The, the fact is, though, he wasn't the, the star of the show today. You better watch out. Watch out. What can you do? The Brothers Boo are coming for you because it's been an insane performance from them today. Both of them one and two on the server. Expectations coming in from Mini Boo fairly high as a duelist, but again, a youngster coming into the server. Boo himself, though, IGL, oldest man on the team, but still a youngster at high. He has been insane today. Oh, I think that's over 50 Is that kills. Is the same scoreboard as before 2621? It, it might be. What? I think that's over 50 kills across a two map series for Boo. What a performance from him. Incredible stuff from him. Heretics and uh, let's be honest, whose pickums are screwed at this point? Because mine definitely are. <laughs> I know one guy in the building who's sitting pretty yeah. after that one. You know, fair play to the Spanish caster Blaze. He predicted this mm. when no one else did, and uh, I don't know what he saw uh, before this. But he saw a Spanish team in a jersey with it with Mixo on the back. I think. <laughs> yeah, he was like, I'm saw. in. I'm in. Let's go. <laughs> well, you know, I just checked. Mini Boo, uh, one kill less than previous map. Boo the uh, same amount. So uh, shame on you, Mini, but I'm kidding. I'm kidding. What an incredible performance from this squad. And Patatech <laughs> back in on the stage. This is what we like to see. Yeah, coming back into the tier one, facing off against Foot, who have been, that's it, top eight champions last year, already taking them down, already throwing this group into disarray. It is going to be an exciting VCT, that's for sure. But either way, we're going to be heading things off to the break. And well, I feel like the analysts have a lot to break down after this one. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this.
Red Bull gives you wings. Welcome back to VCT EAM EA kickoff. And we kicked off with a very surprising result because going into this matchup, Foot were undoubtedly the favorites. They had a stellar 2023 and they were going up against Team Heretics who didn't quite have the same fortune, should we say. And you guys, you were playing with Rian from Turkey. You've got Patrick who's standing in currently for what as well. Yeah. The odds were against you. So how on earth did you manage to pull it off today? I think, uh, you know, I think we did very good preparation. I want to give a lot of credit to Neil Weber and Boo, um, as well as our analyst Pablo. They all did a really good job in preparing us. Um, we had a lot of time during the off season to fix our mistakes. And um, I think we did, you know, we showed what we were capable of. So yeah, I hope uh, other teams are scared of us now. How long did you spend preparing Lotus, given that it is a signature pick of foot? Oh, I mean, a while. A while. I, th I'm pr I think uh, we're pretty happy with it. Obviously happy to get the win against Foot. I don't think they uh, expected us to be that good. So That's true. I mean, a lot of people are probably underestimating you, but they won't be now. Everyone watching, do not underestimate this band. And do not underestimate the brothers Boo, because <laughs> it looked like it was going to go Foot's way on Lotus. But then Boo started pulling out these insane clutch moments, and it looked like it inspired the rest of the team. Is that what happened? Man, everyone, you know, last year, hating on Boo, 
And now he showed what's up, man. He showed what type of player he is. He doesn't, uh, you know, he's a very calm player, but you know, he's, he's deadly. He's a deadly IGL and his calls, out oh, of this world. He is a deadly fragger too. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a little bit of a rivalry between him and his brother, given that his brother is the duelist? Um, I think, you know, during practice, it's a little bit of arguing sometimes, uh, but you know, I think it's all, all in good fun. Um, I think it's, you know, Boo wants to help him improve and like as a team, we all want to help each other improve. So I think that's why we got to the point that we're at now is just by helping each other improve. Now, Benji, how does someone become one of Benji's fishies? Uh, sub to me on Twitch. <laughs> sub to you on Twitch, that's good. So basically, he's got 10 Twitch subscribers and they're all in the audience right now. You've known them since you were three years old. Yeah, I, I've got my friends over there. Will, Chris, Reese, Bella. I, was, I went to school with them and uh, yeah, no, they came, they came over from England, so I'm super happy for them to be here. Um, and I am super happy to be the newest subscriber to Benji Fishy <laughs> on Twitch. I'll see you in chat, mate. But let's head right now to the analyst desk. Thank you very much there, uh, Frankie and Benji as well. Shout out to the boys. They've come out here uh, to uh, support him, but also I got to pick uh, the, the, my favorite bit of that interview is him being like, all the haters to boo. What's up? Where are you at? What's up? Hear me out. I think that that has to be one of the talking points yeah. here. You know, I think everybody that has been watching is like, what is wrong with him? Like, Boo is, you know, not never, but not lightly to be hitting this shot. And I think it has to do with the level of comfort that he's reaching within the team. That maybe last year things were not working, but this Heretics is looking completely different. They really are. But I even want to say, like, his reactions to those moments, too. He was pretty stoic most of the time there up on stage, just tracking maybe a smile here and there. But then you look at the other th side of things. Mini Boo, his younger brother, is all shouts up on that stage. You you know that he's been waiting for his yeah. moment, you know, <laughs> playing tier two, coming here, everyone with the big boys. Uh, I do want to talk about the, the, the reaction we saw out of them. This means a lot to them. They spent a year kind of being the, the punching bags of everyone else. People criticize them a lot, especially Boo. We spoke about it uh, already. Uh, again, many people didn't expect them to come out with a 2-0 win on day one. And this is going to be really, really important. And, uh, and Kukuga huge yeah. for them because they didn't win a lot last year. Yeah, and I, I'm looking, of course, at the debut from Minibu here, like seeing him on stage having these reactions, like every single round. Wait, look at them, look at the fun that they're having. This is like, they won't lie this, this is like, last this, year. This is like yeah, finals yeah, yeah. for them. Yeah. And like, that is the reaction that we're getting. And also, when we were seeing the stuff be, being like uh, in the coach room, what we prepared is working. Guys, it's actually working. The, co the calls are being clean. Everything is falling into place. And as you're saying, probably many people underestimated them. And I know that some people will go on the other end being like, oh, they actually had nothing to lose. Everybody, you know, they were the underdogs and, you know, they were expected to lose. So probably they got that buff. They played actually pretty good Valorant today. They really did. I think also going into this event as well, they needed a hot start to build that confidence right out of the gate to continue to push that momentum forward. And this is also, remember, with a player that's playing at home right now here in Reigns, who, sure, didn't put out those numbers in the second map, but had a very good solid showing there in map number one. Yeah, okay. I actually do like that they got nothing to lose, you know, um, but now they do. Now as they progress throughout the tournament, they will start, uh, we will start to find that. Uh, we spoke a little bit already about how Boo was this entire yeah. series. Not just that map, by the way, uh, in the entire series. So let's yeah. take a look and remind us of the uh, kind of uh, shots that he was pulling off. I mean, you cannot complain. Uh, Mini Boo, here we go. I mean, it's one of the boos. You cannot complain when you have like a fragging IGL and your jewel list is doing well as well. Uh, the, the the star is aligned for them, it feels but the, like. Some of the reactions that Mini Boo were having, it's the same as Benji Fishy. Like, you can tell that this is just kids that grind the game immensely. You really can't. I mean, when it comes down to those first bloods that he was going for as well, it was 11 and 10 on those first engagements. That's 21 first uh, just engagements that he was going for throughout both maps as well. Just the fact that he's already up in there. The confidence that he's playing with as well, this being his rookie year, his debut here in BCT MEA. It also gets into your head, right? Because it's not only that Minibu was having the game, uh, uh, Boo as well. We were talking about what we expected to see from players like Cena. I think that everybody had that question in yeah. mind specifically for, for this game. Boo was the one shutting Cena down time and time again. Like, in what timeline does that happen in this one? And I love it. Honestly, <laughs> I love a fragging IGL. Maybe that's the meta, the new meta, yeah. the fragging IGL. Yeah, the boost uh, meta. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. The brother buff is real. I feel like I'm buying into it's that. It's been a game. I am, it, no, 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 no. I'm overreacting, Kukuka. Hit, hit, hit me out. Madrid, 
Spain, heretics, yeah, hear me out. Spanish, orc. Hear me out. Two plus two Madrid. equals four. Three Spanish teams. We right can there. only have Boom. two. <laughs> I don't care. We send, them, we, send them, we, send them, we send them to watch. The one, of, you know, but the least. It okay, okay. Be, be fun. Do you know what? For the first time ever, because you've said this to me a lot, I actually, I believe it. I'm going to buy into that. we got Giants coming up next yes. as well. It's going to be a great day uh, for Spain. I believe we're we do terrible. actually have some stuff from Boo. I don't know if we're going to show it to you uh, guys or not, but if we're not, so uh, definitely go back and watch it if we don't get to see it. Oh, oh we're going to just Ooh. go straight in and talk about Giants. Uh, of course, uh, the other uh, Spanish org we have in VCT right okay. now, they're going to be taking a K Core. And unlike the first two teams we saw already today, not many changes. Uh, in fact, just the one. Yeah, exactly. And and it's not a rookie, so we're maybe not that excited, but it is Red Thor, <laughs> and definitely he's a stable IGL uh, here in VCT. So as you're saying, for Giants, the change was a bit a bit forced on them because Rhyme, the, the previous IGL, just decided that he wanted to uh, mm -hmm. go and take a different life, just go and study, something that you can definitely do, and we, you know, we, we'll be fine with it. And then Redguard took in that role. So the thing that we're e expecting from Giants now, it's actually taking things to a different level. It's a roster that has been together for a week way longer time and should be up there with the other rosters that have been together for a very long time, such as yep. Fnatic or Navi. It's a very different kind of approach in that kind of sense. And Ryan Leaving gave that opportunity to Giant X to actually look for an IGL that has this experience here within Red Guard. This was a team that was solidly in the middle of the pack for VCTMEA back in 2023. But I think that Red Guard's calling can bring that surprise factor to them. But it's also about how they accept him as an IGL team. Honestly, any opportunity to show the shot, I will do it. Like, <laughs> I feel like we, we, I feel like last year all we did was just show the Gambit trophy uh, shot. But hey, we have to, especially considering the, the team video? that Red Guard is going up against today has uh, oh. his ex-coach. It's been a very, 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 very long time since Red Guard and N have even been in the same league, uh, Kukuga. So I, I feel really, I feel so emotional about this. Literally, I counted the date. <laughs> 500, 555, 555 oh, wow. days since the last time that both Aang and Redgar were together. Now, if you have just become recently a, a fan of Valorant in EMEA, you may not know about this, but Gambit was everything. Even if they weren't making it to tournaments, they were the team to be, the team to catch up on, the team to learn a lot of stuff from. And Aang and Redgar, what that kind of do, especially Aang and the way uh, that he did things. So I'm very happy that he's back. I am extremely happy. I feel like it's a, it's a long time. It has leveled up. Yeah, it's a long time coming since uh, M being back. And also, I feel like, again, K-Core, I mean, w if we talk about a team that didn't see a lot of success last year, Ash, I feel like they epitomized <laughs> uh, that sentiment. But with N, um, again, I I'm going to overreact. I'm just going to throw it out there. I don't see a world where they don't t turn things around. It's just, it's not possible. I mean, I think when you're looking at the changes that they're made, they've made to this roster, bringing in three duelists here as well, that is the Aang method when you think about it. It, right and overall i mean i'm just really excited to see what these players have to bring to the table yeah and uh, if you are a gambit fan out there just like me you might get a little bit emotional with what we're about to show you next because frankie is standing by with both redgar and n for this interview Thank you for joining me backstage in this cozy setup. And you can see it's quite cozy here, despite the fact that these two are now mortal enemies. Boys, you're on separate teams. It's not 2022 anymore. <laughs> Redgar and Eng, what's it like to be reunited? I know, you know, for me, this guy, I know, I'm really thankful and grateful that I had this teammate. And right for me right now, he's like a brother, really. We, I know, just this guy, I, I, I cannot, you know, hate him or like, you know, he, I don't know, he's my enemy, but still like bro, you know, but that's why I want to fight against him, like, you know, I'm and show cry no, so. no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We need to create a narrative <laughs> okay. of rivalry here, I, uh, but I do. To okay, I'll decision. destroy him. He's my no, enemy. <laughs> for me, he's like a... Yeah. It's the same for yeah. me, like, but anyway, today we're enemies. Yeah. And in the in the game, we are not friends. But right now, yeah, we yeah. can be friends. Agreed. So when the game starts, Pipson is a much better coach than this man. No comments. <laughs> <laughs> no what, comments. What's it been like for you to return to having a, a coach who is kind of similar to Eng, though? I've heard Pipson brings a lot of structure to the game and to, uh, to practice. I think if we compare Eng and Pipson, they have a different style of coaching. And Eng has, has like some ideas that it can be so random, and somehow it works. The Pipson has more structure, it's more coordinated because he is from another similar game. So, yeah, I think there's a big difference between them two in these terms. 
And Eng, for you, you've got a big challenge. You've got Carmine Corp, you've got three duelists on your team. Yeah. Uh, what's the plan? So first of all, I already had this experience in Gambit because uh, my players, all of like three of them were duelists before. Like, so I already had this experience. It, yeah, uh, for me, it's nothing new, to be honest. Yes, yeah, so we are ready. All what I can say, we are prepared. We are ready to play. Yeah, we have the plan how we're gonna play. Only what I can say right now, it's a completely different team. And I just, yeah, let's say we wanna play like a, we wanna show some rock and roll. Let's say. I love the sound of rock and roll, but just tell me, close your ears. Do you miss him? Uh, not gonna lie, yeah, yeah. He's a really good friend, and uh, yeah, I miss him. So one day, do you think you'll get to play together again? Who knows, really? I'm down for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll make the reunion happen. We can't make it happen right now because these boys have to be mortal enemies. So just in a few words or less, tell him you're going to destroy him. <laughs> I'm going to destroy you. <laughs> I'm saying destroy you too, bro. <laughs> I don't know who's going to win this one. <laughs> Nothing and no I one can. could ever make me dislike Gambit. Can we get like Defo, Shados, Chronicle and Nats <laughs> next time for an interview? Because I, I, I can't, my heart. I just can't do it. It's so wholesome. I, I want to cry. The way that Eng was talking about him, like we, we missed him a lot because of what he brought to the game, right? But we never got to meet him in this level. First yeah. of all, because he was not comfortable with English and he's gotten so much better with that. I mean, obviously, how he's coaching a team and it's definitely not in Russian. So, um, But to see him like that, seeing Redgar and having that relationship, I love that he mentions what we've baptized the Eng method. And it's literally what, we, what he was saying, grabbing three very young duelists and then shape them into the kind of players that he wants them to be and real competitors, not just fixated and hidden bullets. I mean, that's fine, but he, he will get that part out of you. He will make you probably pack about seven hours a day. Minimum, you know, minimum. minimum. Uh, yeah. I, I cannot wait because I am sure that you remember back, back in the day, and I'm sorry like to kind of excuse you the conversation because maybe you remember as well, that uh, they came up with the number of hours that they yeah. had pracked that year and it was outrageous. Like 730. I think that this year is going to be the same. Yeah, it is indeed. But we got to also talk about the players on the side of Keikor uh, and the coach as well, uh, Inzesh, um, who mm. did, re they may, uh, retained uh, from last uh, season. I think Shin, we're not super surprised that they managed to do that and Ash, but uh, Zesh, that's hey, let's not do him dirty like no, that. That's hey, messed up. That's hey, actually hey, messed up. Hey, production, hey. come on, come on, come on. Listen, he was coming in as an IGL, as a player, as a substitute after you saw Nuzera leave. We can't just ignore those stats there. We're thinking about how he slots back into that assistant coach role, but no surprise to see those two sticking around, like you had mentioned there, Yinsu. But we're looking again to these new additions. That's where the firepower comes from, but is it recreatable? That Eng method, that's the big question oh, heading yes, into this season. I think it, I think it will be. <laughs> no, yeah. uh, funny enough, I was talking to Zaj because I, I wanted to get a lot of context on how the trial process went and why they decided to keep Shin, you know, if you're going to bring all this new firepower. And he told me that Shin actually had to go through the same trialing process as the rest of the players. Mm. And they wanted to keep him still. So okay. with all the new additions that we're seeing, bringing also a new IGL in the shape of Magnum, who was, uh, you know, le uh, leading Apex last year, I think that the combination is going to be fire and probably this is the team that people are most excited to see especially Saicho. Yeah I hope Saicho <laughs> is watching because I think his mind <laughs> is going to be blown uh, away by uh, I'm biased but Martin. Martin for me is going to be an incredible player uh, to watch his stats are incredible like bonkers. I, I, it's been a long time since I've seen kind of stats uh, that this player has been putting out but the question is three duelists uh, versus mm -hmm. Fidinho. So uh, what's Fiti going to have to do over here? Hear me out, reinvent the wheel, probably. <laughs> no, that's why I am trying to believe in the rest of the process for Giants here. For Fiti, for example, in just this one game that we've had so far, we have seen two Euros, we've seen some, yeah, I think that Fiti needs to expand also onto that next level. Remember, he's not playing on the Euro. I would really like to see, uh, you know, if Giants, it stays on the more conservative mm -hmm. uh, part of the compositions, or if they want to, uh, you know, move away from that and just be a little bit more creative, especially because Fiti has been on Giants Forever, he left for like he he was in the starting roster back in 2020. He left for like a month, but I also counted those days together. And today, <laughs> what is, okay. is that? What you've been doing in the office? Just, just counting, counting. Yeah, just counting. Just counting numbers. I had a whiteboard and a yeah, lot of numbers, yeah, yeah. so uh, that's what I did. Um, today, he's been in Giants for 1,299 oh. days. 
Uh, I mean, that's that's, uh, that's many, many days. That might be as many days as Gambit have been uh, pracking. But um, <laughs> let's look at the map vetoes now, see where we're going to go. Uh, because for the first game, I felt like we were a little bit surprised by the vetoes, the choices mm. that maybe Heretics made. Uh, but for this one, of course, Keiko are coming in as a brand new team. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, we have to judge them for that. But on the other side, Giants, they did have their comfort picks uh, from before. And yeah, where would you like to see them go? Uh, something new. I will, I will, you know, since we're getting a lot of duelists and youngsters, I would I love so. Yeah. Ash, we're not Ash, race, what, okay. Ash, what do you make of the split Sunset and Lotus? I, I think it's pretty interesting, yeah. actually, because for Our the Giant X Core, they were pretty consistent over on split back in 2023. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting to see that coming in as that first pick here. But I feel like when I'm looking towards what Magnum's going to lean into, you have to think about his time with Enzo. Where did Apex also succeed last year? Where is he going to find that comfort and learn from the IGLing that he was under before? Yeah, and so many times that we have seen uh, Pipson and whomever team he was leading going into uh, this split. He has a lot of experience. We have seen him playing double info, double smokes. Like he has, he knows this map to a T. So actually picking this against him, I'm really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but also let's not forget Kcore. I feel like we might have some fans here that'd be very, very Ooh. excited to see them uh, come out. And without further ado, it is time to bring out the next two teams today, Giant X and Carmichael. Welcome to VCT EMEA. Bienvenidos a la VCT EMEA. Bienvenue au VCT EMEA. VCT EMEA, hoch galvedes. We have a lot of new faces on stage here today, which means uh, opportunity for expectation, the expectations to be blown out of the water. I still am not used to seeing Redgar and N on the same stage. That's absolutely uh, lovely and heartwarming to see. But also on the other side, Ash, like I said, a lot of new faces, a lot of players that might not have had challenges like uh, this before. So how big of a job do you think Magnum really have today for that team? I think it's a massive job. I mean, not only is this his return back to BCT, it's also his debut as an IGL. And that's a lot of pressure with the fact that you're looking towards this full rework in roles for the three duelist players in Tomazi, Martin, and Narrate coming in. And my eyes also have to be on Narrate in this situation. I know he's likely going to be leaning into that kind of flex, maybe second duelist role there with Martin on the main. But this player is coming in from his first and only year of competition back in NA Challengers. And he was absolutely insane, despite the fact that he was on one of those bottom three teams 
still capable of individually performing. Hey, he can put, he can prove that NA is better than EU in like one game, I feel like one season, yeah. No, definitely this is one of the matches, if not the match that I was looking forward to the most out of these starting ones because of obviously the prospect and the youngsters in this team. I think that them and Global Esports are the, one that, the ones that have made the biggest and the most changes uh, out of all across VCT. As you're saying, Tomasi, for example, you know, from Saw uh, last oh. year, last year, Sue, you were asking me, <laughs> who is a pickup that you know, who's, who's the player to watch, who's someone that is definitely going to make it to tier one? And I said, Tomasi, like, uh, I don't really care what role he's going to be picking because if we keep looking at that uh, egg method, he did trial to put everybody in every role until he found where they fit. So I am expecting a lot of flexibility in the compositions and not someone stick it to, to, to just one thing. I mean, this is the thing though. I mean, they could have all of that figured mode. out. They, they could have all of that figured out, but regardless of that, you look over at your PCs, you're seeing Nuki. How long has Nuki been playing on a stage like this? You're seeing Cloud. He was breaking records when he made his debut. So Ash is not going to be easy for these youngsters. They're going up against truly veteran players. Yeah, it's, it's the rookies versus the experience in this particular matchup. And it's going to be a big trial, I think, for this KC squad when you think about it. The fact that kickoff is such a short tournament as well. The turnover for these new roles that they're slotting into, that's much quicker adaptation that you're going to have to look towards versus a team like Giant X who have had their set roles for their core for the past year yep. and should be the ones that you're looking to be capable that adaptation faster. You're talking about the new kid in the in, in the blog, right? But we just came from seeing Heretics. Yeah. The face <laughs> in mini boo, the expressions when Benji Fisher was also, you know, chiming in. Uh, that maybe it gets lost in time. You know, when was the last time that we saw Nukia uh, celebrating around like that? You know, and Nukia has given us one of the best moments in Valorant history. But you know, maybe that gets lost with time. I want to see Giants enjoy, celebrate, and definitely win. But you know, that kind of, you know, fresh a start for for this players is something that you only have once. Yeah, that is very yeah. true. Uh, but also, I mean, we've spoken a little bit about N versus Redguard. We have to remember, even when they were together on the same team, they divided their responsibilities. We saw yeah. uh, them take on a defense for one of them, an attack uh, for the other. So the mind games are going to be Ooh, crazy yeah. because there's nobody else in the world that knows N better than Redguard and knows Red Redguard better than N. I think it's going to be insane, that all things considered. And I mean, you look at the interview that they had just done as well. They couldn't even pretend to be mean <laughs> yeah. at each other out there. Like, how are they going to do it in the server? <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. But I do think that when it comes to uh, these two, they want to win. You know, they, they yes. want to prove that they're going to have the uh, upper hand here. Uh, but this is also where I look towards Magnum because Redgar, he's been in situations where he has to pull his team uh, out of a bad place. You know, maybe adjust. Picture. Uh, oh, it's great. Uh, adjust his cause a little bit, but then Magnum is under N. Magnum's uh, last IGL he played with, played with was Enzo, and the one before that was Boaster, and he had yeah. Mini as well, so surely uh, Magnum, we should expect him to do a good job. Yeah, exactly. Given a quick background, in case you don't know Magnum, he was in Apex last year, he was also in Co he was also in Fnatic. Like, Kid has a lot of experience, and he obviously has to be the one uh, leading this team. Tomasi, as we say, coming from Saw, narrate from that lines there in, in uh, NA, and Martin coming from GMT Esports. And everybody was excited and is very excited to see his debut because he is a very experienced Euro player. He's that kind of duelist that had a lot of offers during the off season, but you know, ended up in K Corp. And uh, I think that not only the fact that he's experienced in different duelists, he was uh, also in that situation where he's not the only duelist in the server in, in his team, so he knows not only how to play Yoru, also how to play with a Yoru. Yeah, but this is the thing though, okay, N can do what he can do. He had, you know, Shados, Defo and Chronicle uh, uh, to mm. work with, and it took time. It, it wasn't like incredible that the first yeah. game we saw them play, but my question is, uh, Ash, you know, how long do these uh, duelist players that have to, you know, be forced into role swapping uh, have? Because like you said, short tournament, they could potentially just have two best of three to adjust to things. So is there any danger to that method, you think? I think it's a big danger just for kickoff alone. I think as we get deeper into the season, that's where we're really, really looking towards K Corp to shine. But I also want to pivot over to thinking about Magnum. Yes, he does have that experience under incredible IGLs. But we've also seen his struggle with some of that pressure as well. And KC fans are unforgiving, so they have to put up and show up now. 
I think that if, you know, Aang does it again, even if they don't end up winning today, right? Even if they're not managed to, to pull the number, I, I don't think that we're going to be seeing like bad Valorant coming from them. Because yeah. we, again, take it back to Gambit days. There were many times where they were like losing, 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 but you would never categorize Gambit as a bad team. And that mm -hmm. has to be the first step through the reconversion of k -Corp. Well, we are going to head into map one here of Split and see what we're oh, going to get. Is. Oh, the Yoru meta is in full swing, but this is to be expected, right? They have a few duelists. Martin is incredibly uh, comfortable on that Yoru, so not surprised, but uh, on the other Give side also. Double controller uh, with the Astra and the Omen. Uh, the, then Magnum playing on that fade, Martin. I, like this composition has so many layer, layers and so many things that you can do to combine that utility that I could see Giant X not expecting. On the other side, very co like conservative way of looking at this map from Giants. And also our first Sky here. Uh, yeah, the sky is going to be interesting. You're not going to be able to see her be as proactive as beforehand because she doesn't have those guiding lights that refresh anymore. So it's nice that you actually have that breach to kind of balance out, expecting some more of those trap plays. Yeah, and Giants, they haven't switched that comp either, so this is going to be a very exciting matchup. And do you know what's even more exciting? A debut of a new casting duo. It's Pansy and Steel. Steel. Steel, I was the horrific combination, but you're absolutely right. I've managed to pry Josh away from one Poland, dragged him out of there, got him over to you know, the beauty of Berlin, and now we get to have you not only on the desk, but casting as well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having <laughs> me here. It's, yeah, it's going to be an experience. Okay. How specific of you. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. <laughs> but all right, all right. Let's save that aside, because actually the comp did catch your eye. So why don't we start there? What about this actually stood out to you? Yeah, it's reminiscent of like the 2022 Chamber meta. You just have the Sky Breach. You're going to be really explosive with this comp. Okay, we'll see if that comes into effect. We're just tuning in. This, I mean, Carmine Core last season, obviously quite underwhelming, uh, finishing plum last, and they went to market. They finished the season, and they have refreshed near on everything. Obviously, Shin did remain, but they have rebuilt, and they've taken a lot of upcoming talent, a lot of rookie players coming in, and we're seeing a very patient start here. Yeah, it's going to be a decent trap setup, but uh, just attack just overwhelming here. It's going to have a freebie sight, even though they get stalled out here for a little bit. Yeah, I want to see how much Martin can handle on his own. He's obviously going to have to call for some support, which will be coming in through heaven. Two more players nearby, but they're not overly biting on this. It's slow and cautious from both sides. Giant X taking their time. Yeah, it looks like Giant X is kind of like they wanted to go B, but then they weren't sure what was going to happen. And now what they're doing is they're letting the round simmer a little bit to see if Carmine Corp is going to actually rotate back to A to soften up that B site for them. But here's the middle take here. Once they get spotted out, that's going to cause a reaction, but I don't know. This is a beast. Yeah, the crunch coming through now. Already left. pressure towards B, but that's being handled quite nicely. Cloud still held back here. The flash to follow. Martin still waiting. Heaven is now starting to be lost as well. The crunch is here, and there's the pressure point. And that is gorgeous from Giants X. Already just clearing through so cleanly. Shin lofts alive, and it's 10 seconds. Finally getting through to the site. But by now, in a post plant, what is he meant to do here? He's meant to try his best. That's about <laughs> all he can do at this point. Oh, bless him. Well, let's see how much damage can be achieved. I love the tempo from Giant X here. The way they approach the map, that beautiful late split through middle. I'd love to get your thoughts on it once we see this come to conclusion. Because, as said, this is a rather dire scenario for Shin. But why not give it a go? See if he can at least get something to the good. Three potential targets, and he's found the first, but there we go. Fadinho perfectly positioned to catch the follow-up. So talk me through what we just saw there. Yeah, so basically Giant X, they wanted to do an explosive B play, but once they saw that one-way smoke up, they're like, you know what, maybe we should just change what we're doing here, change our approach. So the first thing they did was, okay, we get out the smoke. We don't want to force anything. Once they waited out the smoke, cool, we can take the main now. Wait, there's an open flash. Okay, let's chill here. Surely these guys are going to stack. So what we should do is instead of just going through B main here, we're going to actually go and split through middle. Mm -hmm. Split. You get yeah, it? I got it. That was really good. Well done. So well, once they, I love how they took their time with that, though, because they didn't force anything that they weren't ready to take. Yeah, and speaking of forcing nothing, I mean, it's it's a, a bare bones come back in here for the round two for Carmine Core as well, working just purely with the classics as it stands. But beyond that, we have to see if Giant X can keep this clean. I love the patient approach in the first. It hopefully bleeds through to the rest of the game where we see that very diligent heads up work, very cautious, not running into any stacks. And I want to see how they feel this out because I feel like, especially in a round like this, you can't leave it so late. You kind of lose some of those protocols. It could get a little bit dicey, but 
in come and call, they've, they've gone for the stack here. That flash doesn't reveal that much, if I'm honest. Yeah, I like what both teams are doing here. Carmine Corp obviously doing a stack. They're not going to win if they do a spread default here. But GX is doing a great job of kind of prodding and figuring out what's going on, not running into any traps right now, using their utility really well to find out what's going on. They have info at B, they have a little bit of info at market, but now it's going to be the group into B. I do like this old walk middle, though, and it's, I think it's just a misread. Yeah, I think Carmine Corp have, have gambled and lost, which is, I mean, it's how this round goes. You're hoping that you might get a little bit of a, a bonus when you go towards, you know, stacking a site. It is just how it goes in that regard. So, again, if you're Giant X, you're still, you can see how methodically they are clearing. They are petrified. There is something lingering around, but they've been very, very clear cut. Great little in game leadership, if anything, to be so I diligent in this clear. I think that flash getting pinged the Yoru at B is maybe telling them, like, hey, they know we're at B. They saw us at middle. Let's just do this re clear middle together. Oh, they're not here. Let's just go stack A because they saw us at B. Maybe they actually go back to A, but it was a bad read. Unlucky. What are you going to do about it? You kind of GG go next because yep. it's an eco round at the end of the day. And all they're going to do is try to not to feed any ultimate orbs over to Giant X because Forever. if they do that, Reach getting close to the ulti, mm -hmm. that's going to be painful going into like a round three type of situation if he's able to get any kills or the spike plant. Well, let's see if he gets that chance here. Not much to lose and all to gain. So has a little bit of a look. There's the swing. Wait, that was a ball You ball. should go for it. Yeah, there going he goes. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. And that's nice. So you're going to have Fatinio picking up two there, Cloud as well. And I think they've recovered anything that was potentially lost. Yeah, it's going to be really good going into this bonus round here for Giant X because you've got the breach ult. You've got options. And not only do you have options, but now Carmen Quirt has to think about is it going to be like an explosive play? It's it's going to be a bonus. Like, do we have to prepare for this like really fast play? Or are we going to like think about playing a retake? Mm. Or what's going to happen here? How are they going to beat out or manage that breach ulti? And especially when you consider the tempo that's been set in these first two rounds has been extremely patient, very slow down mm -hmm. to the last kind of 30 seconds almost. So if they do switch that tempo, shift it up a gear, that could be incredibly hard to handle. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, it's kind of Giant X's choice to see how they approach this one. I doubt Carmine Core is going to be super proactive, but they do have a triddle. Three men in middle. And I'm just waiting to see if they actually decide to do anything with it or if they're just going to show a little bit of presence and peel away. Yeah, it looked like Yoru was there in a really peculiar, peculiar position, but he's just killed off to A site. I think he's gotten a fair amount of room here. Now, he's being checked on. There are two players on the other side of this, but it is Nuki, and he can do nothing this round, actually. Uh, Shin's got him dead to rights, but does that give away the game at all? You can already see Carmine Core looking a little down. flustered in this one. Oh, a dash across, Fatinho going to end up getting caught in the end, but a 4-3 to three is Cloud, Hoodie, and Redgar looking to try and maybe filter through middle as they have finally built a little bit of space. Which side do they choose? I mean, it's two either side. They get the bonus to be able to sit on both sides here. Yeah, they can definitely prod a little bit more through Behaven, see what they can get, see if they can pressure out the defenders here. But here, the gem spot sees them. Magnum knowing that the Behaven player was there. Do they pull a third across? I'm waiting to see if we see maybe Martin drift a little closer. 30 seconds Or does he left. still commit? Because obviously there is that chance. They just dash straight this, through the vents and go straight through. So This is a really good reaction. So they're actually going to group up at 2B main. Because they got spotted at B Heaven, right now, Carmen Corp, they can't really play in the site because they can get crunched from two different angles. So right now, they're regrouping to B. They're going to have a free site. It's going to be a three versus four retake. And the breach ult you is in play. 10 seconds Yeah, 10 left. seconds. So you've got to be a little bit careful with your timing here. But it shouldn't be a bigger problem because of how passively Carmen Corp is sitting to play safe. So the plant's going to come in. Can I get aggressive here and spawn after? I'm, I'm looking. With a I'm looking at Hoodie right now. Does he get played in off the back of this? Cloud's coming around. I think they're considering something, but oh, it is too close. It's mostly through heaven. You've already got three players going back this way. This is going to get rather dicey actually for Giant X. Now trying to deal with those lesser numbers, oh, trying to go for the fight towards CT. Carmine Corp needs to get a move on. Tomasi deals with one, but the trade's there. Cloud comes back, looks for the follow-up, doesn't see anyone drop from heaven. Gorgeous from Redgar as well, denying the drop down for Martin. 2v2, even footing. Redgar gets the attention, waits for Cloud on support. Maybe he doesn't need him. Redgar with it all to do now. 1v1, and the diffuser started. Magnum, he, he does come off it. His nerves getting the better in there. He didn't want to take it too far, but Redgar Exceptional work at the end. That was really way, well played by Giant X there. Just making the decision to go two people back into B main, showing themselves at B heaven first, making Carmine Court really scared to do anything. And I think the biggest part of that round was that Carmine Court had the advantage. They had the four versus three, but they gave way too much respect. They gave too much space, and that allowed Giant X to be able to reposition around, get the spike planted, and get aggressive into CT spawn before anything happened. And they can't let their foot off the gas if they want to be able to hold 
control over the map or the rounds or the game. Yeah, and, and, and I guess if we do talk bigger picture, obviously if we're ex you know, talking through expectations, we know the talent on this Carmine Core roster is exceptional. We know these are the kind of hot prospects, or at least a couple of their names have been thrown around as that you know next generation coming up that everyone was looking at, eyeing up. But for Giants X as well, they've maintained a core of very talented players and got, you know, obviously Redgar now coming in. So you're seeing a really nice combination. They have probably, I'd say, the head start coming into this in this matchup in the very least. So good to see them playing very well here. Already seeing kind of the fundamentals coming through. So we've got coming out this round again it is a Bulldog and Sheriff. So Carmen Core having to suffer through this, but already a connection taking Nookie away from that extremity. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Carmen Corp actually gains mo momentum and confidence throughout this half because right now it looks like they're a little shaky. They're they're yeah. not playing like they're super confident at the moment, right? Mm -hmm. Like we have them in an advantageous situation and they have skilled players, but they need to leverage it. They need to feel like a little bit more free flowy about, hey, I'm just going to go and take these fights because right now it, it's like they're playing too safe and too textbook. We need to see them get loosey-goosey. <laughs> 30 seconds left. Um, but again, this could be a little bit of a product as well of that inexperienced team. You know, these are a lot, you know, a lot of new players, younger players coming in and need to get their footing underneath them, know when to play, you know, to that proactive extent. And Martin already showing a little hint of that over there, managing to take down Nookie. But again, patience pays. Giant Sex slowly, but now on the receiving end, but they get the spike down. Oh, wow. That was big from Eric to at least find Cloud, but they do have the time on their side, but it is a 3v5 and the retake begins. Hoodie's got to be careful. He, can't, he cannot get caught out alone here. Dips back, but far from safety, and the pressure starts to mount. Fatinho in trouble. Has to fall away. Hoodie tethered and held for a moment. They still have the rifles, keep in mind. They have the heavier firepower, but maybe it won't matter. Already the fuse going to be started. Hoodie denied vision for a couple more seconds. That's going to drop, but the fuse ain't stopping. Red guard, can he clutch again? Not this time. Carmine Core fights back. That is absolutely absurd. Giant X actually griefing that round away. They were in a man disadvantage and they stick the plant. It's not even like they have control over ramp or heaven. They're trying to plant for a position that they don't, don't even have control over. They're playing in a site. Why not plant, plant. passive? Yeah. Why not plant for the site? Like and not only that, why are you going to force the plant when you know that you're going to die in the in the? Paint shells. Like, you need to get out of that position. You need to yeah. just say, you know what? Unlucky. I'm going to move on. I'm going to plant to this different position. And then at least you have a chance to stabilize. Really well played from Carmine Core, step by step. So I see maybe a little. Uh, this could be a huge confidence booster for them as well. Being able to turn that round, especially considering the purchase they had, could be a massive momentum swing. We'll see if that continues to affect it, however, because there is still a purchase here for Giant X. So, so you're not coming in with nothing for Tino. Set on the ult as well. Yep. Red Car's got his a little less. To note, but still certainly in place in the pace change, looking quite astounding already. Fatinho with the first, near on free. Magnum gone, but already you can see the support system there. Fatinho, what a follow up for him. The rate's gone down and they're down to three. This is a problem for Carmine Court. They're losing numbers, trying to get proactive, trying to be aggressive, and they're being dealt with. Fatinho, what a round! What a great round from Giant X. Turning it around from the previous round, you know, kind of like trolling the post plans of the situation a little bit, going down into a three versus five. But here they're they're thinking, you know what? Let's do a tempo change. We've been going slow all game. Now it's we got the raise rocket. We have a sheriff on the raise player, so it's not like they have like the, the gun, you know, differential. Yep. So they go, they group up, they get the main, boom, let's go. Reach stun. Reach flash, raise rocket out. Let's just go and take this. We got the entry on the Viper, and the rest was just easy peasy. Superheads were up work. I, I was a little, I say worried, but I was considering if maybe Carmine Core could use that as that confidence booster, but instantly ripped away. And here again, look at the pace change. Instantly, Giant X shifting away from that high tempo, sitting way more passive, maybe expecting Carmine Core to try and get in their face on this mm -hmm. lesser purchase. So we'll see if that actually pays dividends. And one of the things to point out actually is that we see Carmine Core, they only had Astro Ulti and Omen Ulti last round, but now they also have Fade and Raze Ulti. But they can't really use them on this round because they have three players with classics or, you know, whatever they're working with. Yeah. And it's going to be, like, really spooky. Do you use the Ultis to win this round? You just got them at the end of the last round. So it's a really bad situation to be in because you really want to be able to use this, these Ultis with yeah. guns on this round. And losing another round without being able to use them you might not get ulties again this half. Yeah. 
see if that frustration actually comes through. Again, we're seeing that kind of mid-crunch, this time with a lot more weight behind it, leaving Nuki still towards that A side, but look at the TP, it's been committed to as well, straight towards that CT side, up through the vents though. A little bit of a stall here, this isn't what they wanted, they're gonna be denied this space, and there is time for rotations, here comes the cavalry, Magnum straight in there, one for one, didn't get much more until then! Down, mid. Left in tatters in the left. vents, it's down to two players. Nari though does at least have the rifle and the position could be paramount here. Nuki wants to try and dig him out of it. The spike is down there. They have to go for this one. He dives in. There's no chance of a trade. Isolated and alone, it's Redgar in a 1v2. <laughs> Not going to happen. Anything Fatinio can do, I can do better. Nare turning this around. And another thrifty for Casey. The two rounds that they have are off the back of Narrate, actually. It's off the back of a thrifty and on the back of Narrate. And I think it's going to be really good if he's able to keep this momentum up. It's going to be really good for him because he is an, a very skilled individual player. So if he's able to get confidence in the you know, debut match here, it's going to be really good for them because he's not going to be afraid to take different peaks. And it's a really One good job remaining. of him just being not afraid to just really good utility usage. Yep. Really good idea to use the ulti there. It's not like someone's telling him to do it. So good decision making. Feeling the game out a little bit more. So I see the personality of this player is coming through, yep. hopefully. And now Magnum going to be put to test early. Okay. Ready. Taking a massively different approach here, yep. Giant X. Very straightforward, straight through towards heaven, finding a gap and exploiting it somewhat. Maybe Nuki noting this in the last couple of rounds, but Carmine Core will need to respond here. Lose a bad round and then speed up the next. <laughs> <laughs> the classic go of things. But again, the ults are starting to come through. Nuki going to catch one, though. That's big information on both sides. But speaking of information, Martin's going to see it all. Does he commit? It looks like he does! Wow. Oh my god! We wanted individual impact. We might have just had it. Nookie, what can you do about this one? Sit back and watch if anything. He's a mile away. What a round for Carmine Core. Another individual just taking matters into their own hands. That was a huge, massive play. Really smart play to get in the back lines there and, and line them all up. I'm actually shocked that Giant X actually tried to plant there. With that back step from Nuki, he got the Cypher ulti off. They were going to get the info, but oh, they're just that was so yeah, getting nice. into that little pocket of the Astro Ooh. wall. They didn't hear the, t the TP disengage because of it. That was really well played. I I wonder if that was like a pre plant thing. It, it kind of felt like it, right? That pocket yeah. was so well placed. We're seeing these little trap plays coming out from K. You see, that is sick. And uh, obviously, even with Michael not being here, there will be a technical pause. Yeah. Um, so, well, I get to lean on all those years of broadcast. It's you, isn't it? No, all right, all right, I didn't need you to do this today. We were having a perfectly nice time. But do you know what, I, I think kind of recapping the last couple of rounds, um, yeah, it did feel individual in a couple of these, but in the nicest way, I'm down for it. If, if, it. It felt like it was kind of, yes, individual, but built off maybe a little pocket play, as said, with that pocket left on site, maybe from the, the divide coming in. If this is what Carmine Core's kind of building, what they're starting to look like, I'm I'm excited to see what they look like further down the line, right? These yeah. younger players starting to feel more confident, more comfortable on the stages, and the potential they're already showing. I mean, honestly, Martin's shots them were pretty nice. Like, I mean, the play itself was fine. It was, you know, well set up, but I mean, the man controlled it like a champion. So. I'm quite impressed with this roster. It's feeling a little deja vu to the last match we watched. So we had um, we had the teams going up against each other. We had foot yep. starting out very similar to how Giant X is. You know, win the pistol, win round two, convert the bonus round, yep. and it's everything's looking really good for them. And then it's like, you know, Team Heretics, they're looking not too great, not too confident, but then they get their first round win, five rounds in, and then slowly but surely they gain more and more confidence as their game progresses, and then they yeah. start picking up more and more rounds. And it looks like very similar here, where it's just like individuals are kind of winning rounds, it's off the back of thrifties, and then sud suddenly we're gonna see Jarnax probably being like, oh my god, getting in their own heads a little bit, thinking, we should have had this round, we should have had that round, what's going on? Oh man, I can't believe this happened, why wasn't anyone watching this? Why are you rushing this? And then they might start tilting, and Carmine Corp might be able to get more rounds off the back of that. So okay. you gotta you gotta like be able to well, this is gonna help them just be able to breathe, reset mentally, not let like these bad round losses affect them. Because at the end of the day, two thrifties within the first like seven rounds, that's kind of tough. Yeah. And yeah, you, you need to be able to just bounce back from that for sure. So if you were curious, I think it was actually meant to be a tactical timeout rather than a technical. And uh, here we are. So uh, going back into it, it's like Carmine Core actually pumping the brakes. Potentially, I, I'm, I'm not trusting anything, if I'm honest. I don't know if it is actually their timeout. I wouldn't be surprised if it was Giant X at this point. It could have been attack into attack. It could be. Because you can, you're not could allowed be. to talk. Well, most oh, people well. aren't allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I am interested because 
when I was you know, watching the last game, you did see that kind of pressure mounting on the expectations, right? Like for uh, last season, very solid team, went incredibly deep, you know, at an international event, looked very good, had either a, it depends how you look at it, either a sideways or potentially a straight upgrade in one or two of the players. So, <clears throat> and then seeing them lose as they did, obviously you, you think of expectations, the Heretics had near on none on them, if I'm honest. Yeah. You know, a lot of us would have said, we just don't know. We don't know what this roster is going to look like. It was put together, you know, or was seen last minute, potentially. Whereas here, yes, Carmine Core, a little earlier to work with building a roster, but very unknown quantities in some of these players. High potential, limited exposure towards stage environments and everything else, and how will they gel as a roster? How will they fare against arguably one of the more solid teams left? Obviously, the likes of Fnatic still out there. They're, you know, the exception to the rule, but keeping as many of the players as Giants did into this roster and then having red guy you could argue is again sideways if not straight upgrade depending on how you look at it uh, you'd, you'd give this on paper to giant x so it is quite interesting to see those potential elements of maybe not upsets i don't want to call it an upset because we just don't know much but if you're looking purely statistically right that that idea of like okay pre-made roster that's been around you know experience under the belt great players too i mean giant x are no slouches you saw what fatinio just just did as well but to already see the cracks being exploited a little bit, or at least the potential being shown from Carmine Core, is a fantastic look. Yeah, and honestly, like when you're playing a game like Valorant, where there's so much that you can do with, in terms of utility synergy, mm. with ultimates coming online in specific rounds, with just like the ability to synergize certain comps together, and then we also see Hoodie, he's on the sky. Sky just went through a nerf. Maybe yep. that affected their game plan a tiny little bit. So every little inch matters a lot right now. And that's what we're seeing. Well, let's see if they can make anything out of this one. We are just coming out of the timeout now. Operator is in hand and online. So that's going to be another new element to look at is how well does Martin sit with this? He is going to be up against an a, a interesting purchase, a bit of, you know, a, a jumble sale, really. One rifle, yes, for Nookie, but the rest, I mean, I think it's a Stinger and Sheriff. So only one, ult, uh, well, one orb away for Fatinio as well to potentially get his ult there. Cloud very close by, Hoodie as well. So a couple of ults right on that verge. Whether or not they get the chance to pick up those orbs is yet to be seen. Tomasi already dealing a whole lot of damage. Fatinio down on one HP. Martin, well done. All controlled. Trying to draw out the attention of the next, but doesn't uh, take the bait. They're going to have to wait around if they want to use these ultis because they're not going to be... It's just you can't use it at this situation. But why is their only main Game rifle taken. towards A? And why is the main action first towards B? Like, they need to leverage this Vandal I way harder than they are. And it looks like there's going to be a regroup towards A right now. They've already thrown the cage of the cross. Can they be ramped? Maybe, maybe not. It's not like there's a Sentinel player right now over on the other side. So there's going to be gaps, and you have to just realize, like, okay, we're playing with a gap. We're going to play the retake. That's fine. We already have the man advantage. Who cares? So it's going to be interesting to see if Nuki is going to get into left. a position in the post plant where he's going to be able to do something with his teammates nearby ready to just take advantage of the situation. Yeah, they've committed the smokes in as well, so now it is time for the plant to come through. And I'm, I'm looking at the discipline on the Carmine Core side as well. Don't want to give up too much. They still want to maintain this heaven control. It looks like they're trying to vie for that on the other side too, potentially here. Nuki. Waiting to see that Vandal come into effect. It is the key component for Giant X. It's the main right piece there. of the puzzle for them. Everything else is very, very limited. Fatinio going to put his life on the line by trying to control this CT space. Paranoia comes through. Fantastic, though. Fatinio still alive. And one flies in. Nere already on the site itself. Has a little look around and clears it out. But Redgar trying to play hide and seek here. Loses his life. And now it's all on Nookie. What can the one man do? Nothing. Magnum there in the end. This has been Carmine Core looking very controlled, actually. Yeah, this this retake looked a lot better than the previous round where we saw at B. They had the four versus three advantage, and then they just they gave way too much space. But this time, I don't know if it was like Carmine Core, like they did enter together, they were doing it step by step, which was really good. But I don't know about Giant X, how they had one player in spawn, a couple at ramp, but they were it was all like really disjointed. And again, Nookie has the Vandal. He's not active. He's not participating in the round until it's like a one versus four. All of his team goes out first and dies. He needs to be able to be a part of that. And whether that's a game plan thing or an individual thing, something needs to gel a little bit better. I've got your this trail. Game. This is huge, Martin. How long do you stand there? Does eventually dip away. But pretty much everything known now. Noting the operator very early on the Seekers as well. Going to reveal a whole lot of the pace change. A similar call going to be made here in the very swift plant this time, but still no heaven control. Potentially a late fight, but Carmine Core have been up to that challenge every single time and close by. Ult on the other side. Martin's going to see it all as well. Redguard, we're going to find Magnum, though. That is a pick that they've not had previous to now. 
already looking to try and overwhelm. What can Martin do here? He's only got so much time to work with. Trying to bait them out. Hoodie already going to punish Norik, trying to trade off the back of that contact, but it's down to two. Shin and Martin trying to still work this out. Force forward, Cloud's got him. And Shin, near on irrelevant to that one. That is a much better looking post plant. And it's just like a pattern from Giant X. Lose a bad round, let's do a rush. Lose a bad round, let's do a rush. So here, maybe we see them doing another, you know, slower approach. Maybe they do something a little bit early to take or establish control. But it's very, I don't know, Moru up, he had the ulti. They just gave up so much space. And Giant X actually recognized that. Hey, Moru's offing A. He just keep it away. We're dogging him, we're throwing, you know, birds at him and everything like that. He has to back off. And the cabbages are out. <laughs> They're throwing everything at him. He has to back out. They didn't even stop to clear the site. They just stop. go straight for the plant. Yeah, straight on in. Uh, Tomasi could be forced away very early on this round. Already could be forced to be a little bit more passive here. But again, we've seen these early tests, these early kind of dabbles towards site from Giant X and then not committing behind it. This time it does look a little bit more committed. The deeper flash could be trying to set up Fatinho here. But he gets hindered. He gets held back. Shin's going to be good for one, but the trades are great. Narrate again, though. This guy is monstrous. So much damage and already looking confident. He gets the catch. Red Gar's down and it's all on Cloud. Yes, masterful in his own right, but down to 46 HP. This is a very tall task. One other small caveat, I guess he has the spike, so he has the chance and a lot of time to play with. There's really not much he can do. They do have a little bit of money in the bank, so we're probably going to see if he loses this round. Another really fast play next round. Let's just see if the pattern plays out. But honestly, short of winning this round, there's no really plus sides because he's probably not going to get his ulti again this half unless he somehow miraculously gets the plant and gets all three enemies here. Yeah, no small task, right? No yes. small task. Uh, get plant and fill them all. Well, he's going to get one. Left. And, uh, obviously, he doesn't know that he actually has quite Spike a great planted. deal of time to play with, so I wonder how conservatively he's going to play this himself. They were they were you know, waiting it out. I don't mind that necessarily, because they do, do still have utility to try and clear some of this, but maybe Cloud getting proactive does give him a chance. Yeah. But this is brutal. This this has to be so clean from Cloud. Oh, he's going to hear the steps. Spring. This could be massive. Line the time up. is now. Oh, he's got two, and he gets to keep his life. Seven HP. This could be everything. Magnum trying to close down the distance. He's running. Running him down, trying to catch Cloud, who's just evaporated. <laughs> <laughs> Magnum, breaking hearts here. That could have been huge for Cloud, but still onto the defuse and tying up the scoreline. Really well played, though, from Cloud. Getting that lineup with the stun was really important there. Honestly, like, Fade had a Prowler, but there's so many places that can have to clear. They're all moving together because they want to make sure that they're close enough to do the trades. But, like, the One lineup was remaining. right there. It almost happened. Luckily, 7 HP at the end there with the, <laughs> the shorty finished him off. Okay. Okay. It does seem as though they have an actual tactical timeout hitting between these two. And uh, I'm just so happy we're seeing such a game out of these. I was a little bit worried that if Carmichael did get off to that poor start, they could have suffered a little bit here. Especially if I'm not mistaken, this was their map choice. Yeah, it was. So I, I would hate to see them suffering early on. Why must they do this to us? It's to you. It's it's not us. It's you. Uh, uh, absolute pain. But but genuinely, seeing Carmine Core kind of stabilize, this is excellent signs. By the point of the mid game, I mean, you look at the way the rounds have gone. It has been near on back to back. Yeah, a couple of pace changes worked out for Giant X. But if I'm Giants, I'm I'm a little bit worried. I'm not loving what I'm seeing now. They've hit a bit of a brick wall, and they haven't found a solution yet to what's going on. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what they do choose to do here because if they follow that pattern, it's going to be maybe something that could be abused later on, like a little tell that Rudgar has. But we also see that he's, he's got his ulti in play. So there might be a plan behind that. But right now, Carmine Core is doing such a good job of just making sure that they're playing together, really. Yeah. Like, it, they're, they're not trying to do too much. So they're not trying to hold both sites. Mm -hmm. They have a decent spread to get info, but then they're moving around really well. So if they're ahead of the hit, then they try to fight it together. And if they're not ahead of the hit, then they play for the retake and then they do it step by step. The thing that Giant X needs to do here, if they want to start picking up more rounds on the attack side, because obviously like five rounds on attack is pretty decent yeah. on split, but like if they can min maximize the amount of rounds that they could get, they definitely want to do that. So if they're going to identify, hey, Casey's in a retake situation again, hey, let's try to do something where we're 
getting in their faces again. And they tried that before on like up a ramp, trying to get mm -hmm. into elevator, but that's where Nere got the rocket kill, right? <laughs> yeah. So they need to do something where they don't overextend. Okay, it's so a, just it's find a fine balance, line. Right? It's a very fine line. It's a tight rope that you gotta walk. You have to get a little bit active, but not too active. <laughs> Just, yeah, okay, fair enough. We'll, we'll see if that uh, is what they dabble with. I, I am kind of curious. I, I do believe this is actually just to balance out what happened earlier, so uh, don't worry too much. This isn't actually a technical timeout, I believe. But you know what? I shouldn't describe these things because it's only going to just make them happen more. Alt-wise as well, just kind of having a little look through this. Magnum very close by to his. The rest pretty far away. I mean, yes, Tomasi's there, but uh, it's Omen. On the other side for Giant X, you do still have Red Guard with his. I mean, he has used it already, I think, once this game at some point. And it was actually relatively effective. You do have Cloud not a million miles away, and Fatinho quite close to his, too. So a couple of ults. Not impossible to get online, but, you know, still not quite comfortably into the pocket. And it looks like, yes, they are just mirroring what happened earlier. So Giant X going to have a timeout to talk things through, have a little chat, maybe try and identify what you've already noted here. But again, it's a very different scenario and we can sit here and obviously see the big picture in the game. I wonder how much they've been able to extrapolate and identify the issues that they could have to, as I said, min-max going into that second half that really five rounds isn't unworkable. But I think against a team as volatile as KC, I wouldn't like to rest on my laurels thinking, hey, five's fine. You're always going to want to try and get the maximum available, right? Yeah, I, I think that though they have a pretty decent CT side of or defense sided mm. composition here. I call it CT, don't worry. Yeah, you do? It. Okay, fine, my bad. Okay, okay, thank you. Because they can Save the confidence, Josh. <laughs> they have the traps, right? They have the cipher traps and the the, the camera, and then they have the breach behind it, yep. and then Rays can definitely do some plays behind that, or Rays can be off with an uh, an operator, and then they can have the omen doing stuff with it with the omen flash. So Ooh. they have options, but oh, fast up. play here. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> love a bit of it. By don't the way, they? yeah, uh, may may have called that one, but Fatino yeah. taking a massive amount of space away, right? Like this is quite suffocating for KC. They're gonna be feeling this pressure to no end. Now, Fatimio does have to settle down a little bit here. There was that paint shell that came in, did take the space back, and taking space back on the other side on the extremity. Having a little bit of a glimpse there was Martin, checking if he spotted anyone A main, uh, B main, excuse me. He didn't actually see anyone, but the players are there. And with his having control, it's still highly indicative. They are coming this way, and they are so close by. Narrate has been, uh, uh, honestly, filthy to watch. This guy is nasty, and Martin has spotted Fatinho. That's the tip of the spear blunted. Now, yes, Red Guard got to slip ahead, but Narrate, oh, this guy, he's so sick. I'm gonna become quite the fan of watching him, but they're not out of the woods yet. Cloud's still living, and he almost made something like this work before, but this is a very tough scenario. Do not give him 1v1s, please. This guy will take them every day of the week. A tap on the spike to draw the attention, but where does he go with this? Still got options, but less time this time around, and obviously, 30 seconds the CT left. side much closer by. Looks like he wants to commit to this the one double now. Push. Yeah, and a double swing. Perfectly handled. Like to see it. Heads up work. But I did like the pace change, but we become accustomed to it now. Yeah, that, that play actually looked really good for Giant X. They took really fast control over B Heaven, and then they completely pumped the brakes. And it made Carmine Core think, what is going mm. on? Then the Omen ulti comes, he's going for info at B site, yep. but Carmine Core, they, they don't know what's happening. Wait, let's push the B main. They're not here. What's going on? Is it a fake to go A? We don't know what's going on. Maybe the Omen ulti was a fake at B so that they could do an A fight. And we see three players from Carmine Core just chilling at A. And then GX, they just wait too long. If Giant X actually went a little bit more explosively through B Heaven after that had all happened and Yoru flashed through B main, they could have had a chance, but they waited too long. Just letting it slip between the fingertips there, but again, looks like Fatinho is enjoying his time in middle. He's going to be following that again. Tomasi already going to be noting it, so you're going to see a little bit of information back and forth between these two. Once again, it's Nuki with that rifle. We didn't really see it come into effect last time around. It kind of fell by the wayside. We're hoping to see a little bit more here. Pop flash and the follow-up, but it got turned by Martin, but it gets taken down. That's a rifle recovered, and Heaven once again open. Rotations are coming in, though. This time, two players straight up towards Heaven just yeah. around the corner. Maybe the third going CT. And actually, hold on. Cypher's in A. Yeah, fantastic spot there. Nuki has taken the space. We wanted to see that rifle come into effect. Well, here. he's done it himself. All of that space is theirs, but can they make the clean escape? Good reclear from Carmine Corth. All what, four what? together. Oh my, wait, wait, wait. But, but they've come back up. I what, what is going on there? The spike just almost got dropped in the worst position possible. Back hear. on the hunt. What is going Yeah, they can't hear a thing that's going through there. But Nuki is just stood there like, guys, I, I got you the site. Can you please get over here? Get that spike. Get out, Red Car. Filthy shot on Narrate. Okay. Yeah, spike Shin's like, I don't know what's happened, boys. Um, we were looking pretty solid in this one. Hot on the heels. Predictions are out for this game. Yeah, it's, it's all up in the air. <laughs>
We've had a couple of close calls with these sort of rounds. Kudi and Redgar unable to recover any of the rifles that were dropped, so they are still on the sheriffs here. Redgar with utility as well. Hoodie, similar scenario. Chin closing in. Going to be noted here and dealt with. Nookie, comfortable there. And the scoreline tied up. Six apiece. I actually really like Switching that approach sides. from Gynax. I wish I saw that earlier from them in the half. Okay. We saw two different rounds where Nookie had w one round, his team's on eco, but he is the Vandal. He's not active at all. He's like doing laps back and forth yep. in, in attacker spawn. Don't know what he's doing. And there's another round, I, it was one of the first like four rounds, maybe it was like round three or something, where he's actually moving up a ramp and taking a duel in heaven before his team's actually done anything, found info about you know what the defender setup is. Are they playing for mid? Are they playing for B? What's going on? And Nookie He's just up in A. He needs to wait for his team to take contact. But this round, we see them moving up B, or through middle, into B heaven, getting the info, getting the space, pulling the, the reaction, yep. pulling the rotations, and then Nucky's able to walk into a free A site, call all of his team back. Then there's some shenanigans happening over at Vents, Ropes. What's going on there? But yeah, we're going into the second half. Yeah, nice to see it finally kind of clicking, right? All those things that were going slightly wrong, all those timings slightly off, and seeing it, you know, what it's meant to look like in that final go of things. But tied up six apiece, we switch things around. Carmine will now get their opportunity to go on the attacking side, and of course that means that Giant X on the defending side here. So we get to see the opportunities for there. both of these teams, how it plays out. Do we see that same sort of tempo approach from Carmine Core? Do they have their own look of things to go through? Plenty of unanswered questions here. Very interesting setup. Like, B is wide open. Breach was ready for a mid trap, but nothing came mid. He's still ready. He still has that stun out. Ray's got the A info. Yeah, this is a little bizarre, isn't it? Well, Breach has full abilities right now. So mm -hmm. what they're going to do is, if it is a B hit, he's got he's got his stun, he's got two flashes and aftershock. He can clear out so many different areas. He's not. That's their game plan right now. Is mm -hmm. Come into mid, come into A, we win. Go into B, we have to play the retake, it's unlucky. You have to take a risk, though, on pistol, because you can't sp do a spread default. You're yep. just going to lose by the numbers advantage. Yeah, they're they're going to have this left. A load of info, but the, the site is going to be lost here. This is going to be a plant, but the retake is going to be nasty because they have that wrap. So now look at the recheck. Great shot from Red Gobber. Shin in support deals with the follow up. That's Cloud down, and that's one of those pressure points handled. Now, Fatinio, Nookie, and Hoodie, though, have their chance to try and disrupt here. Carmine Cord do have the numbers, but they do have the time on their side. Narate just swings it out perfectly. And it's all on Fatinio. Finds two, but no more to be found. Really good read from Carmine Core there. As soon as they got into B and they realized, hey, what's going on? This is free. Instantly they peel back, they go into B main, and they're thinking, okay, there's no way. Maybe there's a potential that it's like a five man retake flood through heaven or spawn, but there's a chance, there's a chance that there is. We got contested at middle earlier. Is there a flank coming on? Let's go clear it. Make sure it's clear, and if it is clear, we can go in for a reflink. We've planted in the position where we can defend it from heaven if we do a late around the world flank. So moving together there after they realized that the site was free was such a good decision. Bring them down. I hearing that sentence after the last season is just it's, <laughs> it's near on musical at that point. It's lovely to hear. And it looks like Armand Court, again, going to be very patient in this, waiting to see if there is any mischief to be managed by Giants X, who, are, again, maybe just looking for their opportunities. Redgar waiting patiently, see if he gets a prize, probably unlikely. Um, but beyond that, this is just going to be a very passive start. Mind just you. praying. <laughs> Please do it. Someone Give it to me. Dare you. Oh, not going to happen. Very slow approach from KC. And I'm quite happy to see that, honestly. I, I, I'm good to see it. Again, I'm just haunted by last season, right? Like, I think a lot of us who actively watched EMA, EMEA were, you know, left in tatters by the end of it. Um, but seeing these sort of approaches, love it already. Love what we're seeing from this side. And putting Giant X through the absolute ringer here. But they still need to stick the landing. There is a stack in play, and they haven't really dismantled much of it. Information aplenty, yes, but they're just being drawn in. This is a five-man stack here. Oh, Giant man. X have the players. Redgar has gone down. Do they follow through on this? 30 seconds, they're going to run out of have options to. to rotate. They are going to have to commit to this. 30 and it seconds can left. get dicey. Are any of them going to make this one problematic? Martin! Fantastic little swing from that, but there's Cloud, and now the bomb's starting to mount. Cloud's got two. Nari's still standing. One He's going to drop remaining. down to Nookie, and now it's Cloud in a 1v2. Unable to get any of these weapons, but he does have a little bit of kit to play with. But look at the time. 13 seconds. They're under the gun, and they're under pressure. Oh, what? Wow. 
a moment for Cloud almost to punish that late round timer that was ticking away from Carmine Core. One little thing different could have been the difference maker there. A shorty in the hands of the player up close at B main. If the, that player's not B main, if he's sidewalk and they swing together, any little thing could have mounted into just, oh man, such a bad round for Carmine Core. I'm surprised that with Waze getting all the way up to Vents and A Heaven, seeing absolutely nothing, that they still decide to go be there instead of prodding a little bit more. They're funneled into that trap setup. I just hear Sideshow screaming melons. You know what I mean? Like he's just absolutely wailing, seeing any low timer and Carmine Core. But it's <laughs> it's all good. They weather the storm. All right, it doesn't matter how they get there, they, they got there. All right, we we'll just we move on. Around, um, around. <laughs> I feel like you said that a couple of times. I say that a lot of times. <laughs> but now we look and see what they can achieve with uh, missing quite a couple of pieces. Right, obviously they've got like, three ghosts here for the two vandals. Let's see, because this is already pacey, and they've got a nice little plan in motion. Now they're closing the gap down. There's two players at the back of this site, though. They don't know about Cloud particularly, but now they do. Nookie and Cloud, perfect unison. That, just send them away. That was such a good defensive smoke in the middle of sight as well from Redgar, just placing that in between the screen. Oh, that's what you're talking about on Inferno, right? When you're going <laughs> up banana, you put the smoke down. And, yeah, you, you got to do the over. The right? There's no jet right? here oh, to, to true, updraft over. True, true, if, true, true, the, true. if the updraft came <laughs> over the wall, then they would have done the openings that they needed. <laughs> but great defensive positions from Giant Eggs. They realized, hey, you know what? We did our job. We stalled them out at main. We're waiting for the rotation. Boom, defensive smoke comes in. Let's play a setup where we can just pivot off of each other. Cloud gets the first two, and then the rest of the team is Time able to, to flood in and just deal with Karmacore before Karmacore can stabilize on the site. Yeah. Now, any early ults coming to effect? I think it's been quite a well spread out of there. No single, I mean Cloud's actually quite close by, as is Fatinho, which are the two, I guess, power players, Nookie. Okay. Drifting out of A main, little surprise. Still Considering waiting. that's obviously his role on the other side, normally he's incredibly heads up with his work, but yeah, caught off guard there. And that's a big loss early on. That's, yeah. that's still above a minute. I don't mind that play in general if mm. you have like a big round lead, but to be down and do that, that's a little bit risky to do it without more information about what's going on. If he saw a bunch more things happening on the map, like he saw more fade yep. utility being used, if he saw, well, they saw the Euro at B, but maybe that was like too hard for read. I, yeah. I, I don't know what that was. Oh, it's given them a planted. chance, and look at what Carmine Core has done with it. It's, you know, both hands, they are gripping onto this. They saw the opportunity, Nookie gone down, fantastic. A site is open, and the double stack here as well is going to be hard to break. Uncomfortable for Cloud. Yes, does have kit to play with, but no first steps here. They've kind of not taken towards having control. They've taken what's been given to them, which was that opportunity by Nookie. But here comes the first couple of steps. The double stack in play. Martin, the one to claim it. And the follow-up as well. Remaining. Stunning work from Carmine Core. Handing going now. the round, basically, on a platter to themselves here. That double stack, that hold on ramp was just stunning. Yeah, I, I've been really impressed with Carmine Core's uh, post-plant situations. Just like the positioning that they've had in these setups where they're playing high-low off of each other. They have the triangle setups where they're able to pivot off of each other. They've done a really good job of that. And it's nice to see how they're playing together and not just like, we talked about their individuals, how yep. skilled they are individually. But now we're seeing cohesion on top of that. We're seeing them play off of each other and with each other. And that's gonna be the difference between just like a team that's skilled and a team that's like a good team together. So the makings of something really nice to see. Yeah, uh, and again, the coaching staff in the back there, yes. big smiles, right? <laughs> like you're seeing this kind of go well for them. This is. I, I feel yeah. like for Carmine Cole, this is a big sink or swim sort of season. And, and if this is the start they're going to begin with, again, you'd say Giant X in, in last season with a very similar roster were kind of not uh, mid pack sounds unfair. They were just under the cusp of the top tier teams, right? They were just kind of that fourth place position. They've had a very you know, good run in the past with this sort of team. Uh, seeing already Carmine Cole putting up these numbers is exceptional. Anyway. Digress as we look into this round already. Fatinho taking boatloads of space. And he wasn't alone. Yeah, all of mid was taken from the defenders here, so they know something's up. They got info early at the round at, at B. They think it's maybe a B play again. And Nookie's afraid to push. He got punished last round. So A yeah. site is wide open for the taking. Yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're loving this one. Martin does have to dip away eventually. To send that out, but he's cleared so much space, right? Like the information game, they are winning it. Can't mind Core have all of the info they need. You noted it, we've just seen it, the ult comes through, and they're gonna need to start making their way in, but already they're being denied, the space is being held back. That pillar is now just littered with bodies, the flash is fantastic, oh, wow. and so is Magnum and Martin's damage. This is a masterclass from Carmine Core, and I did not expect to be saying that.
everything they're doing is perfect. Like, they have good reads, they have good calls, they have good individuals hitting their shots, they have good ability usage, they have good ability synergy, everything they're doing is right right now. And after the first, like, three or four rounds, they're like, oh, okay, well, like, what's going to happen? They're looking a little shaky, this four on three retake, what's going on there? But they look like a completely oh, different team. They that. look like an actual team right now. Where? Like a yep. really good, well cohesive, gelled, well gelled team. And, and a lot of credit in my mind as well will go to the coaching staff in that no regard charges. that you've been, you know, given the opportunity to work with some very young players. You've got, a, you know, a lot of expectations in front of you as well, especially, you know, the fans, the last season, a lot of things what didn't go their way. To come out, look this good, I'm putting a lot towards the coaches in that regard. It's going to be, I don't know if they're going to use their ultis here. Mm -hmm. They do have Fade Ult, they do have Rocket. Do you save it? Do you, do you need it? probably save it unless you need it. The rocket from the defenders, though, that's definitely going to come out into play. They need to use that if they... They, they shouldn't start with it, but they should okay. definitely finish with it. If there's any early kills from the defense right now, they need to pop that rocket and try to convert this round. Because right yeah. now, if they let Carmine Corey get 11 rounds, that's going to be very scary for them. Yeah. Dog doesn't see Didn't anyone. I don't think it saw them. Red car. Still trying to back this, though. Still walking. They're going to send it a Prowler and then probably Yoru Flash with it to retake this, maybe. Do the due diligence with this one. Magnum creeping closer. They should Prowler. Oh, I mean, it's clean. Magnum feeling himself now. He's already up out of his chair last round. Hoodie's screwed here. May get away with his life, maybe not. I mean, look at the pressure. Look at this side take. It is stunning. This is all encompassing. That's gorgeous as well. I mean, yes, they are on the Sheriffs. It's a much lesser buy, but this is beautiful. This is really heads up, Valorant. Yeah, I think it was... Pretty decent that they Fight used planted. the Fade ulti there to enter. I thought that it was going to get a little scary if they walk into B main there and don't use a Prowler. Yeah. And let's say Redgar gets the opening with the Sheriff. That round Enemy could be a little remaining. bit different. If Redgar is able to hide in the corner, to teleport to reposition, things get a little bit scary. But using it just to close Ready. out the round, get one step closer to at least securing overtime at the very least. Yep. If you can get to, you know, get 11 with this, use a raise rocket to get 12 in the next round, then you could be like chilling, you could do more risky plays and, and do whatever you want. So really good uh, decision making there to actually use the fatal team. Yeah, the yeah, and here, flawless there. Love that, big fan. Big, big fan? fan of that. Yeah, can't get enough me. Um, if you're Giant XO, this is Panic Stations, if I'm honest, I, I wouldn't be surprised. To, I think they still have one time out here for themselves. Um, and the problem is, I mean, you, you look at the way the rounds have been strung together, what are you meant to be doing with them at this point? They haven't had much of an opportunity to figure much out. A couple of things have gone wrong, but if I'm honest, I'm putting this on Carmine Core's side. They've looked stunning the way they've been, you know, approaching the attacking side. Clearly coming in well prepared on split. This looks like something they've been having, you know, working towards to have in that map pool. But again, I don't know what the options are for Giant X now going forward. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Honestly, it's it's such a tough position to be in because you're there, it's not your map pick, and mm -hmm. you're I mean you expect... Wait, I have a question. Okay. It's Carmine Core's map pick. Yes. They start a defense? Huh. I'm going to have a little check on that. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to have a little, little check. That, that is something that's like... That's really curious. Because like, you know, if you're going to do that, then you're you're thinking like, hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they picked Giant attack. Giant X chose X attack. Chose attack. So I mm. think with that context, you want to have way more than five rounds. You yeah. want to have like seven rounds. You want to- Yeah, that does change the dynamic, right? It does. It absolutely does. Because like the split is traditionally defender sided. So if you're going to willingly choose attack into the opponent's map pick, you better have a really good game plan and you better have like a really good idea of how to close out a game on defense. And I haven't seen that yet. And, and look at this pace. Look at this. The, the, it's, it's from the absolute rip and another Pocket play potentially here. Oh, now it's found Redgar. Hoodie does find Tomasi, who was the one to be maybe the thorn in the side, but Hoodie's holding his ground. And now it's down to an even affair of a 3v3, but not quite sure what's behind the wall, but now they get a little bit of a glimpse of it. Plant's gonna come in this time. Magnum with that in control. Three of the players from Giant X now gonna have to re-kind of convene towards that CT side. Gonna invest the ult from Nookie here. This does maybe remove some of the stress of that lurk coming in, because they will get to be a, you know, a little bit more heads up about it. And it looks like they're just going in with with pace, they just want to get in towards this one, close down the gap. Nookie's done well to find Magnum. Still a player on the backside. That's Martin. Can't take anyone down. It's going to be Giant X surviving. And honestly, at the start of the round there, I'm just looking at Rudgar just 
ultying back in and just like literally forming into a paint shells. Just take another round immediately, just no chance. It didn't cancel him from coming in there. It just said, you know what? Okay, see ya. So, the difference that round could have had though, if oh, yeah. you saw Tomasi actually be able to I, I mean, I think on the other side Hoodie was literally like blinded and it just it just worked out for him. He just you know, held down mouse one and it worked. But it, it felt very similar to what we kind of saw with you know Martin taking that TP as well in that first half behind the divide, right? Another right. little set piece, another little pocket piece that Carmen Core trying to work out, but it looks like Giant X kind of on the case, a little bit more heads up this time, not falling for the same old tricks. Um, Alt-wise, we start to see them sit a little bit more with Giant X, and speaking of which, we're going to see Neri straight up the gut, straight through middle, and Hoodie's having none of what they're selling now. He has been the man My to send them here. back the last couple of rounds. Oopsie, you're right, it was Tomasi. Sometimes I'm right. Sometimes you're right. Sometimes. Really. Tomasi didn't have a chance to play the round. Another pause in the round as they take B Heaven Control. Letting the round simmer a little bit. Okay, it's getting a little bit messy here. What are the rotations looking like? What are these react? I mean, they don't have to overreact. You still have Nookie sat with his utility in play. He kind of kind of you know, keep control of A quite nicely, but he does have the support system of Cloud still there, but it puts a lot on the plate of the two players on the site. The Paranoia, I think, actually did catch just a second TP taken. Red guard back of the site now. This puts Fatinho on a platter. There's, you couldn't trade off that. That was a very individual swing. And it looks like just get out of dodge. Red guards are like, okay, peace. Site's yours, boys. I don't know if I love this. This is a pretty safe plant. I mean, the post plant's uncomfortable because you don't know where that TP was. You can maybe hazard a guess, but still, you do have Shin. Taking this much space towards middle is massive because you know the Nookie's still going to be a lot of oh. timing. Get out of it! That's heartbreaking timing. Cloud's going to take it with both hands, though. But Magnum on the case and the trades come in. It's Tomasi still standing. Omen v. Omen. You're going to have Redgar on one side sitting pretty. TP taken way earlier. They have no idea where he is. Now, no. Didn't get spotted, didn't get seen. Smoke for the defuse though. Shadows Should do. Got another to play no, no, I'm not. Oh. oh, the spray. He caught yeah. him, but he didn't kill him. 36 on one side, 30 on the other. This is so close. A tap on the spike. He's trying to toy with him, a red car. Does he have it? No. He should do. I think he does. Yeah, we just saw the circle coming. Yeah, yeah, I think the Late. little. Oh! <laughs> that was quite close. That was it was, quite it was getting a little close. risky. Let's all good, all good, all intended, all good. 11 to 9. This is now getting a little bit more tense here. We're starting to see that resurgence. Timeout came in for Giant X. They've worked something out, right? They've, they've found some solution here in these last couple of rounds. They have found some solution. I, I like the pace. I like it when both teams right now on their attacks are taking that really fast B heaven control and letting the round develop a little bit. We saw Carmen Core was actually down, what, like a, they were at a man disadvantage and they slowly just like crept down the rope, got into hell, waited for someone to make a mistake. Giants X peaks, give the opportunity for Carmen Core. That could have gone either direction at the end there. Yeah. It came down to the wire. I think Shin should have waited it's a few seconds longer. He should have let his teammates take first contact, and then he and starts. Then gone for yeah, it, yeah, he needs to let one someone yeah. on the map die. Yeah, get, give him the chance to play that position as yeah. best he can, right? But it feels so unfortunate because that could have been such a swing moment there for them. But 11 to 9, Giant X dying to claw back into this game now. Seeing much better overall. After what was a bit of a drought, no information on the flash. Giant Sacks and Nookie is afraid of uh, giving up a first blood again, so he's playing in the back of the site here. And Carmine Core is trying to bait something out like, come, peek us, push into us, reclear something, give us an opening into this. Right now, they're just massaging around, letting something develop. I'm looking at Nari though, look at this. Look, he's got a lot how, of. Spin. How the hell is he here? Uh, they, they could just pump the brakes, they could just show a little bit of presence somewhere and try and see if they can get him in a great position, but Magnum succeeded, which is, I mean, it just shifts that position from being proactive to maybe just catching rotations, but they're actually still going to go with this one. Yeah, no chance, Cloud had no idea that was open. Nuki, oh! Nare, this guy, difference maker. Some of his kills have been so impactful, but honestly, that positioning, the slip through is going to be gutting for Giant X. Yeah, Redgar and Fatinho are still alive, but this round, it's not for them anymore. Really well played there Spike from Carmen Core. When Narrate got into CT through B Heaven, I was nervous for a second because Yoru is going up ropes, throwing flashes into A Heaven. What's that going to do? It's going to pull them pull from the B yep. and they're going to try maybe catch Narrate in the back. Mm. But then he's like, wait, you know what? Let's make the noise back towards B. Fade uses ultimate towards B. Yep. That pulls the A rotators. Knife out. 
Everyone knows you run faster with a knife out. So that, that's a, able to open the round for Narrate, and then they're able to audible back to A. That is a prime example of just like the 1-3-1 one, one, spread mm -hmm. default, take the map control, and then just see Cover what you can get. Up. Don't overly commit into anything. Prod a little bit, see what space you can get. You get the space, you make the plan, and you do a little bit of push and pull there. Great round from Karma Core there. Getting to see them play like this on Split, it, it's it's one of the things I love about it. It reminds me of the, uh, I think it's uh, it's called Nuke or something from another <laughs> game. It's just you know, causing and punishing any gap that's made by kind of pulling rotations from utility, presence, whatever it is. It's just beautiful to see. And again, being able to slip the net like this, it's just outstanding. Yeah, I mean, the follow-ups, he, he, I mean, that's beyond expectation, the fact that he got Nookie as well. But I'm just, yeah, incredibly impressed with what we're seeing. And what a remake of this roster already. But this could be the ultimate round, at least in map one for now. No alts available here for them just to instantly tip the scales favorably towards them. Not a perfect purchase, though, for Giant X. Yeah, Giant X is trying to punish the fast mid to B. Have it in play from the Rays with the Breach in the position to stun. Sky in a position to flash, and they're ready to fight that together. But it's not going to come. It's going to go A, and it's going to be Cypher all on his lonesome. They need to have a defensive smoke, but Redgar's not in a position. He's all the way over at B. He needs to be in a position where he can smoke for the Cypher. Otherwise, it's all yeah. over. Well, let's see if it is all over. Nookie, how much can you do a Bulldog to play with and five players coming Come your on, way? The support here. system is not there. He is very much alone. He's trying to stall this one out. Flying is narrate, though. Already looking for it. They're trying to just back him up, and Nookie still survives. Takes down the first for the follow-ups of the problems. And more information. I thought he had it. Cloud's got his back, though, and he's got three. Hoodie stems the bleed. Giant X clutching up to 10 rounds. Barely, but my god, they held on. Yeah, I thought for sure Giant X was going to lose that round. Carmine Core trying to do a little bit of like mid faking with like the Prowler out, the smoke out, deny some info, maybe put some like question marks. But with Giant X in position, be heaven ready to run into the vents, Breach able to spill out through CT with that smoke. We saw the Omen smoke deployed right at the exit of screens so that Breach could get through screens into elbow and back up the Cypher on the site. And we didn't see Carmine Gore explosive enough there. We saw the Rays go in, but then there was a cage. Yeah. To yeah, there yeah. was a cage. And then where's the next teammate? Still at lower A main. They didn't have ramp control. They didn't have heaven control. They weren't able to stop a flood. They weren't in the site to, to stabilize the site and trade the kills. So not a great execution from Carmine Gore. If they go into that again, they better do it with something like a Yoru ulti, a raise rocket on hand, maybe an omen TP so that they can get the info of where the defenders are anchoring from. But without any of those in play that last round, that was looking eh, maybe not the best call. Maybe they should have done something where they felt out the round a little bit. Maybe they took some control over B Heaven or ropes. They would have gone to a trap either way. So I think Giant Sex actually made a really good call there. Yeah, it worked out for them. Uh, we're going to see Cloud with the ult, especially after that last round. Not surprising that he's been able to get there. And, and great to see Cloud kind of kicking back into form. One of the unsung heroes. I know he's high on a lot of people's lists to try and get him on the teams throughout this year and last. He's always been someone to be headhunted. But sticking around here, looking to see what they can do going in. We are very close by to narrate having his ult Got to away. Through. Martin as well, two off from his. So a couple of opportunities starting to knock for Carmine Core, but not quite in this round. So it looks quite simplistic. We're not seeing the split across the map. Yes, we do still see at least Shin on the other side, but everyone really posturing early here. Yeah, right now I think Giant Sax is playing, thinking, hey, we just shut them down at A. They're not going to come A again. We can go back into a similar setup. Hey, look, I've got Breach ulti. If they come into us, we can use it. We can do a fast flood. We can stabilize on the round. We could use it as like a counter exec onto the middle course. so we can reclear this together. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this round develops in the next 10 seconds here. Yeah, I'm looking at one, the pendulum swing of rotation, right? Where does... Vitinho commit towards, it looks like he's going to commit towards that B site. A 1-3-1 from the attack inside, holding both the extremities straight up the middle. Yes, the flash will confirm there is presence here, so this will be noted. Martin's been good control. for this, though. Not going to get what he wants, though. No full attention being given. I'm still waiting to see Shin's impact in this round. What's his end game plan? And it might be because of this. I'm nervous for Giant Sex right now. They're giving us so much space and respect. They can't connect on either side. It, it could be a five versus three on B or five versus two on A, and there's left. no rotation for at least 20 seconds. They're letting they can, them sweat. Yeah, but they're they're 
sweating themselves. <laughs> <laughs> 20 seconds, they've got to make their mind up. They've got to go it for is. this one now. Two players back by pillar, back to back near on. It's going to be Nuki, and it is going to be Cloud standing there. There's the ult, and there is the ultimate problem. 10 seconds, they need to get to the site. They need to clear the back of pillar, and they can't. Nuki holding them back, takes the attention, takes down two, a third, a fourth, make it five, surely. Switches to the classic and gets it done with Hoodie in tow. Fantastic hold in the end. But I think you're right, they left it far too long. Really well played by Giants X. The Breach realizing, hey, they're not coming up. Okay, you can have middle. It's like a minute into the round. Who cares at this point? You have to come into our triangle setup at B. Okay, well, you guys are chill at B. I'm going to go over at A. I'm going to set the back of the site. If they come through middle, up events into heaven, I got the Breach ulti, baby. I'll sit in the back of the site. You're going to come into the two Cypher traps. You're going to come into the cages. You're going to come into the Breach ulti. The Aftershock, the flashes, we swing together, and then the Flood's going to be there within a matter of seconds. So Carmine Core, they had so much space. Maybe we need to see them prod a little bit more, especially when they see an ulti on the board. Maybe they do what Neri did the, the previous round, where he was able to get all the way through Beheaven into spawn. Maybe they can try that again if they get that much space again. I want to see what the plan is now, Martin. Time to jump. Just unleashing all straight away Here. as a wander through. That's going to be the Operator noted as well. Yeah, I can hear that going. Oh, my oh, God. He went for it, but Redgar there in support, ready to back up his boy. But now Tomasi with a trade out, and they're actually closing the gap. Wait, hold on! Oh, my God! How the hell have they done that? They've just swept the site. They've got the plant. And now you've got Nookie and Cloud, the heroes from the last round, with a 2v4. This is obscene. Still plenty of kit for Cloud, but he's going to have to bide his time, find the right moment to use it. There's still that mid control there. This allows all the eyes from the players on the side to be focused on CT. Starting shot from Cloud. This could be the correct follow up. Magnum going to be isolated here. There it is, confirmed. Tries to make the run. Cloud trying to close down. Magnum gets out with his life, though. Readjust reposition. A tap on the spike. Nookie wants this to half. He doesn't quite get it, though. That's unfortunate. Magnum on the pickup. This could be it. Now down to one. Nookie, how much can one man do? It's not going to be enough. Carmine Gore. Map one, it's theirs. That was a great round. Great half, great game. Yeah, actually fantastic to see this for them. That's got to be a lot of weight off their shoulders to already put up a good performance on map one. Now, it was their choice of map, but I think we have to look at, you know, historically how they looked last season, all the other issues that they've had at one point. This will mean the world to them, and we'll be back with map two in just a moment. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're gonna be able to fight this. Hello. 
elevate, level up, way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them out of law, but don't got receipts. I do it with ease, to you it's a burden, to me it's a breeze. You feel that? That win is degree, that kickback. You coming at me, boy, sit back. Came out the womb like this, hit the pedal in room right quick. Gotta get it, we going up, way up, my land on the moon. You step in the room like this, we breaking the rules right quick. They killing the mood, and up in the fuel, my land in the tomb. be the witness at the time turn a repeat to a 3p yeah got the franchise on me you more like you need yeah 21st century you all the way bc yeah old boys been washed up i'm not stuck in tt hey came out the womb like this hit the pedal in room right quick gotta get it we going up way up my land on the moon who step in the room like this we breaking the rules right quick they're killing the mood and up in the fuel my land in the tomb Bonjour tout le monde, je suis très heureuse parce que je suis avec Kameto. How are you? How are you feeling after that win? I'm great, I'm great, but it's only 1-0, so we have to close out the, the game first and then I will be really happy. Spoken like a true leader. Let's talk about putting this team together because you kept Shin, yeah. you picked up four challenges players and then an incredible pickup in Coach Aang. And you were the mastermind behind these decisions, so talk me through it. Yeah, uh, Aang like, was the, our first decision to build the roster. Even Shin was not selected in Zeisha at first. And then they had to prove themselves again from last year and Aang like, uh, was good with them. So then we, we did a lot of tryouts and we, we came up with this roster, three duelists and uh, Eng the magician. <laughs> so talk me through the three duelists thing. Eng says, it's no problem, I've worked with three duelists before. For you, why did you want to pick up these guys? Uh, because I trust Eng. <laughs> So you know, he told you these three will be fine. Yeah. We'll take them. It's no, we fine. had a lot of tryouts. Like the trials were very, very long. So really thought about it uh, a long time for months. And then uh, when he was sure, uh, I was sure. <laughs> you know, <laughs> he tells me, Kameto, we need these guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when Eng speaks, you do have to listen. I believe we might be running out of time to speak to you. Um, it's but, okay. But what will make your chat like me? What do I say to them? Mm. Uh, wait. Allez, la Cacorp. Allez, la... Oh, go okay. Carmin Corp. Yeah, yeah, go Carmin Corp in French. A Allez, les bleus. Allez, les bleus. <laughs> but also the other team, because um, I can't be biased because I work on the show. Yeah, it's okay, it's um, okay. So, yeah, so um, Giant X, yes. Uh, Allez, les bleus. And let's head back to the analyst desk. <laughs> Merci Let's beaucoup. go. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh, Frankie, this is VCTE and me. Of course you're you allowed to be biased. <laughs> allez le bleu, allez le bleu. 
uh, they looked absolutely amazing after that map. I've got Kukuka and Ash uh, with me once again, but I want to talk about the next one, Sunset. We've not seen it yet. We're going to yeah. get it on day one. And Kukuka, after seeing what Pacifics did, what NA did, uh, what's the yeah. meta like? What are we expecting? Uh, a lot of different things. I think especially coming from Pacific, I think that there is like a base for the map or there is definitely what some people interpret to be the base of the map, you know, like having, for example, Omen. But then you have some people running the Viper and then the Harbor and then some Astra as well. There've, there's been some Sage. Uh, there's been uh, some different duelists. I think that people are still testing stuff, even Gecko. But I think that if I look at Giants, for example, knowing what they just did with Split being very, you know, traditional in their yeah. composition, I would go for the most tamed version of it and just having Cypher, Omen, uh, Raze, Breach, uh, okay, I, I probably missed someone because I have very bad memory. Would you hey, I mean, there's a lot of agents that you have to <laughs> consider, right? I think overall, we did get to see a little bit of a preview of Sunset as well for Game Changers. So the, a lot of the double controller was being run within that scene in particular, but I feel like every region does end up developing its own meta for every single map. And I feel like all of these teams have absolutely been in the kitchen looking over towards karma and core i feel like they might even try and pull out another double duelist situation why not yeah it yeah, works exactly. it works <laughs> it's no but it's something to, to to take into consideration that is something that has not been seen so so often but when was the last time that we saw you know uh, a double duelist on, on split you know someone running it consistently of course we did see k corp trying a lot of things last year but i don't think we can compare it uh to this k corp it wouldn't be really fair but what what with what they have and the understanding and all the Combos and the beautiful uh, utility usage that we were seeing there on Split. I'm really actually looking forward to see if they managed to, to pull the same. I mean, they went from playing zero duelists at all, the K Corp that we knew last year, to come right. into this with three. They played a two. It looks uh, uh, amazing. But now Giants, zero. yeah, let's talk about Giants because they didn't change anything mm. on that split. They kept to their comp. They just slotted Red yep. got in for Rhyme. Uh, so on Sunset, are we expecting them maybe to go for what you just said, like the yep. bog standard, kind of the cypher? Yeah. Uh, uh, the breach even okay, think about it right you have nokia who has a lot of experience on the cypher redgar even though he steals the nice to this day he's kind of like an otp he loves omen and he will uh play it a lot of the times so i think that following the trace that pipson is leaving we should be you know falling towards that well we're gonna find out shortly which two comms we're gonna be seeing for the first time ever in emea on sunset of course carmine court they uh, took map one which means if they take this one they're gonna get a two zero i cannot believe we're gonna get a Day where Heretics and Keiko both 2 0 on day one. Very, very, very uh, exciting That's a stuff. Statement. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's not over yet because it was very, very close on map one. Uh, it could have e even gone to OT uh, towards the end there. But again, for a team like Giants, Ash, if it's anybody that's going to be able to go back into the drawing room and talk about what to change, what went wrong, it's going to be this Giants team. It absolutely is. But this is also within a series right now. I think looking into the future, into those elimination matches or into that upper bracket match, depending on how this best of three falls, that's when the time comes. But I think what Kukuka said about this squad, this four person core heading into this match, they're comfortable on those roles from last year. But will that mean that they fall behind in the meta as well? You're right, but the meta still hasn't been established or still, you know, that True. strongly. That's why we've seen so many changes. I think that if it could have happened with any other map, if maybe Icebox would have come in a different time, we would have seen different metas or maybe more, you know, taking more time for it to be established one. And also I think just because the, the, the teams are actually growing in different directions, there are ones that think, it, you know, uh, some parts of the game are more important than, than others. Some do not rely on uh, that much utility and so on. I, I understand that this could be a map with with a lot of different faces. Now, do not forget, Giants might have been traditional, but they are also the ones who chose to come to Sunset here today. So I really think that there are going to be surprises even in that traditional style. I mean, we've been talking about uh, N all day. What's Pipson got for us? That's a sage. Uh, that yeah. is a sage. Uh, I mean, we've spoken al already a little bit about what we're expecting. Ash, we're not going to get the double duelist and the right over to the gecko. Right over to the gecko. But my eyes have got to actually lie in the fact that, okay, sure, the gecko's coming in. You have that double control. But on the side of Giant X, 
it's you're lacking a lot of that information now. Having that Sage yep. as that Sentinel, sure, you get to block off, slow down some of those choke points, but you don't get that Lurk ability, and then you also only have that Fade. Uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be uh, strong enough. You know, also the lacking of the flashes and all the combos that you can do. I'm really surprised because uh, uh, probably uh, they have some ideas that we're going to see implement that now. Are they going to expect, you know, that double controller also uh, with the Gecko supporting someone that we already know to be a stellar duelist. Yeah, and also how nostalgic Magnum on the Cypher. We've seen that uh, before, and it's time for us to go into Sunset, the first one here in VCT EMEA, and throw this back to your casters, Pansy and Steel. Feel. So, you, d you don't... You don't need to do it. It's fine. Stop making Peel happen. It's not going to happen. That's what I like to hear. Now, yeah, a whole new battleground in front of us now. Again, I caught a little bit of a look at this through, I, I think, game changers at points. Played it a handful of times, but it's, it's a little new to my eyes here, right? Like, I'm quite surprised that in the opening series that we've got coming out, you know, the first look at Giant X, they've opted as this is the, the map they're making a statement on. This is the one they've come into first and foremostly, hopefully with a plan in mind, but uh, thoughts here, what do you, what's caught your eye? Is it the map choice? Is it the composition? What's, where are you at? Well, this part of Sunset is just like Split 2.0. This is just B okay. on Split, right? And then it's kind of like an, uh, where Haven meets Split, where yeah. like you have that middle, you kind of like want to push back A a little bit, but the Sage pick is interesting with the Breach. They're going to be really explosive here on all the rounds, basically. They have to be. Okay, well, already sight take beginning and it's it's free uh, they're not gonna have much trouble yeah. with that it's it's just what's the Replay retake gonna yeah. look like yeah it's, it is kind of like running back to almost map one yeah exactly that so very similar scenes in this looking is gonna be at the forefront of this though Tomasi gonna take the contact and take down Fatinho. blind work from Nookie but he does get Magnum down but it's all calm like core until then cloud with a terrible surprise Tomasi and Ari gonna go down and fall for it but it's hoodie left in a 1v2 Playing a little further away from this, still has Kit to play with as well, but he takes a glimpse! And Shin gonna take that with both hands every day of the week. It was looking really good for the attack, getting up through middle for free, getting through market, getting that Sage wall down, but it, it, it was just so interesting. They lose the duels with Carmine Quar coming through a narrow choke point, through a narrow wall. How does that happen? How are they not able to stabilize that? That is crazy. That's just a testament to how good the Carmine Quar players are playing individually. They're just hitting all of their shots right now. And if Giant X wants to be able to win this game, they need to step up their personal individual game and hit some more shots. It can't be all on Cloud. It can't be on Cloud Nookie uh, doing their like mm -hmm. one-two combo thing. They need everyone to start contributing and, and helping stabilize here. Yeah, time to wake up because, uh, again, if you roll your mind back to the start of the first map, it, at least it initially looked quite good for Giant X. They had yeah. a good beginning on the first go of things, and then obviously we saw the issues start to begin, but, but that's neither here nor there. This is a bit of a wake-up call because Carmine Corn not going to be letting off the gas at all. They want to carry on as they were before. Now, this time around Giant X, I mean, you're on Classics. This is just a fact-finding mission. Maybe get the lay of the land, kind of see what you're up against, see what's out there, and just go through the protocol list, and Why? that's going to give you nothing. They have no smokes to work with. It's like this, the round's probably going to be lost anyways, but what you want to do, your objective changes. Get the orbs, try to get a couple of kills, and maybe take away some weapons, take away some shields. But right now, that I mean, looking good for Neri, looking good for Carmine Core. I don't know what's happening in the camp of Giant X. Why is Redgar walking out there? This is like reminiscent of Nucky just like walking up Drifting, a ramp. It's yeah. like, just do something together and have like a game plan that shifts. We lost Pistol. Oh no. Okay, we purchase up this age wall. We have a chance to like, if we get an opportunity, we can win this round. Why would we just do something where we just throw away our chances right now when we have, we can come back into this round. It's not over yet. Mm. 30 yeah, seconds I, left. I, I think seeing these frustrations early season, one, you could say, hey, they've got time to fix this sort of stuff. They can, you know, reshape a couple of things, sure. But it's worrying that we're seeing it in the first game in its own stead as well, that these sort of problems aren't something that take a million years to fix. It's almost ethos coming into it. 10 more seconds. Looks like they're going to try and make a go of it, see if they can get that plant down, maybe left. get themselves um, building up on, I imagine, hoodies out there. Yep. Looks like they're going to commit towards that one. So that's in. Any more is a bonus. And I don't think they can get much out of it here. I think we're down to just one. And, and even then, still quite individually, even to the very end. 
They got the orb from the, the spike plant, but only one player took damage from Carmine Core there. Everyone else, they kept their light shields or their heavy shields. Mm. So not a lot of economic damage. Sure, we saw the orb being placed, but that was pre-placed. We need to see, when you're on an, uh, an eco round, you need to start doing something that, okay, this round's lost. How can we set ourselves up for success in the third round or the fourth round or the fifth round? And that means getting closer to your ultis. It means taking away the economy so you can finally break the economy of your opponents. We're not seeing that from Giant X in that round. We're just seeing sloppy play and just like mentally checking out almost. So they need to work this round. They need to grind it out. They need to win it. And we can't see any sloppiness this round. Okay, well, you heard him. IGL Steel telling them what to do. Let's see if they're up for the fight though. This is going to be a... I'm, I'm worried. I'm, it, it's worrying signs, but it doesn't mean it's it's anything but over, so it's all good. Fatinho, really the one who's a little bit of a problem, as everyone else did back away a little bit. Left him a touch isolated, but no punish off the back of it. No one from Carmine Court overextending, looking to maybe follow up from that early contact. So I'm kind of curious to see how they work this map. Again, a lot of pressure shown, a lot of presence shown towards A. Yes, they pumped the brakes, considered maybe, you know, testing out, is that rotation there? Is there that flank coming in? What do we do now? But a minute on the board, and there's been no attention shown towards B. Already the rotation from Carmine Court are all here. It's kind of looking like their start of rounds on split a little bit, taking the space aggressively at the start, pausing, waiting for their abilities to come off cooldown, and then the big hit comes. I, I, I want to see if they stick the landing on this one. Fatinho going to try and bail them out on the first there. Good follow-up from Nookie. And again, keep in mind, this is four rifles against a little bit of a shaky purchase on the other side because he's going to be just still in that bonus situation. Tomasi's still going to find Hoodie. Good timing from Redguard to make sure that stems any problems that could have built from that. But it's Magnum now, and it's Magnum gone. Giant X, three standing, font in place, and they weather the storm. Yeah, that was really well played by them. So what they do at the start of the round is they take first a lobby control. They make sure, hey, if you're going to be aggressive here, get out of here, because we're coming in and we're going to come swinging. If you're close, we're going to put you in the dirt. And then it pushes them, Carmine Court, into playing a defensive setup on A site. And what that does is, after enough time develops, Giant X, they get their stun back. They get Fade Eye, they didn't use it, but they have the abilities, they have the nades, and they've funneled Carmine Core into these very narrow uh, spots. And then, boom, the hit comes, and there's nowhere to go. They just get crunched on. And I wonder if they're going to try and set this present every single time. I want to see how committed both teams are to trying to get that A control early on. You're going to see bodies behind it on both sides. Utility both sides around, but a fast, fast rotation. This is different. Early glance towards A. Yes, show bodies to it, but look at the pace in which they are eyeing up that B site. Already, they're going to note this one. Magnum, red alert. You can see Nookie already trying to turn the screws a little bit. If it's Magnum's connect, that's what he gone. Down, and now down to the remaining few. Carmine Core all too ready for this, though. And now it's starting to wane in numbers. You've got Fatinho, Redgar, and Cloud still trying to catch the cross, still trying to punish a little here, and way overextending. Cloud going to get picked up. No plan yet to be had, no safety to be had. CT still very much open. Redgar overwhelmed. There's been no opportunities. Magnum, that was clean. Anyone call for some boba? I just... <laughs> Okay, start of the round plan. What Giant X trying to do? Oh, okay, let's show our presence over at A. But then they hear, hey, raise his satchel up. Hey, Gecko's done this. Hey, okay, they're playing pretty aggressive on A. They were going to originally like walk back into middle and try to like play the round out slow, wait for that second interval. But they realize, hey, Carmine Court's close A. We have this opening at B. Let's take this timing. But as they're running over to B through market, actually Carmine Court is beating them on the rotation. They're getting to Boba and they're able to fight before Giant is able to get into the site. You gotta be quicker or you gotta pause and wait for that second interval. Wait for your breach time to come off cooldown. Yeah, I'm still waiting to see this kind of like round by round battle over towards A and who's gonna fully commit. And this time it does look as though Giant X are gonna be trying to back this up. Do they expect the second ball? D, they do. They still check Fatinho. Great to find Martin. Shin tries to hold it down, but Hoodie. Oh, I've just completely overwhelms him in the end. It's down to Massey and Magnum, and this one's looking lost. A 1v3 is a lot to ask of Magnum here. A bit of a bloody battle to begin with, really. Giant X happy to brawl out this time, though. Yeah, it's not looking good right now for Magnum. Not a situation you want to be in, but if you're able to get the first one... Oh my god, and the ulti follow. Uh, this is a little scary to me. Oh my god, he's got a little angle, that little gap could have been everything. Cloud is going to catch him. No full defuse to come in, but I saw a world where that could have spiraled drastically out of control. 
I like how Cloud isn't afraid to use his ultimate in that situation. Most people would be like, hey, like we're going to win this round three versus one. It ends up being a two versus one. You don't have to use an ultimate. It's good. You want to secure this round. You have breach ulti for the next one. You need to start stringing rounds together. And right now, what we're going to see is the economy is very brittle right now for Carmine Core. If Giant X wins this round here, they reset Carmine Core's economy. They put them on an eco. So. Staggering the ultis, they're gonna have Raze Rocket on coming up soon online. One kill, or whatever. They have Rez, he can take a fight early, die, Sage can res him, and then he'll have Rocket to enter with. Contact. There. Just on the shoulder there. Another bait Martino. setup. Yeah, see if they clear diligently. Ah, uh, they don't know though. This time Martin wanted a bit more, had another bite at it. Now he's actually doing well to continue the trading back and forth. Gonna slow down the hit and allow a little bit of a flex to look towards the other side. Red's gonna have to be forced to be invested. That's gonna be Hoodie back on his feet now. But they know the plan, they've seen the gameplay here. They're gonna re-clear together. This is a really good de reaction. They know the stage Red is coming, they come with fall four. Oh, this is so good! I love that jump across, putting his body on the line. Red was willing to sacrifice himself. Oh, Hoodie! He's caught so many with that! Two punished! And now Redgar gonna claim the last. That was unbelievable. What a bailout from Hoodie. Honestly, that round was such a perfect display of good ability usage there. We saw first the Sage in the back lines has the res, lets the team fight, lets the round develop, comes in, gets the res off, but we know Carmen Core identifies it. Hey, Sage has res, they're gonna res here. Let's get ready to fight when it happens. They come in, they do the big fight. The Wide swing coming in from the gecko. They win those initial fights, but then the breach ulti. They're stunned in a corner. They can't swing. They can't fight. Aftershock makes them move into the open. Nope, they can't. They get just torn to shreds. Really good utility usage. Really good decisions from both teams. It could have gone either way, honestly. Yeah, that was fantastic to witness. Loving seeing Giant X stabilize in such a manner as well. As you said, the kind of juxtaposition of the team look, the individual look, and now we're going to have to see what they can do. Up against these sheriffs. Yeah, some, some, some things to keep note of. I want to see if Carmine Core can be dangerous in these rounds. If they can, maybe score a couple of points for themselves here. But the plant's going to come in. Plant. We're all going to go up. And it looks like Giant X do want to take some control towards that CT side to make sure they take some of that space away. Fatinio having none of what they're selling. Maybe a little over-invested, but they want this round. And already, Carmine Core actually looking to springboard off that. Hold on, Magnum with two. And the upgrade is the rifle. Now, you can see the investments of the ult coming down. That's going to be Nookie gone. This is now down to a 2v2. Redcar holds the line. Desperately controlling and does. Keeps this on their side before things got dire. Yeah, this is the game that keeps on giving right now because yeah. well, I, I don't I, I don't know if I like that raise rocket push into Boba there. Really questionable. You have the sights, five versus five. You can save the ulti. If they come in, they start killing your teammates, maybe. If they're about to do the retake. They pop their ro raise rocket, the defenders. Maybe then you counter rocket. Do you need to start it there? I'm not sure about that because as soon as Magnum gets those first two with the sheriff, boom, Martin pops his rocket. He's on the way in. He gets the sage one for one. And then that could have been really scary. Redgar bails him out, though, and we're chilling. But we've had a couple of those now. We yep. had the hoodie bailout. Now we've had the Redgar bailout. But again, for Carmine Core, you're looking at rounds around, which we're not getting, right? That's two rounds back to back where you say, hey, they've done really nicely in this regard. They've made it, you know, quite dangerous. But speaking of dangerous, mid-walk, straight up the guts. Now it's going to give away the game. Obviously, the utility there, the water follows. Tomasi doesn't get the full glimpse, but he caught a little bit of a pixel moving. They know this is a B hit coming in. Magnum now going to be ready himself, trying to catch that cross. Already, Martin going to catch the heels of Cloud. This is already looking a little bit dangerous. But he's trying to lead the way. Clear the sight. Oh, beautiful snap back to attention. Magnum gone down. This should be the gates opening. But with all of that noise, all that attention, Carmine Core have players here. But look at this position. Nuki. Oh, oh, what? How are you turning around on that? I'm baffled if I'm Nuki, but it doesn't matter. The plant's now down. Even a fair on both sides. The ults are in, though. You can already see it. The pit put into play. That's going to make it difficult. Martin on the front line going to send away Fatinho. Follow up from the utility. Paint Shell going to come in towards this one. Martin trying to close that gap down. Keep them further away. Keep them at arm's distance. A tap on the spike. And no one biting. And there it is. Oh, great work from Shin. Good trade. And oh, Hoodie. Hoodie. There we go. Hoodie the one. The last man standing, and the one to keep it all secure and safe with the Red Bull clutch. So is it Hoodie, Red Girl Hoodie? Whose turn is it next? That's true. I mean, who, I, you can pick and choose from this roster, to be fair, but every single time you think Carmine Core's just on that cusp of something, one of these players is stepping up.
I like the approach from Giant X there, the vision to kind of put that Sage Wall deep into CT spawn to stop the rotations. And we, we saw what that did. It slowed down the rotations. They were worried about someone coming through middle and flanking through top mid. They took their time through market, fighting that Boba, not letting Magnum take them all out again. And then they worked their way into the site. And then they got into the site, they stabilized a little bit. And that Nucky flank is just getting <laughs> caught. It's like, it, it's pretty unlucky, but it's yeah. another one of those situations where it's like, if you wait, if you are the person that's in the lurk spot, that's in the flank spot, you need to wait for the round to develop. It's not your job to take the next step because people, especially with like the Sage Wall being placed at top mid early in the round, they're gonna expect something. They're gonna expect a wrap around top middle because that was an, it, it was an option. It was available. It, yeah. It's something that they have to consider. So you have to wait. And when the defenders start moving in through Boba into sight, when they start moving in from market into sight, that's your time to strike. You catch them in the back. If you go too early, then they're gonna be potentially looking for you or clearing you out. So another situation where, yeah, it's like it's unlucky, but at the same time, it's also maybe a little bit too early. And, and my heart breaks a little for Carmine Core in this because by you know by my eye test alone, they've they've just hit the timeout. Yeah, it was their tactical timeout just now. But what are you meant to say? Because yes, there's obviously things you can extrapolate, but a lot of the rounds going away from them, arguably in the last four, have been down to someone kind of almost over exceeding expectation, doing exceedingly well, which is fantastic. Obviously for Giant X, you'll take it when you get it, but. I mean, for the Carmine core side, what are you meant to say in those sort of timeouts? What are you meant to do? It's just like, okay, just don't get 1v4, I guess. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know what you're meant to do in those scenarios. I wonder if they have to shift their uh, focus from A towards, like, middle or B instead yeah. and just change the setup a little bit. Because, yeah, uh, no, no. I mean, again, this round, uh, apart from maybe Martin, I'm not seeing as much threat here. Um, and, yeah, Nookie's not allowing much problem to happen. Uh, great for him as well, building towards the ult. Happy to be keeping this clean. Yep, Martin's still alive. How much danger can one man cause? Not a great deal. So, at this point, yeah, it's going to be a formality. So, comfortable round in the end. Giant X is going to take that cleanly. And again, for Carmichael, we've got to see what that timeout was for now coming into the next one. Yeah, and it's just like with this composition, double controller and the cypher, you're, you're looking at kind of leverage that and play this like super defensive setup. But right now you're going against the Sage that's going to cut off rotations, the Breach that's going to completely just destroy anybody in sight, Fade comboing with that, with the Prowlers to clear positions out, the Eye to scan the site before they go in, and the Rocket to be really, ex or the Rays to be really explosive behind all of this utility. So right now, like maybe you shift your focus, like you're always doing these A fights, but we're never really contesting middle or getting these flanks off. These guys, they don't have a Sentinel. They don't don't have a flank watch. Do something through middle. Try to get in the back lines. Try to get behind them and disrupt them. They're just playing so scared right now and trying to stay ahead of the fight and, and go head to head. They don't have the utility to do this though. They can't stop this exec. Last round, it was you know the hoodie showdown here after that res. But whether or not they fully commit to this, I'm looking towards middle as well. You're seeing Redgar kind of taking a bit of a wonder, showing some presence, keeping, you know, a little bit of the map under control so they can't go for those instantaneous stacks. They can't really hit an easier rotate this time, so they could have been caught. But for now, you can see them gathering towards the top of the middle. I wonder if they're actually going to try and make a play through this. Face to try and catch fear. Redgar. Well, I'm going to find much of that. Omen getting spotted at mid and breaking that camera might have unironically lost in the round. I'm surprised no one actually committed through for that flank, but they're worried about a flank here. And again, though, look at look at the counter side of this as well. Yeah. The plant's going to come down. They're going to have full CT swing control. If they fancy it, they're not going to. They're holding close to it. Not but 5v5 post plant, this is you're miraculous at this point. But we're going to see the utility still in play. The TB taking the cause of paranoia, but it's hoodie to strike. Martin goes down and five still down for Giant X. You can see Fatinio waiting as well to see if anyone dares to go ahead. They have to catch the cross as well, sit passively on the side. This is individual. This looks messy from Carmine Core. They do not look like they've got themselves in the right place here. Giant X lapping this one up. Gorgeous round from them. That is another Andalusia flawless coming through, but you couldn't ask for a better round, and it felt like Harman Cole were just a passenger in that. Yeah, they look like a you know a shell of the of their former selves, a shadow of their former selves. Because right now we're just you know we see them on defense of of split, and they're they're moving together so well, so fluid. And here it's just like 
it feels like they're playing into their character, their agent role a little bit too much. And they need to be able to detach from that and realize like, yes, I'm Viper, yes, I'm Omen, yes, I'm Cypher, but I'm going to get a little bit there. down and dirty. And instead of just like sitting Where back and playing off my camera or my trips, I'm going to start moving up here. Like what they're doing this round, if they do it with guns, instead of like pushing right into tiles, if they wait a second, like that's what they need to do. What they're doing here, they do this on the gun round, they're going to be chilling. They should have done it a few rounds ago though. I wonder if it's too late. It might be. It might be a little too late in the day, oh. but couldn't be going better for them at the moment. Individual fight by individual fight, and Narrate's going to take that every day of the week. Happy enough to connect the shots from the Sheriff, leaving Cloud and Nookie in a world of trouble. And I, it's almost like you know what you're talking about sometimes, Josh. It <laughs> upsets me when it works out so well. But you are absolutely on the money. This uh, presence in middle, trying to you know, actually pressure throughout the map, has worked wonderfully. Now, can Nookie and Cloud do something? Potentially, but it's certainly an uphill battle. Plant going to come in. They have recovered weapons, so not many, to be fair. Only one actually on Magnum. I thought they might get a they're, little They're going to get more now because the Sage Wall actually protects them to be able to pick up the guns, stabilize, break the wall, and enter this retake five versus two together. Yeah, and they're right now getting the upgrade. Cloud trying to get a little bit naughty with it. Tomasi's having none of that, leaving Nookie in the 1v5. And we've seen some naughtiness already in this game from individuals. I think this one might be a little bit beyond his reach. He's going to close it towards it, see what he can do. Not enough. Tomasi, fantastic in the end, but still, Carmine Core collectively doing really what was needed earlier. Yeah, if they had done this a few rounds ago, it would have looked a li little bit better. Mm. They do it here. They still have a chance to end the half five to seven. So it's not like the biggest deal in the world. They have the raised rocket going into this round for the defense. It's going to be interesting. We do see the Sage Res is in play again. We haven't really seen an off yet from either side. I wonder if that is going to be something that either team, like maybe going to the second half, is Jack going to do that? Is it going to be the Sage? Is it going to be the raise? But right now, yeah, it's... There's so many options for both teams right now. I think Carmine Court shouldn't do this play again, this three-person A thing. They're going to get, I mean, they do have the rocket. Maybe that's enough. We'll, we'll maybe, see. Maybe. That, that's, that's the leveraging factor, isn't it? Is that going to be enough to dissuade the approach or even give them that potential advantage at the start? For now, a similar scene, though, that same battleground drawn over and over, this early utility exchange. But already, it looks like Cloud going to be trying to pressure towards middle. That is a big amount of presence he's showing here. And right, kind of getting a little curious towards A main as well. This has drawn the attention, and Cloud oh. survives. Martin does follow up eventually, and notes there's only one in middle. This now puts it all on the plate of Narate. He's got to be so ready, only going to take down one, but it gives away the game, and Shin's there this time. Much better look from Carmine Core, closing towards the scoreline just a bit here. Five to seven, it is recovered, but it's certainly not comfortable. Yeah, I mean, five to seven is, it's not comfortable, but that recovery, especially those last two rounds, were so necessary for these guys to be able to have a chance closing out this game, closing out the series 2-0 even. But like, I love the reactions that they had there. So I was like, oh, this A push, is this gonna work out? But I think the second time that Giant X goes out middle and breaks that trip, it stimulates this reaction from Carmine Core. They say, hey, we've lost top middle info. The trip, the trip wire's down. They can go into mid, they can go into market, they can flank us. We have to connect. But what they do is they connect from B and they connect from A. They weak clear mid together. And what that did is it meant that Giant X is like, okay, let's go into A now. And they go right into just like the trap set up here. Boom, just lining them up. Okay, second half commencing. And we don't know the reps of these teams, right? We don't yeah. know if Carmine Core even has this really in the map pool that they'd want to be facing so early, but I mean, they didn't veto it, so there's always the chance to come out. But for Giant X, putting a bit of an early marker on this one. Still have the wall and the orb not placed from the Viper. It's going to be an explosive hit. Yeah, looks like Red Guard's going to try and slow that down at the very least. Going to be forced away from this now, so has to rescind away and give up a little bit of that early challenge, but Nookie doesn't. He's going to find Martin. Fantastic angle from him. Narrate there, falling as well. This is lovely work from Giant X. Couldn't ask for a better start. <laughs> Red Guard, nasty with his work. And it feels like a formality towards Magnum. What more can one man do? Well, he's making a damn good go of it. Yeah, Hoodie might be backing now, going, maybe I'll chill out a little bit. Just My kidding. Destroyed. I don't know, I'm, I'm, you know, Magnum Believer. Let's, uh, let's see. I mean, the spike's down in the middle of B-Site. Like, these guys can just, they just need to play together and make sure that Magnum can't isolate any individual like tools. Like, like, right here, this is really sketchy yeah. for Rudgar, because if Magnum yeah. gets this kill, one yeah. versus two is a lot more winnable than a one versus left. three. Absolutely. You can't give that opportunity. No, I think Rhaegar might be noticing this. He's slipping back yeah, into a like, more tradable eh. position. Just like, all right, guys, I won't actually throw. So he's going to be chilling. Sitting back a little bit deeper. 
Magnum very aware of this though, but uh, similar scenes on the other side. Doesn't get noted initially. Cloud clears up. Perfect start there for Giant X. I'll be happy with that one. Yeah, they, they definitely love it. And honestly, that wingman going out with a spike there, getting denied before Dizzy could blind the defender, that was kind of like the, the end to the round. It's just like, okay, spikes down in the middle of the open, Sage Slow comes in, breach down on the slow, people aren't able to move. Like, what are you gonna do? You can't even get out of the choke at that point. So, it, honestly, with a double controller plus Cypher, they should be a little bit more slow, it's fluid. They don't have the explosiveness. They don't have flashes. They don't, I mean, they have Gecko. That's it. That's it, like, yeah. You don't have, like, on the other side of it, they have... Right there. Just Breach, I guess. <laughs> I mean, Redgar's kind of got a blind. Yeah, but then... Ish. So does Shin. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm trying to help you out. Yeah, I know, you I know. know like, but why, I, already, why I already caught myself. I already caught myself, though. <laughs> I belong in the hole if I say that. <laughs> I've committed to the hole. Um, going into this one, though, we are going to be seeing the Sheriffs, the Classics, bits and pieces. It, it's not a great deal to report for Carmine Court financially into this round. For Giant X, you want to see clean slate, though. You want to see them trying to keep this tidy, aim towards that double digit as soon as possible, get up towards 10 rounds if they can. But taking their time here, Carmine Court, not in a particular hurry. Red Guard going to be tested. They see, the they see the Sage Wall. They're letting it kind of just, like, let it simmer. They know that... Oh. Okay. okay. That, 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 that happened. Yeah, no worries. And they will have to pull away. Respect a little bit. This body's behind this. The cloud stuck around and Nookie by his side. No problems here. This is looking very clean. This is much more of what Giant X would have wanted to be happening on the first map, but they'll take it here for sure. BO3 for a reason. And as long as they can bounce back on this map, that's all that really matters because they could definitely have a chance on Lotus. Mm. But I do want to see Carmine Core trying to play into this composition a little bit better, yeah. knowing that they have all this info denial, putting the Viper Wall up and down to deny the info at middle. They know that Giant X, they only have the Sage. The Sage is the only person that really has any sort of Sentinel uh, abilities. So that wall going up is the only thing that's going to prevent Lurks. When you have Cypher and Viper and Omen on the team, you have three potential Lurkers you have to take care of. So you need to play very proactive and push around and get info a certain way. And you can punish that if you're Carmine Core, if you're spread out, if you're looking for those Lurk timings, if you're constantly denying the info. So we need to see the slower game plan coming out and not giving away too much like information of what you're doing. I like what they're doing here slowing things down. Yeah, I feel like they may have heard you. I feel like the, yeah. the game plan is kind of into effect. We'll see if they can kind of stick the landing once they get to that point, but just kind of taking that default around the map, kind of showing a little bit of something, but not too much. Congregating I'd back around towards a spike, collecting that, and it looks like potentially heading back towards A. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I I would have rather them keep more map control before they moved. Okay, they're, they're okay, going they back into going it, back. yeah. All right. They're gonna do something. They're gonna like fake this A, yeah, the fake the re A reclear, push them back, group up towards B, wait for the reaction to happen. Here's the over rotation back into CT spawn for the defenders. And now it's gonna be, yep, Redgar. Nice. Magnum takes down the isolated man. That should be there. The green light, that's the site open and ready for the taking. Plant gonna come down. It's a long rotation on this map too. It takes time to get back over here. Fortunately enough, you do still have Nookie near enough by. Yes, you still got Cloud towards the CT side, but the other two are still gonna make their way over. Utility with Hoodie is still in play. The post plant though, already gonna be on red alert. They know that someone's close enough by. Cloud gonna try and set something into motion here. Fatinho getting very close as well. This looks like it's the goer. Fatinho trying to maybe get some pressure, but they need to start working towards this one. Gonna force Tomasi out of a comfortable position. Forced to fight, the flash is fantastic. Noki, the one to make the most of it. And now it's a little uncomfortable. The diffuse is starting. Hoodie's not gonna be getting off that. It's pride away in the end, leaving Magnum the only one alive. And the diffuse in the end goes through Cloud, the last line of defense, and it worked. So much trust in Cloud there, but for good reason. He's been definitely one of these major key pieces. Both maps getting so many multi frags and great utility usage. I was actually thinking, wow, this round's actually really well played from Carmen Core. They did everything they needed to do. They slowly worked the map. They denied the info. They waited out the duration of the Sage wall. If the Sage put the wall up early, they went back into... They kept the control over B main. They went back to A. They did the fake reclear. They stimulated Redgar into pushing into B main. Fell right into the trap. They had the five versus four. They had the site for free. They had the spike plant for free. But then what do they do? They all go back into B main. I was kind of hoping they'd split out a little bit further, take a little bit more of that space. Was, I mean, it's, it's always a chance to someone near enough by, but still, they, they'd had a decent enough lay of the land. They could have maybe 
gone for that, I guess, slightly yeah. riskier fight. But still, I mean, they'd at least held some of that side control. I think their Viper Orb was towards a lobby to help with the the control of lobby slash the reclear. Their Viper Wall is towards middle. They're like, what else do they have there? They use the Rays of utility and the, the Gecko utility to get into the site to begin with. Like, what do you have there for the post pick? When you have a comp that doesn't have a lot of post plant lineups, you have to get in their faces. You have yeah. to just brawl out. Cypher doesn't really have anything. He's just gonna brawl out. Viper, you don't have your orb. Your mollies are, aren't gonna do anything by themselves. You gotta brawl out. So when you're in this composition, try to split up. Where's the late mid lurk into the market flank and, and getting the backstab? Where's the person that's been inserted? Like, you pushed and faked the A comeback. You did the omen flash all the way through this line. Why does the omen not walk through tiles and then get a backstab either through spawn or late through market. You have the opening into B site already. So we need to see them tighten up in those types of situations. Let's see if it's something they can potentially explore now. Again, it was Carmine Core's timeout. Uh, that's just there. Pass. So whether or not they can maybe uh, implement something, but again, yeah. by that point, you're probably going to imagine that Giant X are going to be on 11 rounds. It does become a very uphill struggle from that point onwards. But you know, for the sake of good practice, for the sake of getting those reps in and kind of showing that capability, why not try it out now? But we wait and see. It looks like for now, the prescription given is a little bit more mid-pressure. It's Sage actually keeping the wall here. Going to use it either reactively or save it for the post plant. They know sheriffs can't bust down a wall that quick. They don't have any rifles. Yeah. I'm going to save. Oh, there it is. Reactively. Yep. You can't come through here. You have to break multiple blocks. And Cloud, so prepared on the other side here as well. They've just followed them forward straight into his loving embrace. Huge work from him, picking up three. And again, all the threats navigated. Giant X just manipulating Carmine Core around this map. Nothing was really available to them. Yeah, they, they had nothing and they got nothing. Yeah. They do have the Gecko ulti online right now. If they choose to use it, it could be really valuable. They know that the Sage is playing around uh, top mid slash market area. They know the Omen is on the solo B site hold a lot of the time. They know there's a lot of effort towards this A lobby control. So it's going to be interesting to see if Karmic War can deny enough info, get enough space and map control, and then utilize that big fish to open up the round. Going up. It, it can be if you want it to be. Appreciate that, thank you. It's better than Peel. <laughs> I didn't come up with that. No, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm as much of a victim as you are. Um, as it stands, though, it looks like the initial battle for that kind of deeper A main control, A lobby control is comfortably, is proactively sitting, or it was until then, uh, in the hands of Giant X. You can already see the Magnum trying to keep a little bit more presence off. noted over here. You can see them trying to <laughs> draw this around, but. Stands patient stand. beginning, yeah. That was good. The race sees nothing. Omen reacts, puts the smoke down on B. Still, letting the round develop Carmine Core. I need to see them inserting players more aggressively. Mm. They have the Cypher trap. What's he going to do? He's going to wait for someone to try, like, raise to push through and flank? They're going into four man B main hit. They don't have the comp for this. Is this going to yeah. work? They have the fish. It might. Well, that has to be. A real big fish here for Narate. Let's see what he can get done with this one. Gonna try and at least close down already. Basically denied. No even follow up. Redgar gets away scot free. This is perfect for him. And the flood with the fade ulti. Oh, oh no. dear. This is looking like an absolute tragedy. Cloud already gonna find Magnum. That removes that one backline threat potentially. Now the swing. Oh. Yeah, this is done. Put a bow on it. Wrap this up. This is all but over. Tomasi tries to make a last stand, but this is Giant X with a grip on this game. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think Carmine Core is, I don't know if they're overthinking things or they just didn't have enough, like, good enough game plan or specifically yeah. what it is. But, like, I don't hate the idea of it. They're following the thrash in, trying to get in there, but no one's peeking with it. And, and Redgar is able to peek out, destroy the thrash, have the smoke up on main, throw the omen blind, and have his teammates all flood. They know no one's coming through market because that sage wall's up. Carmine Core didn't take enough map control. They don't know about the sage wall. They haven't broken it. They haven't made them worry about top mid. They haven't made them worry about A. Raze has full control over A. You need to do something to deny info or take map control so that you can actually split or audible. You can't do these full execs. You don't have the comp for it. Yeah, it looks uncomfortable for Carmine Core here. Maybe this map just not quite in the wheelhouse yet. Whereas for Giant X, it is looking fantastic. I like this. And uh, Magnum. I love this. Yeah, how's he gone this far? Nookie's the one to find Tomasi, but again, how the hell has this man gone here? 
And he takes line him up. Time. Line him up. He should have a second here too. Yeah, oh. absolutely. Executioner <laughs> coming towards the site now, trying to facilitate that cross as well. There is still a problem. There is still a man here, and it is Cloud. Does this round have its silver lining? Not this time for him. Nari going to clear him out as well. That's lovely work from Carmine Core. Finally exploring the map a little bit here. Right up the guts through Giant X, leaving Nookie and Red Garth with, well, an unpalatable end of a round. What they're going to do with this one? I mean, you, you might as well give it a go. Swing, miss, Nari there, happy. And now Red Garth, well, it's, uh, it's all but done here. Yeah. Up into guts through mid, Cypher on the flank. You liked that one, did you? Yeah, I <laughs> loved it. So, <laughs> <laughs> the, the Viper dying there, Tomasi, mm. unironically setting the Cypher up Magnum for that big flank. They thought the threat was dealt with. Hey, Viper through her own wall. Okay, yep. cool. Dumb. Took care of that. And then the, I guess the cerebralness of Magnum to realize like, hey, I lined two people up. There's got to be a third person here, right? There's got to be someone else defending the other part. We saw the Sage peel back from Market to pick up this top mid. Nobody came from A to pick it up. So they're they're really heavy focused on, on A main right now. There's got to be a third person here. And they snuffed them out. But I, I, my, again, this, this feels like a moment of reprise from probably the bigger issue is that that's not a repeatable round really for Magnum. Maybe you could learn something from it. Maybe they could learn a little bit of something of potentially threatening, you know, pressuring the back lines a little bit yeah. more, getting those lurks into play. But it's not something that's going to be the instant salve, you know what I mean? It's not something that's yeah. instantly going to help out. So it's still a problem, bigger picture. This isn't the big solution. But Giant X, I mean, they've got timeouts to use. Seems like they want to go for it here. Have what, two ults to play with, I mean, but it's a res and, and a TP, so kind of scrap that. But still, I don't think it's panic stations, but I guess why not have a chat while you have the time? So with the res, they could definitely opt to do something aggressive at a different part of the map other than A, because what they could do is they could pick the player back up. They yeah. can go for an aggressive fight, brawl it out a little bit, res them, reset. And that that might be the plan here because Carmen Core just exposed top middle. Mm. They've shown that this is a play that they have. They're not afraid to do it. It's, you know, as long as they keep the threat there, they don't even have to do it, but it's gonna cause Giant X to think, hey, this is a possibility. We have to keep this in mind. We have to play a certain way. If we see this wall, if we see this tempo, if we see the start around. So it's gonna be interesting to see if some things change up here. We do see the Sage on A this round. She's, wait, no, sorry, that's not admitted. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. When things are this small, that you know, you can't sick. really tell what's going on. I'm surprised that's an issue for you. TP early. And well, I said it's hard to repeat this, but that's going to certainly help our matters for a, a whole couple of seconds. We'll um, walk into B instantly. Yeah. I mean, they've got the site, right? Like this... You've sacrificed one for that. Maybe that's all you're going to get. But I look at that post plant. Remember, those post plant positions were a real problem for them before. They weren't able to brawl out on the site, particularly. They were struggling in that regard. Now we have to see if they can maybe do better with even less numbers. It was a 5v5 last time, now a 4v5. A couple of ults, though. Some big ults. Some controlling ults. One, Tomasi's. Two, Martins. is certainly something to keep in mind. Information for Redgar, but maybe not a great deal of time to utilize it here. Cloud already starting to lean towards the site. Stunner of a shot there, though. Takes away Red Guard. Magnum on the full up this time. Scrapping it out here. Not letting go of the site at all. Nookie, Fatinho, and Hoodie's options are dwindling. I think they've realized that as they fall away. It looks like a recovered round here for Carmine Core after what I didn't think was repeatable. But Shin, how they're doing the work. I think what allowed them to do this was Giant X actually took a gamble there. Okay. Why did they take a gamble? They're up 12 to 6 in this round. Right, or in this situation. Sure. They don't, like, they have six rounds to play with where they just need one of these instances to work. So if Carmine Core did this fast A thing, if they did the fast mid thing to flank A, they get shut down, mm. boom, Giant X closes out the game, right? So what happens here? Oh, they didn't come into our setup, unlucky. We thought that they were gonna try to go for this A split thing again, didn't happen. It's not the end of the world. They still have five more map points to deal with. They still have yeah. the Sage Res. I don't know why they're not leveraging that a little bit more. Throw they into the mix. Yeah, try well. to do something aggressive with it. But they're probably going to put the deep wall on B main and, and try to do another... Mi oh! Okay. Hello. Well, there's proactivity to say the least. The Sage and Wall and Slow to stall the, the B hit so that they have time to rotate back in. Yeah, you're already seeing it. Fatinho getting on his running shoes. Wants to get over there quick, just in case. Pressure starts to build, and they're going to try and get the information. Note the player on the site and going to follow up with the ult. Trying to find something. Did not connect. It's a problem. 
gets away with his life. Look, he's still breathing, still standing. That means the res is still in pocket. Patinio falls, so does Hoodie. Redgar making a stand and a half. Three kills near on back to back, leaving it in an even affair. But with the plant now down, it tilts slightly back towards Carmine Core's side. But can they hold this post plant? Dave uses eye, clears out market, has a prowler, clears the sight. I'm just scared seeing him in these positions, though. I just get a little scared. He's got the Thrash, the Viper Mollies. Should be good, right? They Should. have enough to Should. just stagger. Yeah. Here's the first. Red Gar. Wait, oh. Red Gar. Red Gar slipped the net. He oh. saw it. Oh. That, that was so tight. I've got heart palpitations at that <laughs> one. There was, there was a moment where it got a little too dicey, but there's still life in the Carmine Core side, right? This is three in a row. Now, Hey, they had a lot of rounds to play with, right? Giant X, you said it. They're not in a massive hurry, but you don't want to get into, one, the poor economic situation from this. You don't want to be down on your ult. They're slowly building a couple up here. But if you're Giant X, when, when do you worry? Because normally it's double digits for me. If I see KC hit 10, I get um, a little sweaty. Probably, probably when it gets to 12-10, you should think about really yeah. leveraging something. The fact they haven't used Sage ult yet, mm -hmm. kind of scary. <laughs> not going to lie. Sure, fine. They still have it. They're just doing their standard setup. The Omen B, the Sage Market, and 3A. They're not changing anything up here. They're, you know, they know they can't really flank. They, there's the trap wires. The Raze gets the deep line on A, though. And they're just trying to leverage this. This is the battle that could be pretty defining if they do decide to press that corner. There's the Paranoia. Similar scenes. We've seen him before. Patino knows his reactions here. Early exchange of utility near on a chess game, but the commitment on the swing didn't expect that. Fatinho goes around, finds Shin, which is a problem. They lose out on that element, but the sight's on the other side again. It's all a bit of a bait and a ruse, and it's worked once more and even better than ever. They've got the plant down, they've got full sight control here, and those rotations are still a mile away. They've got a mid late mid lurk as well coming in. We've got a little bit of layering to this one. Nookie still going to be doing damage, though. That's Magnum gone. I was looking at Martin to see if he was deciding to maybe pressure that. But now with that wall in play, probably denies a little bit of that option. Recongregating around towards CT, though. Giant X are being halted. They can't quite progress, and there's the ult being considered. This is huge, but it forces the fight. And Carmine Cora winning it! All right. <laughs> Getting a little nervous, Josh. A little bit, a little bit. Tiny little, little bit nervous. It's How's the money? How's interesting. Money? Still good? I, no, I think they do one light buy and then they okay. buy out the next couple rounds. But yep. honestly, like I thought, okay, 12-6, they're not afraid to do these gambles. Cool, they're they're doing like this two top mid, three on A. They're not afraid to just like take these gambles, close it out. They lose a couple rounds and they go into the standard setup and they're giving so much space. Their omen is the only person between the enemy and B and he's pulling out his hands to throw his smoke across the map to a lobby control. He stops watching B. Sage wasn't watching market. Like there's so many gaps right now because they don't have a sentinel and they're playing this like super spread the one 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 three setup. They need to like do something more together where they actually try to control the round. Hello? What is Red happening? Gun? Is he gonna get timed himself though? Did they hear something? Oh, yeah. They and must the, have the heard cam a step. I, The camera must have... Yeah, right? something's been seen. Red Gart is it was, very... He good. had to have been seen on the camera. Or something. Yeah, surely. Yeah, I think the camera's just around the corner. So, so like, definitely seen. was someone going to cover him if, if the, the peak came from Red Gart? I'm not sure. Yeah. Not, not particularly so on this. Again, this is around with Sheriffs, so this is more than likely going to be 10 to 12, and as we, I, at least to my mind, that is when I do hit the panic button slightly. But... For now, if you're looking for Cloud and Fatinho, silver linings for them, you are looking towards building that ult. If they can maybe get another step closer here, potentially, that would be ideal. Um, not going to have an opportunity for Fatinho, really, to build much more than this is given. But as it sounds, Cloud's got his ready to go for when is required. This would take quite a monumental climb, but Cloud does have a rifle as well. Does he get the chance to use it? No, he absolutely doesn't. Looking out. 1v3. All right, that's a shot. You're going to make him sweat here, Nookie. Make him work for their dinner. they got to get a move on. Nookie is going to make this one painful. Give himself a chance. Oh, the oh! <laughs> there is something about this man that is always so dangerous. But time is running low. Magnum's patience is being tested. And he's done perfectly well in the end. Got a little bit scary there. But again, they survived. They survive to fight another day. Two more rounds, they have to come back. They do have the thrash back on Narrate. It's going to be interesting to see if they do this four-man B hit mm -hmm. again or if they're going to use it. They know that Giant X, they get the raise on the aggressive A-line. If they set raise up on this A-line and they're playing alone and you do the thrash and you run up behind it, do you, are you able to catch that? There's the... Oh, 
I saw the pings on the map. They know about the Omen Flash. They're talking okay. about this Omen Flash. They're actually changing their setup for the first time right now. They're reading, hey, the last time they had the Thrash, they went B with it. Let's do this like aggressive B player peak or something like that. Yeah, looking for that early fight, that early. It, it, this is, again, this is just kind of setting expectation, yeah. going through the protocol list. No one there to fight out A this time, though. That is surely going to be at least not a red alert, but it's going to be curious that no one is there to challenge this. We've seen the similar protocol list from Giant X when it comes to their kind of control towards A. Somebody a bit of fade utility comes in, a little bit of a scrap from Fatinho. None of that this time, so it's, it's different. This is going to be surely catching them out. And Nuki... Why? Uh, I, Your team's all the way through B. They have all the info here. Your I teammates have exactly an info one are. mid. They broke the Sage Wall. You oh, know dear. that they're towards A. You, they have to be there. There's no other place they could be. Yeah, this is scary times now, and all of that information free-flowing. Nari wants to kind of turn those screws as well, get that pressure building towards CT, secure that space. Smoke goes up as well. That's going to be deep down towards that CT side to facilitate this plant safely. And if you're Carmine Core, you are. You're starting to smile a little bit here. You're starting to feel out this game because you've just got yourself a plant. Back. Safe on the site. You've got good control. No Lurk's going to be coming in, but that's fine. They can kind of dig their heels in a little bit because they've got utility, but there's a counter flood. Red Guard just walks out, takes down one, but a quick trade out. Fatinho falls, and he's stuck on the site. He can't do a thing about it. My team can't punish, but he knows where they are. This is the issue. They are running out of time, and they're running out of bodies. Red Guard is doing everything this man possibly can. Hoodie in unison. There's still a chance. Red Guard, he's not stopping. The defuse! Red Guard! Are you kidding me? Wow, that was actually so much trust again in Hoodie. You got me, right? Yeah, you got me. I'm sticking this defuse. You're gonna multi frag. So much respect there. Hoodie with so many big moments for his team. Maybe not even like showing up. I mean, Cloud was the other person that was doing that. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a little bit of a team effort there. I honestly thought there was a ch real chance Carmine Core could have actually taken this to overtime. I wish yes. they played that comp a little bit better, a little bit slower, played a, a little bit with the uh, more info denial and lurks. Well, that's what we can hopefully look forward to on the third and final map, Lotus. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings.
It's a solid response from Giant X on map two. They bring everything uh, even, which means we are guaranteed a map three in this series. I'm your host, Yingsu, and I've got Kakuka and Ash with me back on the desk. Before we get into it, we got to address how that uh, game ended. Uh, Ash, we don't see that very often, do we? No, you don't. And I mean, that was two players detained there into that defuse, and no one goes to check beforehand, allowing all three players to survive to allow that defuse to even happen. And even then, they still, no one has eyes on it. At that point, you cannot let that go. I mean, it was also the nade, you know, from Fiti, like preventing those things from happening. But I think that in between all of that, you get lost in the sauce and you forget if, you know, if you if you heard the tap or if you haven't heard yeah. it. And Rekka just sticks it. Like, he knows this situation and he's been there. But hear me out. K-Group were taking the right measurements round after round, and this could have perfectly gone to OT because, you know, it's literally a matter of checking or not checking. Yeah, it was very close indeed. But uh, thankfully, some of the adaptations we saw uh, from Giants allowed them to have a pretty uh, sizable lead uh, in the end because uh, the Sage, I don't know how we feel about it, but let's talk about the war usage, Ash, because you were spotting uh, that they were doing this quite a lot and it wasn't really working. Yeah, I think we had a lot of questions about the Sage, the fact that you were going to be lacking a lot of that information. And it looks like on the attacking side, Giant X, they tried to make up for that with cutting off angles. And at first, it wasn't really working out well towards that market side. I felt like that wall continued to get just shot down, but they ended up switching things up in the end and made that comeback. Yeah, exactly. And not only that, they were using these walls, you know, to get deeper onto CT and to use them differently. I think that, uh, you know, at the beginning, Nuki was just trying things. Of course, it, this is all like testing from what they've been doing uh, on Prax. And then mm. after that, he was reading more into what he could do with it and just trying different things. And we can totally respect that because obviously um, you do not see this that often and you do not expect Nuki to be um, uh, where he was sometimes in these higher positions. Definitely gave them some edge. Now, when it came to the deep defense, uh, it was something that, I mean, it has to have you worried because uh, you know that you don't have an active way of, of getting information and not even a, a, a passive one, right? You have Cloud who is going to have those powers, but that is it. You're uh, replacing uh, your Sentinel traditional sentinel with an another sentinel that is sage technically but uh, still was sending in the cast and i think it's very important like i think that k Corp should have abused that situation way more the fact that they cannot watch over the flanks but with someone being on the flanks Rekka was doing that but it's literally just one person i mean this is what we spoke about when it comes to giants right they do have those players a cloud hoodie red guy as well mm. uh, if they needed to be bailed out when things aren't working yeah. they will be bailed out but looking uh, forward to the final map here it is going to be Lotus uh, once more today. Again, it really feels like on the side of uh, K-Core, they are cooking, like N is uh, implementing yeah. a lot of different things. Giants seem to be a little bit uh, more conservative. Are we expecting that again on Lotus? I mean, I would like to see some Gecko. I remember that on week two, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Giants like 13-1 coin uh, on, on, on Lotus just by playing the Gecko. I would like to see those adaptations, knowing that the map has changed, to also have some impact on them. And I think that they will be the ones changing that. Now on the Gecko side, uh, do I want to see to-do list? Maybe I do. Hey, get, get my the boy Tom Mazzy. Get yes. Tom Mazzy. Martins had a go, no, Narrate had a go. Uh, sticking on that Sentinel role. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you're looking over towards Lotus as well, another the map with three Three lanes aside from Haven that is out of the pool. I feel oh, like I that's the other opportunity for that double dive composition, that double duelist composition to really thrive, especially with the quick pivots that you're able to have over towards that B site in particular through that broken door. I think that high octane play can really fly up against a team like Giant X. But actually, like being real, something that I do want to see is the Euro. And I would like to see it not only on the side of Kaker, but also on the side of Giants. Like I want to see, as I said, Fiti, the last Spanish player that we have from all the three Spanish orgs that we have. Um, I would like him to, to find a new frontier from him. Oh, okay, for, for Cena, maybe today wasn't the best day to use as an example, but I want him to, to learn to thrive to you know, to develop as a player. I think it'll also be nice to see Fitzy have that fresh look going into this decider as well after the performance that he just had on Hey, that sunset. nade won them the map. <laughs> Literally, okay. that they nade technically it. won them the map. Yeah. That's got to be the momentum driver for <laughs> yeah, yeah. him, though, because he can't be that quiet for the remainder of the series now. Well, let's see where we're going to go here in terms of agents. We're going to see a no Yoru. Uh, I hate to say it, but we do have a couple of Killjoys coming and another Sky. 
I cannot believe this. I was really looking forward to seeing the gecko, at least from Cloud. Like, I think it could be such a great adaptation or even, you know, maybe something, I don't know, so many things that you can do here. But both of the teams are going to be going almost for a Miracom besides uh, uh, Narit and Cloud with those two different initiators. I'm really looking forward to see how that A control is going to go with both the, vi with both the double controllers. Yeah, and Ash, your boy in the race, three maps, three different agents. Yeah. He's a ultimate flex player. Yeah, I mean, uh, that NA blood coming in, right? <laughs> he can play everything. Apparently, and he, you know, he was very locked in into that duelist role over down in NA, but it seems like and has done very well to open up and broaden his horizons here now that he's headed over to the EMEA scene. And I think something that I'm looking towards, the fade in the sky, I think that the Lotus changes makes a lot of sense for both of these teams as well with the new 50-50s that were added. Just that additional ability to clear out those angles. Yeah, I can't wait to see uh, who's going to come out on top here and send this back into game with your casters who are officially known as Pansy and Steel, a.k.a. Steel. I once again refute that. I'll take Stanzi. Yeah. Um, any any of those, like any options? I'm down for that. No, vetoed. Um, but yeah, let's focus in because map three actually kind of a big deal now, right? Because Sunset came out as a bit of a curveball to my eyes, but great to see Giant X kind of finally showing a little bit of something on that. Almost petered out at the end, but they got across the line, right? They got there. Carmine Core on map one looked fantastic on split, but still a close affair, right? We've had two close maps. Yeah. Now, map three, I have no idea what to accept between these two. It was left in the veto, clearly. They were happy enough to go there, but which team's actually comfortable here? I, I couldn't tell you for love and money, but already Fatinho finds the first. Quick trade out. So Tomasi not letting that go. And as we all know, it's not about how you start. It's about how you finish here. So this third map going to be very important to get a good start into the season. I, I think already just at eye test alone, both these teams have kind of proven quite nicely for us a couple of problems or, you know, a couple of things that they could fix down the line. And But also the potential's been off the charts. I mean, map one, I think a lot of the Carmine Core fans will be happy with what they saw there. Giant X fans will be happy with map two, you know, maybe a couple of issues, but still, overall, pretty good performance. Free sight here. And I like what we were talking about Narrated earlier. Obviously, like, I'm stanzying for Narrated a little bit here. I think uh, his his flexibility, it's not just like playing agents, it's like playing agent, different agents well. Yeah. So, you can see this four versus four retake. The Sheriff on the Killjoy, love that personally. All right, I'm looking to see what springboards them forward. Looks like just the Paranoia was sent through and they're going to go for the challenge already. A little bit of a trade out on the side. Magnum and Nari still going to be on this one. Chin tries to get the little defuse started. Dips away for a second. And Fadinho found it is clean from Carmine Core. Yeah, that was kind of interesting, that round. Just from the get-go, just like... Once that initial fight happened and it came down to this four versus four, it was clear to me that there was like, okay, what's next? Neither team really knew exactly what was next. We saw Giant X, they're like, okay, we already have two people walking towards C, there's a big fight happening at B, maybe there's an opening that we can take, it's two on one, they get into the site, they get the plant, but it didn't look like Carmine Core had like a really, really good plan behind it, but then they come in for the retake. They have one coming late through Waterfall area, three through Spawn, and they come in and they just win their duels. They're so good at just doing the basic stuff well that this is what's kind of like carrying them right now. Let's see if it continues now. Obviously going to propel themselves forward in this round. Bulldogs coming out. There's still some you know, an SMG in the play, but beyond that, pretty comfortable on this. By on the other side, Sheriffs and a Ghost. So you're looking at five standing, if possible, working themselves cleanly into this game. It's still the standard we hold across the board here. I want to see these rounds kept as diligently dealt with as possible, and just get a good read, I guess, if you're Giant X. Try and get you know, a good mental picture of what you're coming up against here. So you can kind of test out, and this is a brutal side to try and break into. Yeah, Tomasi, already gonna find one. You can see the utility being worked for, but this is good. This is, this is fact finding for the bigger buy rounds, but still, Carmine Core have bodies here. They've got a boatload of utility, a boatload of bodies. And yeah, Red Guard's gone a little bit closer, which is nice, but again, this, this isn't the round to be looking at, you know, the bigger picture. You want to see them trying to get or those little bits of information. Minute. Testing out the timing, 40 seconds now. The clock going to start becoming a factor soon. Just classics, except for the Sheriff on the board. They're baiting this. Oh, this is so smart, actually. 
it, it didn't work out, but it was smart. The theory. Yeah, the theory. The theory, the theory behind it. They opened the door. They made all this pressure. They made this noise towards A. Hey, like, we're over here. Cut noise completely. Don't peek. Don't jiggle. Don't make any steps at all. And now Carmen Core is like, well, we've already committed to this rotate. Like, what are we going to do here? We can't just rotate back to B or C. Let's just push in together. They push in if there was, like, you know, that was, that, that was like, they're probably not going to win the round. But at least they can get a kill or two. Maybe they get a kill. They pick up a Spectre or a Bulldog or a Stinger, and then they're able to use that to get another kill. Then they get a Spike Plant. You know, things it could kind have of spiral. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But just starting with that one thing, that was their opening. It almost happened. The vision was there. <laughs> Hey, let's, let's see if that continues as we get into the, you know, the real meat of things, right? This is still a bit of a bonus round, though. We do have Bulldogs out, so four Bulldogs and still the SMG in play. So this is just... Uh, you, you tilt this towards Giant X, but... Oh, my God, getting proactive, and that's dangerous. Hoodie going to be found near on first, and, and, and look at the time left. It's still a minute 20 on the board. They've got so much to try and navigate now, and they've lost all that impact. Funneling straight towards that C site, looking like they want to try and just brawl this out, but they have no real way to get in there clean. They have very little left with this. Cloud, yes, can facilitate something, but this is uncomfy. Very different approach than we saw in the last map where they had a very similar composition. They had the Cypher instead of the Killjoy, but they were very static in their setups. They were doing like the 2B, 3A stuff. They weren't getting a little down and dirty in here. The Killjoy Love and that. the Viper pushing up A main through the through the uh, attacker Viper wall, maybe, or is it, it doesn't matter. They pushed up and cleared A main. <laughs> they pushed him back and they got the opening kill. We didn't see that from Carmen Core at all, really, except for one round on defense when they were on Eco last game. And look at the time this is costing them, right? They had to reclear all this space because they had no one obviously left. watching behind, so they had to reclear this. They're down to 20 seconds or so now. By the time they're getting towards the site, you already just had, uh, and who was it on the other side? Nari putting down the utility to clear out, make sure no one's over by mound. They're forced in towards B here. There are very few options. Fortunately, Redgar is hitting. Takes away Shin, but that plant is still precarious, still dangerous, and they're swinging the smoke. They've denied it, and that is everything. That is huge work from Carmine Core. Yeah, Giant X just had no options there. They have to go back and reclear A, but when they go A, they're trying to open the door. Hey, fake A, go B. But what is that actually doing? It's pulling all of the players from C to where? Towards B, because that's the first stop on the way back towards A is to stop at B. So we see the flood coming in. They're coming through heaven. They're coming through waterfall. They're just sprinting in. Once they hear that spike is starting to get planted, they're like, this is our opportunity. They either have to stick the spike and they're, they're a man down, or they get off of it and we just do this brawl anyways. Really good reactions from Carmine Core right now. A completely different see, uh, defense than we saw last map. Yeah, I, th I think. We're starting to see the comfort of where their map pool is starting to lie. Obviously, this is the, the, the beauty of early season, right? You have no idea what the map pool is really going to look like from these teams. This looks a little bit better for Carmine Core. Obviously, Sunset was Giant X's choice, but regardless, they do look quite nice here for now. We'll see if that continues as Giant X are going to be having to, you know, suffer through this round, really. Yes, Sheriff's a little bit of utility here and there, but very little to report. Oh, Redgar still trying to be trying to be dangerous, trying to take some space. Patino taking heads as well. Spike They're not down going down a. without a fight. And the UI is not going down with the round either. But you know what? That's fine. We'll catch up. There it is. Nookie and Hoodie, the last two alive. But maybe they could get a little bit of damage as well. That could be good. These are rifles. These are expensive pieces for the puzzle for Carmine Corp. And options and opportunities later on, potentially for Giant X. Maybe for Nookie there, a lockdown on the horizon could be lovely. Magnum remaining. not going to make any mess of that. Catching Nookie very comfortably. And it should be Hoodie down. as a formality now with 38 seconds. This should be very difficult. Yeah, this is going to be... Almost impossible. First kill on Magnum could be a thing, but the high-low setup would narrate. Shouldn't happen, right? Wait. He's still alive! I thought, I thought for sure that guy was a goner. <laughs> He's down to 7 health. I thought for sure one bullet was going to do with the Sheriff. But yeah, I mean, all you can really hope for, hope for from oh. Hoodie here is maybe a kill. Maybe take away some... Ten seconds some left. Money. Something. Something. Get, yeah, it get it more than just one ulti or... Yeah. But yeah, I mean, that round just gone. And I, I need to see something more from Giant X here. So when we talk about, like, the game plans and the compositions here, they don't really have too many things to be explosive with. They don't have, like, stuns from Breach. They don't have, like, uh, scans. They have the dog from Sky, but all, realistically, when they're on the double controller here on attack, they need to take a little bit more map control and do more fakes, do things with info denial, try to break out the Killjoy utility a little bit earlier. But Carmen Court being very dynamic on their setups here. They're not even playing anyone C right now. They're doing an aggressive B play right now. 
This is really that. cool. And we're going to see love these it. coming in play soon, too. Yeah, a bit of variety. Time, you know, take that map space. Still showing presence here. Magnum, I mean, putting you know, shots down down range and hoping for connection, but nothing really there. And they've already peeled away from that B attempt of maybe trying to walk one out. I'm surprised they didn't commit a bit further towards it. Tomasi, fantastic pick up towards Tony. Oh, come off it. A follow up two just seems almost unfair. And Giant X are left in tatters. They've got very little space. They're stuck in no man's land. They don't know much about the back lines, really. They just have to try to face forward or walk back into the unknown. They are in danger and the damage off the tap of the orb. You can see the reaction. Tomasi wanted to punish Patino. Trying to calm oh, that might off. be a double. That could be, but I don't think it's going to actually connect as well as he had hoped. It's not. And now they're starting to struggle here, starting to clutch at straws, trying to find any options available. But Carmine Court already starting to surround this. They aren't putting everything out here. It looks like the swing comes in. It's a one for one. But that's Spike, and that's another issue. Fatinho flies in, though. That's fantastic. Fatinho still with a chance. 37 seconds. Spike back into play. He's got his ult and a 1v2. Difficult. Spot out already. I'm pretty sure he just saw Shin there. 30 seconds left. Toying with this. He's got to know both players nearby. How much can he do? Paranoia is sent down. 20 seconds now, time ticking. Paint shell there to try and find some safety. Pops the oh, he's getting paranoid. He's getting nervous. He's getting worried. He wants to plant, but he won't have the time to get away from this. Not at all. Shin played it very well there. If he'd left it a second later, that could have been dangerous. And Carmen Core is just steamrolling right now. They have so much confidence. You can see it in all the individual yep. decisions that they're making. You can see it how they're calling the starter round plan. With the three people B leaving C completely wide open. They don't care. Now they have the Viper ulti unlocked. They have the Cold Roy ulti for the retakes on whichever site. We do see the attacker's Cold Roy ulti as well. But are they going to use it here? Are they going to buy They have, they could get Vandals and Light Shields. They can't really do much more than that. They have to take attack. They have to think about what are we going to do here? We're down 5 0. We're not really playing into our confidence at all. We're getting flood on by Carmine Core. We don't have options. We can't cancel our plan once we see that like things are looking a little bit bad. We're just bleeding out here. What can we do to stabilize? How can we like make this a little bit easier for us? We haven't seen them work towards C at all, really. No. We've only seen them go on into B when it's like these late round situations where they're like they're not able to go here or there. So they need to just like pull something else out of their strap book. They have to have more depth than this, right? You'd, you'd hope so. I mean, they, they kind of took that look towards that seaside initially when, again, though, you, you look at what happened, the fact that Carmine Core then pushed two players up from A and managed to completely disrupt the right. entire plan, and that got scrapped. And from that point onwards, it feels like Carmine Core have had such of the, I, I don't even say like upper hand, but that's a comfortable read. They've just been really not put out of place by Giant X at all here when it comes to at least the early rounds, it feels like. We didn't even see the end goal of potentially that three-man stack in B when we saw them kind of like pushing out. There's a lot of unknown with Carmine Core that's been working, so I'm a bit worried the Giant X don't even see the full picture yet. They're still trying to catch up on what's in front of them. And it does look like the Light Shield, here. Vandals or Rifles just coming out here, judge in play as well. That's for Hoodie. So they are starting to fuck, you know, really feel the pinch here and suffer through this. I mean, the lockdown's there for Get Nookie. Maybe this is the chance. Maybe this is the round. They can pull something. To oh, no. No, 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 no. Look at the patience. Look at the patience. Look at this man. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. The turn. He got two. He got Red Gore as well. This is devastating. This round's already in tatters. By not checking that box, things have just gone nuclear. You know, you talk about Redgar and you talk about how, how much experience he has and what he's bringing to the table as an IGL here, but we're just seeing, a, we're out of options. What do we do? Let's just go five-man B for the start of the round. We have Omen ulti. Why are we not trying to like fake like we're taking control of an area, denying yeah. info, using the Omen ulti to pull rotations, to scout out what's happening in the site? They're not even clearing their corners. They don't even spam the box at the start of the round. They're not doing the fundamentals right. Mm. It's like the whole team has a mental cloud blocking them you. from doing just like the simple things right now. And Carmine Core is doing the simple things flawlessly. I, I'm a little bit stunned. Especially after a timeout that you just had kick in. You'd think yeah. they'd come in with, you know, the best approach possible. They'd, you know, maybe get their head straight a little bit here. Yeah, uh, again, three still standing. Money's gonna be really swelling for the Carmine Core side. They can start getting a little bit more, you know, buffer behind them. And they felt no bigger threat. Yeah, a couple of ults are still here, but they're gonna be down on sheriffs on, you know, a very weak purchase. I'm worried about this. This, I mean, this follow-up. What? How did he get Redgar then? I just, yeah. Thank you for the slow mo because this just seems. Okay. <laughs> I watched it two times and did. What you see is what it. you get. Yeah, apparently. Um, but I just, I, I'm, I'm worried for Giant X because this is where you'd think with Pipson, 
being coach with Redgar as an IGL, they should be able to give you these solutions and they're not finding it yet. Now we're starting to see Carmine call flex a little, right? We've got a little bit more of an aggressive lean here from Shin. Paranoia have to be invested to force him away, so he's going to be taking away some of that critical utility they're going to be dwindling on here. Already Fatinho trying to find a fight early on, but no one really falling for this. Yeah, you see the same pack, the Fade, the Raze, the Omen, fighting together this time at sea, leaving a little bit of exposure towards A. Viper getting a little Careful. bit interested in what's happening over at A. Hoodie's out saying, hey guys, there's nothing here. Maybe we can come back. Kildra's got a couple of mollies to stall, but that's about it. They're leveraging the Raze Rocket, the Kildra ulti for this retake. They know that there's no real counterplay from the attackers. If the attackers decide to go A, what are they going to do? Viper already getting into the site is going to reactively place this Viper ah. ulti here if needed, but getting spammed through the smoke oh. is just like, that's a man, spot as well. it's yeah. assault on the wounds right now. Well, yeah, this is out. insult to injury sort of level. They're going to start struggling with Swan because they've just lost out on Hoodie, which is rough. And again, Magnum got the follow-up. He even noted the second player there. That's not going to be a surprise. They already have bodies towards B. Well, they've already got information left. left towards B, so they don't have any real threat here yet. Carmine Core feeling not pushed out of position, not feeling worried about it. And you're looking at the time. We're down to 20 seconds on the board. So this is this is when you're running low. Again, there's the utility in play. They have a complete control of this map. Red car slipping a little deeper is about the only thing that they got on their side. And it doesn't even matter. The spike's finally gone down, but you've got three players and, and a prayer, basically. And what do you do? Now you've got the lockdown coming in against you. What are you meant to do with this? And you're two men down. You can't even trade, really. You do oh. oh, no. You hate to see that. It's just like... It's everything's over, and then it's just like it's even more over at that point. It's like, what do you even do? Do you laugh it off? Do you just get sad? Like, what? Oh man, it's just like Carmine Core has plot armor at this point, type of thing. Literally, I mean, it's it's the revenge arc, right? Look at that smile. Look at these guys. I, the last season, I think everyone realized being a Carmine Core fan was rough. It was it was a really rough season for them. They, they I, I think we saw glimmers of hope throughout it, but. I mean, they gutted it from the inside out, right? They completely rebuilt this roster. They got arguably one of the very well-respected coaches in the game behind this team. They went to market and they, they got themselves a squad. Already seeing this is fantastic for them. 7-0, yeah. this is a big confidence boost against one of the probably more established rosters still in this league that hasn't rebuilt massively. This is a huge boon for them. This would be, yeah. you know, as said, a, a prize to put on the mantelpiece. But we go back in, buy back in place. Couple of ults in play here for Giant X. They have an opportunity to do something with this, but Shin once again rinse and repeat and this time, he draws blood from it. Yeah, man, the, the right now, your Giant X, you have to be thinking, what are we going to do to get ourselves our first round on the board? And they have three ultis to work with. They have the Cabbages from the Sky. They could use the Omen ulti as part of a fake with the Sky ulti once they get the information. They can hunt down the Viper with the Sky Cabbages and the oh, ulti. God, it doesn't matter because when he just walks in and just takes him out. That's just reasonable things, isn't it, really? <laughs> reasonable things. Um, that plant will be coming down. This is the best opportunity we've had in a moment here. They can get themselves a little bit more situated, right? The post plant can be a little bit more comfortable, but we're going to start seeing those ults being lent upon. Nookie almost just trying to hinder, slow down, Don't keep them go. back. You can see the temptation. Yeah, the clouds right. really chomping at that bit. He's like, but what if I get the timing right? I can get three. Guys, think about what I could do here. And the timing could be right. Depends on Shin. He does catch Shin. That opens up the floodgates to the potential of the lurk. But now look towards the side. Fatino is still waiting patiently and actually denies the ult, doing any sort of damage, leaving it all on Magnum in a 1v3. There we go. Response made for Giant X, but it was a long time coming. It's just crazy to see that the first round that they get on the board, they have Omen ulti. They yeah. have Sky ulti, yep. and they have Viper ulti at their disposal. And what do they do? They lose first blood instantly, yes. and then they go and walk into a Viper ulti one versus one to open up the round there. That is just like, this is not normal, right? You're that's not what you want to bank on, right? Like, that's not, you sit back and you watch us back as a team, you're like, maybe this isn't how we should have started that, you know? But it, you, you take them and get them. But I, 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 you know, when you look bigger picture, there's a reason Giant X have just used both of their timeouts here, right? Yeah. Like, there, there is a reason that round is not a repeatable round that you're going to be looking back on going, awesome, guys, do it again. You're looking at, okay, what did we learn and what can we implement going forward to try and salvage this half? Yeah, well, if I'm Hoodie, I'm definitely yeah. telling, hey, Redgar, I'm walking out A for free every round. This is so free. You guys can go towards C. There's a lot of, you know, you're going to have to fight into three people. Mm. Shin's doing this play where he's getting out behind mound, teleporting away after he gets that value. But if we're able to get into C area, 
yep. get that rocket on the race. Leave people there. I'm going to walk out A. You can send two more people back to me, and then you guys can do a fake onto C with the raise rocket, see what value you can get, and then we just we have just the Killjoy or just the Viper on A. Mm. We can easily go in two, three versus one, get that kill, and then Hoodie can post plant, pop the Viper ulti, stabilize on the site. Is that the play they're going to they're gonna do? There was a timeout. Is that what they talk about? I hope they have an actual plan with these alts rather than just winging it again. Like they have for the last yeah. seven rounds, basically, except for last. Well, here we go. Let's see if they are looking to maybe employ you as potentially a coach, IGL, you know, get you in there. Um, as it stands, patient beginnings. It is similar scenes though. You're absolutely on the money. Hoodie, once again, no real challenge over by Rob. Yes, we've seen one challenge early on, which did go Casey's favor, but again, not gonna get anything for it. Looks like they're gonna be leaning through towards B, and there's players here. There's a disaster around this corner. This could be a horror show for Giant X if they continue along this path, and they're gonna go for it. Coutinho gonna lead the way. They are just behind these smokes, and the flash is just a disaster again. Look at this, Magnum gets a freebie on Coutinho. They now know the plan. The ult's gonna come in, though. That could give them a bit of stability here. They might end up closing this round with a Spiper ulti really well placed, disabling basically all of the waterfall entrance here. The Flood having to come through Heaven and not even a great amount of space there. Redgar in position to get a great back. Oh, oh, no! The down. He takes down Hoodie of all the people and then marries <laughs> next man in. This is so punishing. Redgar and Nuki though still in this one, still having an opportunity to do some damage. Look at this timing. It's exceptional. Tomasi isn't stopping though and neither is Martin. This is just horrific for Giant X. That is heartbreak, but what a way to play it back through for Carmine Core. The thing is, like, I don't even know if Giant X would have deserved that round no, in that situation. I, your your right? expression at the start of it was just <laughs> horrific. Like, w but, like, we see a hoodie going out yep. A, and then he's going to come back to B, group with the team. I see the vision getting into B. Get that flank. Get the Viper ulti down. We're going to win. But when you go into B, you can't just go into B and just expect that to be it. You need to get into the extremities. You have to take control over Blue or Heaven or Waterfall. You need control of space to deny the amount of places they can flood from. Yeah, sure, they have Redguard on the flank, but they had no info C. Yep. They didn't even have info B. They could walk into a three-man trap again. You know, Martin could be there behind the box again. Did they even clear it? And now, a little bit of a... I, I want to see the difference here. Again, we do have this similar look to an extent, at least coming out from Carmine Core. They've set this precedent that they will put players towards mound. This time it is a different player, though. Just the same. Shin before, going to be picking up that mantle, rotating off the back, because look at this. They have so much of the map for free, they know this. They can instantly put bodies towards B, towards A, they can just leave him to his own devices. Does Fatinio connect? That could be critical, and it is fantastic. That is site ready for the taking, but Narek, <gasps> what is that? Threads the needle so perfectly to find Redgar and Fatinio and basically make this one back looking viable, back down to a 3v3. The plant will come in uncontested as it stands, as Hoodie basically using himself as the bodyguard, right? I'll put my life on the line for this. You better get that plant down, he's overwhelmed. Martin so quick to swing around that corner, back down to the 2v2 now. Narek's still standing, though there's still a problem until then. Cloud holding onto the line. TP gets taken. Shin falls to Cloud. And Giant X just stabilizing. And Giant X is realizing that A is their opening into this game. That's where the rounds are being won right now. Off the back of Hoodie walking out saying, hey, it's clear. Hey, I think the Viper's playing in tree every round. The Killjoy lurk into B from Nookie, realizing, hey, the turret's in blue room right now. The Killjoy's probably yeah. towards the A part of the map. Yeah. They know it's just those two to deal with. The rocket coming in with the omen blind into tree room. The rocket taking out the Viper, Killjoy falling, and it's like, everything's looking good for you. Can you rely on that again? Are you going to combo these ultis with yeah. the Sky Cabbages plus the Omen ulti? We haven't really wait, seen, wait. we saw the, the Cabbages, but we haven't really whoa, seen whoa, the Omen whoa, ulti whoa, yet. Whoa, 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 he got the rocket! Come the on, rocket. come on! That just seems... They're so shook. They're so shook, because they've, they've yeah. lost Redgar there. Shin's been winning yeah, that duel a lot, up. so they're just like giving so much respect. I mean, but... But, but look, look at the rotation, right? They've got so much faith in Shin. They're leaving him solo here. Yeah, he's playing a little bit further ahead, so he can kind of... I, I guess there's still time for them to get to the site, but he's felt that pressure. He's decided wisely to back away, give up a little I've bit of that space. The first time we've seen them really check on this, to you know, pressure this point well, Shin. Sends out the paranoia, dips away further. Still going to make them work for their dinner. All this utility to what? just clear him. Nuki backhands him, but flying through the air. Oh my god! There's no way he's doing this! Three kills! Giant X can't catch a break. 
This this one, just put a fork in it, it's done, it's overdone if anything. Nookie and Hoodie, you're gonna need to dig your heels in. Show me what you're made of here. Stick a fork in me, Jerry, I'm cooked. Oh my goodness, it's just like... Just anybody that's played Rays for Carmine Court today has had such huge impact with the abilities. Okay, first step. First step. Hoodie, no more steps. Okay, this... Uh... Yeah. I, I, like, I'm, I'm almost speechless at this point because it's like, it doesn't matter what Giant X is doing right now. Yep. It, they're, you could tell from the way that they're playing these rounds mm -hmm. out that they just, they don't have depth to their game plan. No. They don't have confidence Last in their game plan and they don't have confidence in what's happening right now. Hopefully, like going to the second half, they have way more comfort on their defense side. But right now, it looks like they're just drawing blanks. They don't know what to do. They have all this space at A, but they don't use it. They have like... All, Contestion at C, but they can't get an early kill or early stabilization there. And then they just say, well, nothing's working. Let's just go B. But they're going to go into B, and we're going to see all of Carmen Core there again. I, I'm... I, I, I genuinely worry about the bigger picture map pool wise for Giant X then, because what we saw, yes, Sunset looked okay. I wouldn't say it was perfect. They got pushed, but it, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll bank that for another time for now. Heather. You can already see this. Yep, this is starting Faded. to look really worrying. No one actually punishing that as much as it could have been punished. They managed to keep themselves alive. But also then remember, they've had no real glimpses of the rest of this map. They have no information on C, on A, if anyone's going to push it up. Pressuring, this is going to cost them time on the replay. You can see it now. There is no pace to this. Maybe they can use this this half. Mm. Maybe. Might be a treat for us. Use it for info. Use it as a part of a fake. Use it for something. Right now, it feels like they're just going Shadows through the same happen. motions, the same steps. But those steps haven't worked for them. Nope. Why do they think it's going to work now? of all times. Maybe fake TP in. The Killjoy has not played C a single time. He's had set up on A and B every single round this game. But And look at the lack of biting on this fake, right? Look how deep you're seeing Carmine Core sit, right? There is that you know deep play to them. Yeah. But again, they are not leaving B. They are not leaving A. They've not fallen for what Redgar is trying to sell by any means. And the ult, if anything, I don't know how many that would have fought potentially. I think so. And, and that actually might help sell Oh this. my god, it gets all the way into C. They know, and the flood is coming yep. here, but Redgar's space the only is one. the only thing that's going to be <laughs> helpful. Oh, wait, no, Hoodie's flank time. It could also be really good. Oh, this is all going to be ridiculous, isn't it? Nookie could try to do some damage. Carmine Gordo in for the scrap, in for the brawl. Redgar comes back around. Now the time. Cloud trying to get that plant down, trying to do something with Three this seconds. one. He the last a one stand. Oh. He can't do it anymore. Wait, 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 wait. 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 How? How? The thing How? finally happened that they were chasing each other from a, from basically a lobby <laughs> all the way through. And the last basically second of the round, that flank comes in. That is Ridiculous. absolutely absurd. There was, <laughs> they had no chance. There was but, no time. But that's what that's what they're thinking. He's like, Tomasi's like, oh, there's no time. I'm not going to peek. So he stops. And because he stops, Hoodie's able to actually flank him. That's crazy. That is absurd. Uh, wow. <laughs> like, the, the, honestly, it's just like... Honestly, they can have that round at that point. Yeah, you're gonna you know let them have I mean? that one? Yeah, just let yeah. them have it. It's just like, okay, it's we're 9-3. We're you know what? 10-2. Yeah, let's uh, see let, this. let him yeah. have it. They, you know what? If he's gonna do this around the world flank like this, honestly, he probably just deserves it at this point. That oh, is man. Yeah, he ran away because there was no time. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Because you could argue this was looking 10 2 sort of deal going on here, but. You know, live to fighting another day. Nine to three, curse or not, it doesn't really matter. What we've seen so far is that Giant X were hitting a brick wall. They were not able to figure it out on their feet. And Carmine Gore looked sharp. They looked very solid in it. I don't think we really got to see them tested particularly, so I'm kind of interested to see how they look when it's their turn to paint the picture on the attacking side, right? When it's their turn to test things out, how do they fare? We already have a little bit of a different look here, kind of taking their time over towards that seaside of the map. It could be a challenge on Redguard potentially, but again, they're spreading, you know, they're not putting all their eggs in one basket. They've still got that pressure over towards the A. They're seeing what space they can take. The funny thing is, I see like the same kind of idea behind Giant X's defense. Viper towards A with the alarm bot from the Killjoy, the turret as well, and then the three pack onto the C site. We see this, the defense from Giant X, but they couldn't break it. When they played against basically the same thing, swap out Sky for Fade. That's what Carmen Core was doing. But we're gonna see this A play. Okay, it's on Hoodie to try and hold him back. Oh. oh! That's just unfair. Barely past the watershed and look what's happening. 5v4 now, Cloud, left. Redgar, Nuki, and Fatinho still trying to hold this together. But look at Narate's position. Oh, what is going on with these players? Come on, Core, hitting everything that's breathing. 
The only strike back coming from Cloud, but okay, that's lovely follow-up. Taking another step forward. This is only a one-man advantage now to their side, and maybe Cloud, I mean, they're yeah, taking no more chances. Yeah, it's a three-man swing, and Redgar's positioning. Uh, I don't know Cover if he's got any more enemy. He can smoke them off, but there's three players. That's three bodies you can commit. The pain shell almost being the additional. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, there's, man. Yeah, nice. That's gonna NT, work. NT. No, hey, hey, look. <laughs> it might work once, and it doesn't. It doesn't that's, work here. Uh, <laughs> That is double digits now found for Carmine Core, and they looked good in doing it. Again, um, I just, I, I'm, I'm worrying about the map pool for Giant X here because this is not looking like it's part of it. Yeah, it's definitely not looking good. When you look at these two teams playing this map yeah. and how they're playing this map, the only real difference in their composition right now is Fade for Sky. Yeah. Everything else is pretty much the same. Yeah. But the difference in just the understanding of why they're running the agents, mm -hmm. why the agents in certain positions, it's just the understanding from Carmen Court and the confidence behind the plays and the comfort on the agents is just, it eclipses what Giant X looks like on, right. on the exact same thing, basically. Well, we get to see Outlaws out to play. They uh, do very well for themselves. Um, Cloud down to 4 HP, Neuron um, off the rip. So. Wait and see how this goes. Again, I, I think Carmen Core just taking their time here. There, there's no real hurry to things, showing a little bit of presence, but kind of backfilled again, though. You're still going to see the kind of similar scenes, right? Red Gar getting posted over towards that C mound, instantly going to alleviate the rotations. But if they double dip, there's a problem. Then you only have Red Gar holding half of the map, essentially. And uh, that's now worst fear scenario. He's got to make sure he's scarce and doesn't get picked up in the meantime. But again, as long as Carmine Core don't leave this too late, you know, down to the 22nd marker when things can get, you know, a little bit precarious. I'm fine with this. Ray is just an un indecisive right now. I think there was a good idea behind Giant X's plan with the A defense, having Omen just get baited out at C, but the, the hit's gonna come into A, it's gonna be a five versus four. Yeah, bodies are here, bodies are on the line. Can they make this a brawl? Can they make this a fight? Can they make this dangerous? It feels like Martin might be feeling something here. I don't think he likes what's on the other side. He can smell something on the other side of that wall. And Tomasi has found Fatinho. That's not the telling part. This is now going to be on red guard to try and hold back. So many players trying to come through his way. And he just can't withstand the pressure. Too many players coming on through. This might be five alive here for them. Giant X maybe thought they had, you know, something in the hand there as they were coming towards that A site. But this quick rotation, this a big adjustment towards B. It's worked very well for Carmine Core. Yeah, I like the idea from Giant X at the start of the round. Omen shows himself at C. Here comes the re-clear from the fade. Oh, there's someone at C right now. A's probably open. They go towards A. They get completely stalled out by the Viper wall. There's the four-player flood. I feel like Giant X, maybe they shouldn't even put the wall up. They had the stack there, and they probably, Carmen Core probably thought, hey, GX has three people towards C. Mm. We, should, we can go into A site for free. That Viper Wall comes up. They're like, wait, well, we can't go here. Weird, yeah. The wall finally drops 15 seconds later. Oh, wow, there's a lot of people here. We're going B now. I feel like that wall might have actually, unironically, made them lose the round. Yeah, yeah really hindered them. Um, so, I just. I do think this might be spiraling out of control here. If maybe we saw the start for Giant X kind of hitting that they came into this year on the second half, even picking up everything they needed, right? Like everything's starting to look good for them. It's not been that. And that's the bigger problem for me, that they are struggling to string this together here. And one of the things to note this round is we still have Magnum with the Outlaw, yep. and we have four players with Light Shields. So it's going to be very interesting here. The Killjoy about to have really good potential impact here with this Outlaw. We, we could see, oh Tomasi's my god. has got it too. And it sh they, they might have this fight here at sea right oh. off the rip as well with this. Oh, Instantly see. peaking, getting under this one way with it this because the you kind of off. don't I'm even have to say hit the head. Yeah, this, this is huge. This is huge. Here we go. See if you get what he wants. Red guard denies <laughs> yeah, it. The one way. Okay, that's fine. Tomasi's still got one. It's, it's, uh, you know, there's still, there's still a chance. He is nowhere near here, by the way. Tomasi's gone walkabout. He's so Jeez. deep on A. I'd, I was like, which Viper is that? Why is that? But, I mean, Toxic massive progress. And that's going to cause them scrambling from Giant X. They're not sure Toxic what the hell is going down. on. They've just seen a huge brawl over towards C. But players snuck up here. And this putting the wall up after taking out the alarm bot is threatening the CT spawn push. The sky's coming to re-clear, find out what's going on. Huge rotation out of C to come in and defend this A site. I wonder, is Carmine Core going to end up going B, or are they going to run all the way through and go C with this? They have no one to connect from C lobbies, so maybe they just 
yeah, let the round simmer a little bit. They've got the opportunity to do it as well, right? It's like they've got every chance to do this because these rotations, these positions, these kind of contact points have come through from... Good for you. Yeah, yeah, that's stunning. Okay, Nookie, Nookie Five denies. Down, no please. rotation, no b site. You you, you, you stay right there. That's it. That's all you get given. Who are you going to add insult to injury? But this one is looking kind of wrapped up here. Tomasi not getting what he wanted. Position, duly noted. Lovely. That's the Nookie you want to be seeing, that kind of... I, I guess a rock, the backbone of a team. We haven't seen that sort of level yet. I mean, it's very early days, but still, I'd love to see that starting to come through here for Giant X. And when you're down a, a man like that for Carmine Core, yep. I feel like you have all that space towards A. You can do so much more with it. Mm. So I wonder if that's one of those rounds they go back and review. Could they have, in that four versus five, walked into CT? Could they have taken that fight there? Could they have rotated a player back into B main or into C lobby so that they could do some sort of C split by going through B? Could they have kind of rocked the boat a little bit, break the door, go towards B, make it seem like it's going to be a B ending, and then go back to A? Could they have done these things? They probably had the opportunity to, but I, I feel like they just, like, let that round slip. Yeah, it was their bonus. Yeah, they had a couple of outlaws, but like trying to force that one way at C, that was a little bit questionable. Mm -hmm. But the, then four versus five, 40 seconds left, you still have round time to work with. Yeah. Let the round develop a little bit more. You don't have to like make this round end. So Giant X getting another victory in the round there, a little bit of more space to breathe, and maybe, maybe we could see something happen. We didn't get to see a whole lot of things. They didn't have depth on their attack side. Maybe they have depth on, on their defense, yeah. though. We don't know. We have yeah. to see this first. Okay. Diving back in. Always nice to hear Stevie. If you're an EMEA fan, you'll remember Stevie from uh, obviously last season as well. Uh, nice guy. I met him. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. He was uh, nice. He was nice, nice yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He dresses really well as well. It just like puts all of us to shame. It's atrocious. Um, but again, uh, digress here. And we go back into this one. So let's see if there's been a little bit of a correction brought into effect. Maybe they just want to really keep this yeah. fine-tuned coach for yeah. Carmine Core. This was, that was a Carmine Core timeout, keep in mind, after that one round that slipped away. So this is quite yeah. interesting to see them pumping the brakes so early yeah. on. But And then look at this reaction. I mean, it's almost instantaneous. They are just straight in towards the site as best they can. Nookie. Considering, does he stick around? Does he commit? Does he back? He's absolutely going to try and filter a little further away, but he loses life for it. And look at this! Carmine Gore just shredding them! And these kind of in-between fights, uncertain if they wanted to commit or not, has cost them their lives. Yes, Cloud succeeds, but they're in a 2v4. There's so much more to do here. And Carmine Gore didn't even get towards getting the spike down. This was just halfway through towards the site. And really, this is so, so precarious. These positions, they're so uncomfortable. Yeah, I think Giant X is cooked and they know it too. There's not really much that they could do here. Waiting for a potential flank. They have no info as what's happening. They're waiting for Carmine Core to potentially make a mistake, overextend, offer up an isolated duel. Yep, okay. here it is. There is no opening. But can Hoodie keep his life? Can, can anything happen for him? No. And Cloud couldn't trade it. So again, this is when the numbers come into play. But I like this timing from Cloud. I like what he's trying to do here. A chance given. He couldn't quite grab it in time. But I liked the attempt. Wasn't to be Carmine Core really having to let that round sit for a little while. Simmer in that position. And that's where the sky nerf or change is really going to come into play. Had yeah. he was out of flashes, yeah. had an, you know enough time elapsed there, mm. maybe he has another flash. Maybe he's able to get a kill and use a flash to assist his teammate to bail him out. Maybe he uses it on that initial fight to make it a one versus two. Like there's there's things that you could have done with old sky that here not really an option. Yeah. Mm. Speaking of not many options. Giant X really running low. No alts to depend on, no spiral round to bank in here. But 12 on the other side, Carmine Corp in a whole new lease of life here with this roster looking fantastic. Redgar looks dead. I don't know how he's still standing. And actually, Cloud going to take down one. But look at this. Cloud is the back line, the backbone, and the only one trying to do anything here. Leaving it all down to narrate in a 1v3. Cloud's just, oh, oh man. God. This guy's sharp into waterfall. Too. It's a three on one. I don't know what's happening. I don't think that was a good choice. Um, and part of me feels this is very doable. Because you look at the clock, they've still got a minute, right? Like, there's, do they just stay together? Do they stay as the duo right on the other side? Which I imagine they should do. But yeah. it's like, it leaves so much space, so they, much of the map. They should stay close enough together with that the Killjoy is able to keep her abilities online. And then they can hear the A door open. So if there's going to be any play here, then they have the heads up. They know what's happening. But the Killjoy. It's too, too far, far away. away. I, why didn't they readjust? 
I it's an extra man sure. almost, right? That, that's literally almost like a well, yeah, 2.5, right? <laughs> yeah, all you have to do is be close enough to A to what? keep the abilities and, online. And they get a warning system. Like, whenever he gets somewhat close, this is this is a real blunder coming out. Um, now, right now, opportunity beckoning. This is looking done, and that is devastating. If that's how you go down, Hoodie just powering forward. It's done, and it's over. A clutch from Nari, but what a damn good game from Carmine Core. That was really well played by Carmine Core. And even there, that last round, I, I, I just I don't understand. It looked like Giant X really didn't understand the map. It yep. really didn't look like they understood their composition. They have a lot to work for for this next game and just to make sure that they don't look like this. But Carmine Core looking really good. This is a really good debut for them. So. I'm hopeful. Uh, yeah. They looked good in so many different ways, individually, team-wise, uh, team composition, team cohesion. Yes. I I'm looking forward to them. Yeah, big tick in the box. And I think a lot of fans are probably sitting on the fence. What do we expect from this team? What are they going to be like? How good can they perform? Are they, is this going to be shades of the last roster? Are they going to be a whole new collection? And I think a lot of people, if you're being smart about it, would have put your money, put your, your, you know, your, your credit towards Giant, right? Giant X. They're the team that's the safer bet. They had the core together. They've had a great player coming in in the form of Red Guard, you know, proven IGL, all of this stuff, right? So if you're, if you're, you're a betting man, that's where you'd go. But Carmine Core, this roster of talent, these young, hungry players coming back in on this resurgence with a couple of players who had a point to prove as well. You know, this is a roster that was really brought together to, to I guess, change the tale of last season. And already, what a fantastic start. I'm, I'm honestly blown away. These guys looking very dangerous and certainly a team to now be keeping in mind going forward. They are deadly as anything. If they continue along this trajectory, who knows how far they get. Who knows indeed. They looked great, though. Yeah, this is one to watch going forward, and all the underdogs have seemingly had their day. I know a place that will break you into a thousand pieces. Stay away from them. Stay away from Lorca, Paco, and Picasso. Don't ask about Lola. I, Caballo Grande. I, Lord Nieve. But in spite of everything, it occurs to you to visit Andalusia. Don't say I didn't warn you. Be careful of the Andalusian crush. Hey guys, it's Jimmy Lin, former professional Counter-Strike player and Valorant coach. Watch out for the stairs, clear this angle, you're going to be able to fight this. Red Bull gives you wings. Taking risks, yeah, I always go all in Swear to God that I'm deaf to the talking I can't hear it, see the finish line I know that I'm near it, yeah Cut the check and I'ma clear it Ain't nobody out here that I'm fearing Ay. Easy to see things all on the way up 
Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes. You ain't real, it's like you got a few disguises Walk in the room, I know I'ma be the flyest She like me, yeah, it's hard for her to hide it One on one, ain't nobody like this Got this far by doing me, I'm everything I knew I'd be I don't care what we used to be, no, yeah They try and get close to me, you can't get what you want from me I got this vision you can't see, no Easy to see things all run away up Used to think it's hard, now I feel just like a layup. I've been in the gym, yeah, I'm trying to get my weight up. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, that's just the way it goes, the way it goes. That's just the way it goes. Welcome back, everybody, and welcome to the first post plant of the year of 2024. And I am honored to be joined by uh, two amazing players from Carmine called Tom Azzi and Narey. And Ash is going to be uh, with me here as well. But we got to address it uh, before we get into it. Ash is very, very excited about this because she yeah. <laughs> was vouching for you all week. She was like, Narey is going to own, he's going to be amazing. So yeah, I, I, this is a moment. I like it. It is a moment. I mean, I know you from the NA scene coming over there from there myself. And I think I've got to talk about split in particular that map you guys were down what one to four and there was that moment where you had that 4k there was the two piece with the showstopper into the picks with a great paranoia and i've got to know when it came down to that play i mean we know that your prowess as an individual player you have exceptional mechanics and that was no surprise coming into vct mea but the ability to play with that confidence now that you're into the big leagues, was that something that just comes naturally to you? Or are you just cold blooded? Yeah, are you always like this? Yeah. Uh, I would say like when you first play an event, like you definitely have like kind of jitters like at the start. And I kind of felt that like at the beginning, just because obviously I've never played on a stage like this before. Yeah. So like we lose a couple rounds, but I think we're all like super focused. And yeah, I just found a good time to make a play and we all collapsed. Like even we didn't have like the best of comms, but we all collapsed on the vents. Like we, we knew instantly what they were doing. And I knew that I could flank them with the ult and it would be perfect. So I just did it and you know, it worked out really well. And then after we had the bomb in like the 2v2, um, it was just, they couldn't play. It was, a, that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, let's talk about this because both of you, a first time here on a big stage like this into VCT EMEA. And uh, I remember I said this to you, Tomazi, after Ascension when you were saw, I was like, I will be very surprised if we don't see you uh, in VCT uh, next year. So how does it feel for the both of you to actually be here and to win a game? Mm, I, I can start. Uh, first, thank you for uh, inviting me. I mean, I can talk for both. Thank you so much. Uh, I think for me, uh, it's a feeling that um, when you, as a kid, when you start playing the ga games, you just want to be here. Like you look to the like pro players, and you just want to play here. So for me, playing here, uh, it's a dream that uh, I achieved. So now I'm just here to give everything. And for me, the most important thing is like always have fun and never give up. Was that fun? 
insanely funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and what about you also? Yeah, coming into EU as well. I mean, I like to make fun of NA and stuff, but <laughs> maybe you're here to prove that NA is maybe the better region? I mean, I think that, like, obviously it's super awesome to be on a stage like this, like, ever since I was a kid, you know, like, playing, like, even other games. Uh, I definitely just, I saw people on this stage and I was like, I want to be there 100%. And obviously being here is really different than like just like imagining being here is definitely more like nerve wracking and stuff. But I think, yeah, I'm, it's, it's really exciting. That's, that's for sure. Yeah, it's really exciting to watch them uh, yeah, as well. I mean, yeah. It absolutely <laughs> is. And seeing your run through Challengers NA last year, obviously, Mad Lions is a bit tough. You still somehow were able to perform despite those difficulties as a team. And I've got to know like, that was your first year of competition within Valorant. Did you expect that you were going to be able to hit the tier one scene this early on in your career? Um, honestly, I didn't. I didn't really expect to be as like I don't like to like you know yeah hype up myself, but I didn't expect to be as good as I was. Mm -hmm. I think I definitely like it. Definitely came from just getting the confidence. Okay. Because I just remember like we played like the strongest team in NA like my first match, and I played really well against them. And that definitely just like sparked my confidence and kind of was like, yeah, you're you're supposed to be here. Like this is what you you've always wanted to do, and you're proving that you can do it. I love that. So it definitely like gave me a lot of motivation to keep playing. And I don't know, it's just uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I honestly yeah. I, I I feel honored to have both of you uh, here. Yeah. It doesn't matter how early or late <laughs> it is in your career. Um, I do have I have a few things I want to uh, talk through because we've heard a lot about this end method. Um, you're working with one of the I think greatest minds in in Valorant, uh, and he did this thing with Gambit. He took three duelist players, made a few of them be more flex, and then you know uh, and kind of changed the roles a little bit. Um, how does it work with you guys? So who who gets to play uh, duelist? We saw you today play. We saw Martin. Not sure when you're gonna get a go, Tom. Uh, uh, but what's the what's the <laughs> protocol? You like uh, rock paper scissors? Like <laughs> who wins? Sort of I coin. think uh, yeah. ang ang methods. It's uh, for the esports scene. I think it's really really different and common. Really 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 different. Mm -hmm. And when we t like play duelist, uh, I'm not like playing duelist at all uh, because I think and ang agrees. Uh, basically, when you change to sentinel, um, if you get like again the habits of being a duelist. Like for example, me, I'm really aggressive player as a duel. It's like really, really aggressive. So, if I get, get the habits, maybe when I come back to Sentinel, it'll be harder to get mm. used again. So we have Marshall. He played, like we have three duelists, right? And Marshall like uh, is insane duelist. So yeah, and I'm comfortable on Sentinel. So yeah. And, and what about you? Because you play three different agents today as well. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So pretty much, Martin is the main duelist. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, on some maps we want to play them on, uh, like like on split, we play them on Yoru. So I go into I play Raze, and honestly, in that kind of comp, it, I'm the main duelist. So we kind of have a really flexible team. We can play a lot of different agents. Um, and for Eng, Eng is just I don't know. I never expected someone to be so. It's like super smart in the game, but also just like the funniest guy. Oh, ever. he's the best. He is. I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know how his personality works, but <laughs> this guy, like, I don't know. Everything he talks about in game, you, you're always engaged. He always has a great plan for everything, and you, you can always trust him. He's definitely like one of the best coaches I've ever like talked to. And I, like, I, I haven't had a lot of coaches, but like, I, you can just you just know it when you talk to him. Like, oh. he he yeah. knows what he's talking about, and mm -hmm. he's he's been here for a long time. He's been competing in Overwatch and and uh, other games like even before like like games you wouldn't know and uh yeah i, I think he's just uh he definitely is like the only person i think can make us work honestly even now even that gambit players like now they haven't been together for over a year will still talk about it they'll be like oh yeah and told me this thing one time like three years ago and we still do the same stuff uh did you trial as duelists uh, during your trial because i heard the pro process was quite uh, like cool. yeah i trialed so yeah. all three of you all yeah. trialed as duelists? Yeah, with yeah I, I trialed on duelist because, I mean, I was on 110 ping because I was, I was in and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I, I was wow. trialing on 110 ping playing duelist. Um, I, it, I think it was like, it was sometimes main duelist, sometimes second duelist. And then after like the first trial, he was just like, okay, you're not playing duelist, you're playing flex. Oh and my like, goodness. Okay. okay, and you were fine with that? You were like, Oh yeah. yeah, of course. I think I could play every agent in the game. I really think I can. Um, just given some time, obviously, like I can't just like pick it up and just be the best mm -hmm. at it. But I think I definitely can flex and do a lot of things that uh, a lot of players like uh, can't do. So I think it's uh, yeah. 
I, yeah. I mean, I think the scrappiness that we were able to see from you over in NA as well probably adds to that ability too. And now that you're on that flex role, obviously you're playing a myriad of different agents, but I am curious, out of all of the ones that you're cooking on right now, do you have a particular favorite? ISO. <laughs> no comment. Back to you, Yinsu. Uh, he already knows how this works. You, you've definitely seen these. You know how it works. Um, you know, I don't know what you're talking about. You know about. what? Just for that, just for that, guys. Let's run the uh, uh, let's run the sunset defuse uh, clip. Let's uh, you guys take a look at this. Uh, the, the, the last round. I'm gonna punish you. I'm gonna put you through some pain for this. There's a monitor over here. You can probably have a look. Um, we honestly, I thought we were gonna go to OT, but. This is, this is kind of unfortunate. So run me through uh, the decision not to swing uh, a red guard here. Uh, what happened here? First, since it's not, like the round is completely winnable, like uh, because like we are five four, uh, we have ram, ram control, and I think the the bad thing here is me dying on site. But after we we come back actually, and it was like too much comms, like a lot of confusion. I think yeah, and I think Martin he, he, he didn't know they tapped the the spike. So yeah, I think it was about that. But yeah. I think that what happened. It's a loss in the it happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, because like a lot of comms and like uh, shooting comms, it's kind of hard. But, uh, Do you think that would have made a difference? Maybe it was a 2-0 if you... Yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm ready. Do you agree? <laughs> yeah, I think we atrociously misplayed that round. Like we, it was 5v4 or and then it came 4v4. And we, I think I played my util really good. I think everyone played really good. We played together as a pair, but then me and Magnum didn't like sync up at the end. He died alone and I wasn't with him. Whereas if we'd like double peaked, maybe we could have, you know, traded and it would have been a better situation for us. Uh, I think the ramp guys played really good. It was just missing communication at the end. Now I have kind of a left field question just because I'm interested. Um, you guys have numbers on the back of your jerseys. We don't get that very often. It's just kind of like nicknames. Yeah, it's kind of rare. <laughs> yeah, do they mean anything? Like uh, what number do you guys have? Yeah. I mean, uh, I can start. I can start. Uh, for me, 19 is like uh, my number since, uh, I don't know, <laughs> like when I think in a number is 19 because uh, first, I really like the number, and... <laughs> do, do you want to just... We have a camera here. I know I don't want to make it get uh, no, up, no, but okay, let's, so, let's so. take a look. So the 19 uh, yeah. right on the back, yeah. Uh, even me yeah, 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 here we go. We get the full, we get the full immersion. <laughs> there we go, Tomazi 19. Sorry, uh, carry on. It's fine. Uh, and it's like my my birthday is like 19 of August. So, oh. but yeah, I really like Ali's nice name. Oh, uh, <laughs> for birthday neighbors. Yeah, it's uh, Like a that. lucky number. Yeah, I, love, I like it, yeah. Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to stand up now, Nerea, and show us what number you've got. LeBron James, 23. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> Goat. Oh, like a, you weren't kidding. That's actually what it, what it stands for, the 23. I, I think, I don't know. I'm Goat. not sure. No? You said no? Goat. Ah, go. So, yeah. Oh, you're talking about yourself. Ah, I get it, I get it, I get it. <laughs> These jerseys are going to sell now, you know? All the Keiko fans are going to uh, be like wanting 19 and 23 <laughs> on the back of yeah, their jerseys. Yeah, can you guys actually get them with your name and yeah, number yeah, on the yeah, back? Yeah, yeah, you can. You go dope. to kcorp.fr, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> You're too good at this. I feel like this is not your first time. He's rehearsed. Yeah, right now yeah. The, sock, the sock is out, so yeah. You need to <laughs> yeah. I mean, you both also mentioned, you know, this is like a dream you've had playing on a stage like this. You know, in the big boy league. Uh, are there any players or teams you really want to face, or somebody maybe you look up to, you want to uh, get get a chance to play against? Hopefully. Uh, obviously, we still have like uh, matches to play, but if we qualify to one of the in international events, I want to play NRG really badly. Why? No reason. No comment. <laughs> no comment? No. I, 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 can I push you for a comment? No. <laughs> The okay. media training is crazy. Fair I can't rank for yeah. apparently. Uh, for me, uh, personal, I really want to play against uh, Loud and Fnatic, mm. both teams. Uh, first, because I really respect Loud as a team, and I have like a lot of respect for Sadak. Um, and yeah, Fnatic because yeah, it's Fnatic. Uh, I really respect Bolster too, and yeah, it's like the kind of the kings of Europe. So yeah, I want to like play against them. Are yeah. there any uh, teams uh, you feel like could give you a hard time in this league, or do you think you're you're gonna have a even matchup against everybody? I think every team is really strong. To be honest, I think that Valorant is one of those games where any team can beat a team on another day. Um, obviously, like if you're you're constantly training and being getting better, like yeah, there's like slight edges, but overall, like. 
I wouldn't say it's random, but every team is just really strong. So there's no reason we should go into a match and be like, oh, well, this team is weaker than us and we, we have to take every opponent seriously. Um, I think for like the strongest team, obviously Fnatic, just because they were like, they they won multiple events last year and they have the same roster. So um, like to me, Fnatic, obviously in international events, Loud, I think Loud would be really good. and. PRX, just because I want to see what it feels like to play against them. <laughs> I feel like everyone does, right? See, now yeah. I'm going to have to ask you to explain NRG. You've given such a brilliant answer for all the other teams. So why NRG? Because there's more, you know, they're not the only kind of... I can't say. <laughs> oh, God. What we'll, we'll, we'll get you to... When you... Okay, if you NA do... drama. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. How about this? How about this? When you do play against NRG and we do this again, you tell me. Yeah? It's fair enough. We I make agree. a deal? I agree. I agree. <laughs> We make Lazy's a deal. Here for it. Mm, Easier for it. Mm, we got two witnesses here. We make a deal. I can take like in the off, and then I can say I oh, ask him. Like, okay, I okay, got you it. got me. You got oh. me. Tomasi got me. Tomasi got me. That's what I like. That's what I like. Got a snitch over here. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay, let's look, let's look forward to your next match because uh, your group, you know, everybody's played uh, already. You're going to be facing Heretics, uh, I believe. Uh, how do you feel about them? What did you think about their game today? Um, to me, like it was kind of a surprise win, to be honest. But I think, again, like I said, every team is really strong and has the potential to beat another team. I think Boo played fantastic. Like he played really, really yeah. good, which is something I didn't expect. I thought it would be like Benji or Ryan's or, uh, or I was going to say Woo, but he's not playing. Yeah. Um, or, yeah, I just thought, I thought somebody else would be like the guy. Um, and I think they, they played really well and they won on the day. I, I expected Foot to win, but it's Valorant, so. They didn't win. And uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a strong match. Uh, we are we already played them. Uh, we we beat them in a show match. It, it, and honestly, it is just a show match at the end of the day. It's not like important. But I think we, I think, yeah, I think we can win. Okay, okay that's interesting. How do you feel about that? Uh, I completely agree. I think uh, I wasn't expecting at all, at all, like uh, foot uh, winning against Eretics. But I'm yeah, I'm looking forward to play against Eretics because I have some friends there. So yeah, yeah, I, to play. I look forward to seeing it. Now, before we close everything off, um, I want to see if you guys have a question that you want to ask the next guests that are going to be sitting here uh, in your chair. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure who he's going to be. It could be anybody. So a generic question, uh, we'll show it to them. They're going to be able to answer you. So feel free to instigate some, some yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah I'm I can see. I can tell you, you want to <laughs> instigate. Hot, sir. Yeah, like, you can tell. Yeah. You like, picked a good one, Ash. Uh, you picked a good one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll give you a moment to think. Just, just, uh, just ask them, like, who do you think is the worst team in the league? Oh, here we go. Look into the camera. Do that again. What, what do you mean? Oh, just ask them who who is the worst team in the league. That's it. I agree. I vouch on this one. All right. We're going to get a question from them. Uh, any uh, last words from you, Ash? Anything else you want to ask them before we let them go? I'm also here to stir the pot. So oh. I got to know, with that matchup against Heretics coming up, Miniboo went insane on the Yoru and the Neon today. Head to head up against Martin. How close do you think it is? <laughs> oh, that's a great question. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I think they're both really good players. I think Martin is really, really good. Mm -hmm. And I think today he he didn't like, like he could have gone insane today and it wouldn't have even been close against Giants in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And I think it, okay. it definitely like, he, I would say Martin obviously because he's my teammate, I'm biased. <laughs> I, I can't like make it interesting, but- uh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know it so sounds crazy, I'm right? I'm surprised, yeah, but, yeah. But uh, yeah, I think, I think Martin is better in my opinion. But uh, yeah, we just got to show it on the stage. Yeah, I got to get your thoughts too, Thomas E. Uh, for me, like without thinking, it's Martin by far. Ooh, Martin. by far. Okay, yeah. okay. I mean, we, we will get to see it. Uh, but before we close everything out, let's take a look at tomorrow's schedule because we have three games uh, coming to you tomorrow. We got Navi BBL, Liquid Koi, Vitality Gentle Maids. I'm going to get very quick predictions from both of you on who's winning each of those matchups. Uh, I can start. I think uh, Navi BBL, uh, Navi. I think it'll be a close match, but I think B uh, Navi will win maybe two one. Mm. Uh, Liquid Koi. Mm. I look forward to watch a game actually, uh, but I think Liquid. But I think th these games will be really close. And the last one is Gentleman's Vitality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you I played think... against Gentleman's. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I know. Uh, so I'll say Gentleman's. Hmm. Gentle okay. Mates, yeah. Nice. Uh, for me, I think. I think the most exciting match is the Navi BBL game, for sure, for me at least, just based on like scrims. 
I just want to watch them play. That's Ooh, it. Scrimbox. Uh, Scrimbox. Any leaks? Any uh, leaks on here? No comment. <laughs> <obviously>. <laughs> I'm uh, trying so hard. I would say I'm I would trying. say Navi are gonna win 2-0. Um, it's Liquid Koi. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I would say Liquid are gonna win 2-0. And okay. Vitality Gentlemates. Vitality Gentlemates. I'll say Vitality 2-1. Oh, okay. We have a split decision here. I mean, we'll find out if they're right uh, tomorrow. But for now, thank you so much, Tomazi. Thank you so thank much, Nare, for joining us today. Thank you, Ash, by the way, for sticking with me uh, today. And thank you to everyone at home for watching. Uh, make sure you come back tomorrow and tune in once again, because uh, as you just saw, we have three very, very juicy matches coming up. But for now, have a great night's sleep and we'll see you then. Still single lady Wishing I could 